the start, we see a young couple, thinking that though they are in their 18, they got married. The story begins with a boy named Jia Cheng, who helped a little girl whose balloon floats away. But as he returns the balloon, the little girl gets scared as Cheng revealed that he is actually a demon who likes to mess with people. But Cheng is also a hardcore otaku fan. In the past, when he was younger, he happened to see a magazine from the human world. He liked it so much that he decided to go to the human world to buy more magazines. And so, he decided to study the culture of humans so he can go to the human world. He spent all his money on entertainment and now only able to eat one time a day, but he was still happy. Suddenly, he noticed a head hanging on a tree. Then a hand appeared that shocked Cheng. In the next second, the whole body starts falling from the tree. Instinctively, Cheng tried to catch the falling body, but it fell down on him. He opened his eyes and noticed a pink-haired girl on top of him. He tried to wake the girl, as he wants compensation for ruining his clothes. The girl opened her eyes for a second, and her stomach starts making the grumbling sound. With no other choice left, Cheng takes her to a restaurant. The girl then felt alive after eating. Cheng was thinking that she is a pretty girl, but for some reason, his demon instincts are telling him to not get involved with this girl. He knows that there is nothing normal about a girl falling from the tree. Meanwhile, the girl was thinking that it's that guy's fault, and she will kill him for that. The girl then introduced herself as Yu Shanchen, and thanked him for buying her food. She said goodbye to Cheng and quickly left. Unable to react to what just happened, he had to pay the restaurant bill. After a while, Chen told the whole story to his supervisor, but she didn't believe it. He said with teary eyes that he is telling the truth as he had to sell his idol figure to pay the bill. But his supervisor said that no matter what he says, he is still late on his first day at school, so she will mark him absent. Chen cried and begged her, as this score can impact his assessment in the human world and if he doesn't pass, then he will be forced to leave. The supervisor smiled and asked him to bribe her if he wants her to mark him present. And after Cheng left, she received a call from someone. And after talking to that person, her smile deepened as things are going to be interested with the demon student. The next day, Cheng was thinking of buying some anime figures, but he has no money. Huh? Suddenly, Cheng noticed the same red-haired girl from earlier. He went close to her and grabbed her hand, but she smashed Cheng's head into the ground. Cheng tried to tell her it is him who helped her yesterday, but she don't remember him. At the same time, two men appeared and asked the girl to not run away, but she quickly escaped. Cheng was confused and angry at the girl for not remembering him and decided to make her pay. One of the men then stopped Cheng and asked if he's a demon. But Cheng quickly ran while thinking who the men are and how do they know his identity. While running, he noticed his angel supervisor, who too tried to catch him. But Cheng dodged her and asked what they are trying to do. His pursuers were increasing, so he thought that he failed the test, and now they are forcing him back. After running for a while, he reached a dead end, but he still escaped from his pursuers and jumped onto the rooftop. He called his pursuers idiots and make fun of them. Suddenly, you appeared behind him and their head collapsed and they both fall unconscious. In the next scene, we see a man talking on the phone, saying that they found both of them. After a while, you opened her eyes and get shocked to see a woman with glasses in front of her face. She confusingly asked what is happening and where is she? But the woman tells her to calm down and said that the boy is about to wake up too. Cheng opened his eyes and saw you coming at him with a punch. He dodged the attack and angrily asked you if she is trying to kill him. You told him to shut up and die. Cheng then told his supervisor that you is the same girl who cheated him with a meal. The supervisor then went close to you and tried to explain the situation. She told Cheng that this girl is Yu Shanchen. She will be 18 this year and she's also his wife to be. This shocked Cheng as he angrily asked, why does he need to marry an angel? Even Yu refused and said that she will never marry a stupid demon like Cheng. And while Yu and Cheng were fighting with each other, he asked the supervisor why didn't she take his permission first. The supervisor then showed him a message saying that this is to improve the angels and demons relationship and if you don't reply with a no on this message, then you will be automatically selected. Cheng then checked his phone and realized that because he didn't pay the phone bill, his messages were blocked. He then throws his phone on the ground and asks you why did she apply. You replied that it's not her fault, as her phone thought that it was a spam message and deleted it. Cheng called this stupid and said that he will never accept this, as 2D girls are all he need. 
The supervisor then informed them that if they agree to marry, then their daily expenses will be reimbursed, and there will also be a cash bonus. The supervisor then tell them to change, as they are holding their wedding because this is their wedding location. The only thing Cheng and Yu could do was shout. After a while, we saw two men forcefully taking Cheng to marry Yu. At night, the supervisor told Yu that her things will be mailed tomorrow. Meanwhile, Yu was thinking that her life is over and not to mention she gave her first kiss to a demon. The supervisor then told them that if they try to remove their rings, then they will explode. But Cheng told her to stop fooling them as they don't remember when they sign a contract. But the supervisor replied that the contract was formed the moment they kissed each other. She also told them that the rings will create a mutual appeal between them so it can deepen their feelings. She then added that the ring will also send them orders of affection. And if they don't follow the orders of the rings, then they could get punished. With no other choice left, Yu looked at Chang and said that the only solution is to die. She said that she'd rather die than do that with a demon. But suddenly, Yu felt something in her body and collapsed. Cheng was confused as he doesn't understand. The supervisor then told him that if the ring senses strong animosity, then it will convert into arousal. Yu then starts making some noises as she is feeling it in her body. With no other choice left, Cheng picked Yu and take her to the bathroom. Inside the bathroom, he throws Yu on the floor and splashes a bucket of water to calm her down. Yu then thought that Cheng is not as bad as she had expected. She muttered that Cheng was unaffected by her sounds and guessed that she doesn't have a lot of charisma. But Cheng said that it is not like that at all and told her that she just spoke her thoughts out loud. Cheng calmly said that he was very close to being unable to resist, but the worst thing was that he didn't have any contraception with him. He said that in a situation, if the gun was accidentally fired and she were to get pregnant, then he won't be able to pay the child support. And to all his nonsense, Yu angrily told him to die. The next day, Yu was ready to go to school, but Cheng grabbed her from behind and told her to hide her wings. Yesterday night, Cheng offered a deal to Yu. They both made clear that they didn't want to marry each other. But still, Cheng suggested her to accept this marriage. He told her that the marriage contract will be last for one year and then it will automatically be cancelled. So if they work together and exploit this marriage, they will get an enormous cash prize. They just need to prove that demons and angels can't coexist peacefully within the year, then the contract will automatically expire. Yu was confused whether she should accept this offer or not, but after hearing Cheng's annoying words, she angrily agreed. She went close to Cheng and said that if he ever dare to trick her or do something that she don't like, then she will kill him. She then said goodbye to Cheng and left for school. After she left, an evil smile emerged on Cheng's face as he was thinking to torment Yu in her body. At school, everyone excluding Yu was present. Then the supervisor informed Cheng that she forgot to tell him that Yu have a bad sense of direction. Meanwhile, Yu were looking at the sky as she doesn't know where exactly is she. Later at night, Cheng and Yu were waiting for the ring to give them commands. The ring said that they need to perform some intimate scenes. Cheng and Yu then quickly called the supervisor and angrily said that they will never do it. The supervisor then explained that they can set the difficulty in the ring as it is too early for them to get intimate. They adjusted the level and now the task is to hold hands for 5 minutes. The supervisor then informed them that if they don't start the task soon, then the self-destruct program will activate. Yu then told Cheng to start the task and insulted him as it's just holding hands so there is no need to be sensitive. Annoyed, Cheng then angrily gave his hand to her. The task started and they both taunt each other while Cheng was thinking that there is no need to be scared and as he's a man so he can't lose. And Yu was thinking that Cheng is feeling disgusted as he had to hold her hand because of the contract. Cheng then thought that this is normal and he didn't know that a girl's hand is so soft. He take a look at Yu and thought that she is super cute. Suddenly, the ring gave them an additional task of interlocking their fingers while holding hands for a minute. With no other choice left and after multiple attempts, they succeeded in doing that. And after a minute, they took a deep breath as the task is completed. Cheng was saying that the task was too easy, but Yu replied that he was so scared that he was about to piss his pants. And Cheng told her, even if she put up a brave act, he knows that she was about to cry. Meanwhile, the supervisor was listening to them as she didn't hang up the phone. Marriage, what a wonderful thing. Two lovers form a family and do everything together. They share the happiness, the pain and support each other. But to our poor Cheng, it is a disaster.
He looked at the mess that you created and angrily told her to wake up. You woke up and asked if it's time for breakfast. Cheng shouted that it's already noon, so she asked for lunch. Cheng then angrily told her to wake up and clean the mess that she created. Yu was doing the housework while thinking that Cheng is running his mouth like an old hack. Meanwhile, Cheng was happy to see his increased pocket money in his account and thought that now, he's finally free from the part-time jobs. He heard some sound, and when he went to check, he found Yu trying to forcefully close the washing machine door. He shouted at her as she didn't even know how to use a washing machine. He fell into despair as he even hasn't finished paying off the loan. Yu then told Cheng that she is hungry, but Cheng angrily told her to go and cook something for herself. After she left, Cheng received a call from his supervisor, who told him to make sure that you never go into the kitchen. But it is too late, as in front of Cheng's eyes, you destroyed the table while cutting vegetables. This was the moment Cheng recalled the fear of being crushed by the angels. He then quickly get on his knees and begged her to let him be her servant. He said that whether it is cleaning, washing, or cooking, he will do everything for her and asked her to stop destroying the house. Unable to understand, Yu said okay to his request. And after repairing cost, Cheng realized that freedom is as far as ever. The name of the protagonist is Jia Cheng and he is a demon. Currently, due to some circumstances, he was forced to marry and share his apartment with Yu, who is an angel. And because of their engagement rings, they have no choice but to obey the arrangement. Yu was in a good mood as she was about to enjoy her pudding. But before she could eat it, Chen took it from her hand and gulps it. Angered by this, Yu stood up and tried to punch Cheng. But Cheng's smile deepened, because if the ring senses that its wearer intends to harm the partner, it will put the wearer in a state of sexual arousal. Cheng laughed, as no matter how far he goes, Yu can't fight back. After a while, Yu was searching for a book when she heard Cheng's voice that she has a marvelous ass. She tried to hide her butt from Cheng and attempted to kick him, but Cheng laughed and tell her to make his day. And in front of the ring's power, all Yu could do was endure. After some time, Yu vent out her anger on a tree by punching it. The supervisor was with her and praised Cheng as he was able to exploit the function of the ring to play dirty tricks on her. This angered Yu as she said that instead of suffering this humiliation, she'd rather. Before Yu could finish, she was stopped by the supervisor. The supervisor tells her to calm down as she's going to give her an amazing idea. Chen comes home from somewhere and starts doing his tricks to make Yu angry. He takes the popcorn from her hand and keeps on taunting her by saying bad words to her. Yu looked calm at first then suddenly she hits Cheng in the face. Cheng got dazed and confused as the ring was supposed to make her stop. Yu explains that the ring does not work without sensing any animosity. She replaced the emotion of love with rage. Therefore, Yu succeeded to punch him. Luckily for Yu, the ring gives them a new assignment, which is the woman needs to fully satisfy the man. Cheng is confused as to how does that even work. Yu beats the crap out of him for the sake of vengeance, then ties him up on washboard. Yu is not done yet, she takes one of his collectible toy and drops it on the floor. Chen got so angry that she almost hit her, the ring works at magic and makes him stop. The ring puts him in a sexual arousal which gives pleasure and it makes Yu creep out. Yu gets out of there and leaves Cheng alone. Flashback of the plan, the supervisor tells her everything, all of which she did to him. She tells you all these to control Cheng both physically and emotionally. The plan worked perfectly for Yu Shan. Next day, the ring gives them a new assignment. They need to go to an amusement park. Both of them goes there, but the scenario looks different for them. Yu looks to be in good mood and energetic, whereas Cheng looks tired and is lacking motivation. Yu is surprised as it is her first time here. Cheng wants to put an anti-lock strap on their hands to keep Yu from getting lost. The reason is Yu is a naive girl and she's new here, she took 2 hours to come here which only takes 20 minutes to travel. Yu agrees to put it on. Cheng tells her that he does not want to get in any kind of scary rides. On the other hand Yu got her mind elsewhere, she wants to get on a roller coaster. Cheng is gonna obey her just for the sake of assignment, and they both finds themselves on a roller coaster. After the ride Cheng is buzzing, Yu looks to be in adventurous mood. They both participate in all of the rides, after all that Yu treats Cheng to a cold drink. This is the first time they both got to experience something like this. Cheng is surprised because he is feeling no anger towards her. Cheng then makes her realize what they have been doing today. Yu Shan who was in a different world today suddenly hits reality. She gets shy and tries to get away by blaming her luck. A while later, the supervisor surprises them by dressing as a stuffed animal. 
She tells them that she has been working part-time jobs here for a living. She tells them about a fun event over here that they both can participate in. It is an escape room where spooky ghosts and stuffs tries to make them scared. Cheng does not buy that and tells them that he is a demon, so these small tricks won't work on him. The supervisor persuades him by proposing a bet, which makes Cheng hooked. She offers him to reimburse from the previous bill if he can hold out the entire time inside the room without screaming. But, if he loses, he needs to buy her a monthly pass in 30. Cheng agrees with the offer and bags a deal. The supervisor gives him a cell phone as prop before he goes inside. Cheng feels like this is super easy and the undoubtedly the easiest money of his life. But, he is not ready for what is to come. Cheng goes inside a room and suddenly, a message comes to his cell phone which says sorry and goodbye. He looks back and notices Yu Shan approaching him with a knife which makes him terrified. Yu seems to be shaking with laughter. Cheng lost the bet. The supervisor asks Cheng about how their date, which makes him shy. The supervisor is feeling like a proud mother as Yu learned everything from internet after coming to this new world. She saw Yu this much happy after a long time. The supervisor asks Cheng if he likes angels more than fictional characters now. Cheng declines, only if she develops in her chess department. Yu hears this and smack him. They both continue their date after a while. The ring tells them, their assignment has now been completed. Cheng got happy and wants to get home as soon as possible. Yu finds a lost little girl and wants to help find her mother. Cheng is feeling annoyed after hearing that, and tells her to leave the girl alone. Yu and Cheng starts arguing over her. She tells Cheng some bad things, like demons are heartless, they are egoistic and narcissists. Cheng gets hurt and breaks their hand leash. He tells her to do whatever she wants and they goes on their own way. Yu tags along with the girl to help find her mom. Cheng is angry with all that has happened now. A while later, some kind of announcement comes up for a lost person. The lost person is Yu Shan Shan. They are looking for her family members. The broadcaster tells Cheng to hurry up and tells him that they will put it on repeat. Meanwhile the damsel in distress, Yu is getting consoled by the little lost girl. Her phone ran out of battery and she seems to be doubting her decisions. She doubts that Cheng will come after the announcement. Suddenly, Cheng comes running and tells them to stop the broadcasting. Coming here on his way, Cheng found a lady under a clock on Public Square. He brought her along with him. The lady is the mother of that little girl. Cheng scolds Yu because of her childish acts. As Cheng was the one to get them out of this situation, he has the right to do that. Yu realizes her mistake but she is yet to apologize. They bid them farewell. Now, on their way back home, Yu apologizes to Cheng for her acts and bad-mouthing. Cheng taunts her using self-blame. Yu tells him about her hate towards demon, but no hate for Cheng. A dramatic thing happens between them. Yu falls down on top of Cheng and kisses his forehead. Yu gets shy and start to hit Cheng. He wonders why the ring is not working now. Yu Shan, an angel that is sharing an apartment with Jia Cheng, a demon, are getting to know each other a lot as day passes. Yu got to learn a lot of things about Cheng. She learned that Cheng watches tearjerker movies and cry. Cheng is hooked and serious about his action figures. He is a clean person. She is starting to admire him little by little. Cheng becomes angry when Yu gets around the kitchen. Cheng has a great trait, he can cook like a professional chef. She became a fan of his cooking after eating. She once asked him about the secret. Cheng told her that he learned to cook like this to save money. He saved money by buying cheap ingredients and adapted his cooking skill to make a saving and savor good foods. Because he wants to live life both as an otaku and live well too. Yu Shan put on a lot of weight while living with Cheng. Yu Shan gets lost on her way back home using Google Maps. She notices some bad guys beating and ganging up on a single boy. Meanwhile, Cheng just bought a waifu figurine toy and can't wait to go home. Suddenly his ring starts to beep and pointed towards Yu's direction. The ring acts on his own and brings him to Yu. The scene there is that Yu thrashed all of those bad guys. They can't believe that she is so strong. The leader of those bad guys shows up and said that he is disappointed on them because they got beaten by a girl. He tells Yu that she got guts to be present here. Yu gets excited seeing his butterfly knife that has been spinning. She praises the leader for that and wants the knife for herself. The leader lost his mind after hearing those compliments and gave her the knife. After a sudden realization, she tells them to refrain them from doing these kind of bad stuffs. Cheng enters the area flying and out of his sight he hit the boss. The ring brought him here. The gang members get so angry that they prepare for a fight. Cheng apologizes to them and tries to talk his way through even though he is strong and capable of fighting. 
Yu argues with Cheng for this kind of act and tells him to fight. He does not care about this and just want to spend time with his newly bought waifu toy. One of the member finds his toy and Cheng kicks him in the face for touching it, which makes the situation even worse. Cheng finding no other option, throws Pepper in their faces and runs away from there with Yu. In the action Yu also gets some Pepper in her eye, which she later wipes of. Cheng saw some guy running away from that alleyway, that happens to be the guy that Yu saved. Yu saved him out of kindness, but Cheng lectures her for this act. He tells her to avoid unnecessary troubles. Cheng did not help her, rather it was a situation which they had to escape, but Yu is not buying it. Yu promises Cheng that she will help him when the time comes. Cheng notices bruises on his hand from the fight. Yu treats their hand with the bandages she bought with discount. She tells Cheng that she spied on his stuffs when he was not around, which makes him furious. Yu got this sudden interest in basketball because of school club activities. Cheng helps her by giving manuals and videos. The next day, Cheng is feeling sleep deprived. The supervisor comes and interacts with Cheng about why he is here. They both came to the basketball court to see Yu's performance. The match starts and Yu shows some inhumane abilities which amazes everyone. The supervisor explains that Yu can learn everything fast. If she likes the activity, she can get the maxed out ability only from learning. This is her perk. Yu Shan gets all the compliment in the world, after showing those amazing skills. On the second of the game, Supervisor gets substituted on Yu Shan's opposing team. Yu shows some tremendous skills once again, but she breaks her wrist right after punching the ball. The Supervisor shows sympathy towards her and tells her not to punch a ball like that. Yu tells her that she learned how to play through comic books and Cheng taught her all this. Yu then realizes that Cheng played a trick on her and she made a fool out of herself. Her teammates comes to console her, with a relief that it was not her fault they lost the match. Yu Shan suddenly slips and a handsome club president catches her, which was supposed to make Cheng jealous. Cheng rather convinces the supervisor that he does not care about Yu's love life. The girls wants to change their sweaty outfits, but the club president is concerned about Yu's bruise and guides her towards the nurse's office. Unconcerned, Cheng gets a new assignment, he has got to carry Yu Shan to the nurse's office in 10 minutes. Just for the sake of assignment, Cheng puts on a mask and runs as fast as he can, to find and carry her to the office. This startles Yu, but they make it just in time. Cheng needs to finish the assignment. He had to become the nurse himself and treat her swollen foot. Yu was resisting at first but Cheng cures her well. Cheng tells her, she has been playing with gym shoes and to get injured with this is normal. Yu was feeling shy to be friends with her teammates, as it was her first time. Cheng warns her to stay away from that handsome blonde guy. Yu, who was about to get out of changing room, sees a female doctor, who was eavesdropping on their conversation. She gets in an awkward situation and gets out of there in a hurry. Meanwhile, Cheng is looking at some waifu pics, laying on the school playground and thinking about ripping some people on home finances. On the other hand, Yu once again lost and finds herself disturbing the photo shoot of the photography club. The guy, who click pictures of girls changing their dresses, turns to be the president himself and some of his friends. He is getting lots of views and subscribers from those nude videos and pictures. Naive Yu unknowingly opens the wrong door and catches them filming the girls. The president tries to talk her out of this situation with Yu, but his friends are so loud that Yu hears about the secret taping. She then realizes that they were the ones who has been filming all the time. The president orders them to catch her. But, little does they know, that she's an angel with inhumane powers. She easily defeats them and fight. The president threats you to publish her videos too, this makes her stop and she goes back to her class. She got dumbed by the president. Cheng cooks a delicious meal, and totally forgot to pick you from school. He got surprised by how she found her way back home from school. She has not been talking for a while, which is bugging Cheng a lot. Cheng is thinking on how to break the ice with her. He could not think of something good and finally shouts at her. He was zoned out all along. Cheng once again persuades her to spill the beans. She finally tells him about how she saw the president filming nude videos. Cheng tells her that he knew it as he felt some malicious aura from him. He said that he is a demon so these type of people gets along well with him. Cheng guessed everything correctly about how she got dumbed by the president. He suggests you not to get involved with that guy because a cunning guy like him can frame her back and cause a lot of backlash. Cheng does not want you to get into any trouble with these kinds of stuffs. Flashback of the scene, where Yu is being blackmailed to keep her mouth shut. 
The president shows you some nude pictures of her friends and said, he will publish those if she speaks about their scheme. In reply, Yu tells him that he does not understand his situation. The president approached her and said, she is the one who does not understand, and everyone does not think like her. If the pictures get published, her friends will be getting weird looks in public, might drop out of school, and their social life will get destroyed, and will fall into despair. With the psychological trauma, they won't be able to live a normal life, and you will be the one to blame for it. He offers you a deal to keep this a secret by which both of them will benefit. In class, the teacher is calling Yu's name while she is zoned out. She suddenly realizes and screams she's there. The supervisor is worried about Yu and asks her if something happened to her as she was vigorous and absent-minded all day. Yu tries to hide it by saying she's okay, but supervisor pinches her cheek and tell her to fess up as she has known her for a long time. Yu realizes Cheng's suggestive words which he gave earlier after hearing his name from supervisor. She gets away with the situation by saying that she is not feeling well and a little rest will make her fine. By saying this, she gets away from there. The president's friends asks if it is really okay to let you go away like this. The president replied that you is like a ticking time bomb and he need to pass some time as it's been a while since he had a fascinating prey like her. Jia Cheng is angry as he lost some money he spent on video game and lays flat on grass. He just lost a whole month's salary and wonders what you might be doing as she was too tough on her the day before. While he is thinking of how you is his wife and he does all these for the contract, he does not want to be a NTR subplot. The supervisor knots his leg with a rope and hang him on a tree branch. She calmly greets Cheng, long time no see. Cheng is furious by her act, as if she has lost her mind and tells her to get him down. Supervisor apologizes and tells him it's only to prevent him from running away, as she has got some questions for him. As Yu walks by in the corridor, she hides and eavesdrop on the boys, who did the videotaping from earlier. She notices the club locker room sign, and tries her luck opening that door. Luckily enough, the door wasn't locked. Yu gets inside and thinks of finding the device they installed, which will prove to be a conclusive evidence. She does not want to make the same mistakes again. On the other hand, Cheng is hanging and struggling, while the supervisor is worried about dark clouds and rain with no umbrella on her. She asks Cheng about Yu's strange behaviors today, to which Cheng shouts and tell to ask Yu herself. Yu always comes to her first if anything happens, hence she is worried about her. She also noticed that Yu's Ahoj wasn't standing upright. So Ahoj really is her distinctive feature, Cheng muttered. Supervisor explained that when she asked Yu, she got flustered and ran away, which made the supervisor even more curious and she wonders if Yu hate her. Cheng asked why exactly she tied him. He said that if she really wants to know, then tying Yu would make more sense. The supervisor says she does not have the heart to do that to cute Yu Shan. Angry, Cheng asks if doing that to him is okay. Supervisor thinks so and tells him to stop talking nonsense. She does not feel guilty but rather enjoys doing that to Cheng. Cheng lies to the supervisor about Yu. He tells her that Yu Shan got herself into a mess as she cosplayed as a knight with shining armor. But because of her boring kindness and stupidity, she got advantaged by a group of humans. Yet the supervisor is interrogating Cheng like a hawk while Yu Shan might be doing something stupid again. Yu Shan is checking the lockers and finds nothing. She wonders if she is in the wrong locker room. She suddenly notices a key lying. She grabs the key which seems to be a locker room key. She then finds the videotaping evidence inside a charging port. Then the president and his friends suddenly pop up and clicks a picture of her with the evidence. He says they did not expect a girl to be the culprit and it makes complete sense for a girl to not raise suspicions, coming in and out of girl's locker room. Yu says what they are babbling about. President replies rather what she is babbling. She also got the locker room key on her hand. They have caught her red-handed. Yu realizes her situation and calls them vile. Yu with fast reflexes grabs the phone on his hand and tells him that the photos she saw on his phone last time will make for a good evidence. The president caught her in his bait as those pictures have been deleted and stored elsewhere. It's too late for her to take that kind of action and he thanks her for being so stupid. Yu grabs him by his collar and calls him bastard. The president tells her to calm down and stop resisting, as it is not too late for her to turn in as the culprit. Yu is afraid of how he can act so innocent while hiding his malice inside, as if he is a demon. She runs away from there. 
The boy beside the president caught all of what happened on a videotape. The president schemes the incident, as they caught the culprit behind filling red-handed. She got angry and resorted to force trying to destroy the evidence, and in a panic runs away from there. While Yu was running, the supervisor noticed her and asks Cheng what he meant by taking advantage of her and Cheng disappears. After a while, Cheng was glad, as he got in time for the laundry he kept to dry before it started raining. He was almost late because of the supervisor, as it started raining just now. He remembered Yu's face and wondered what could have happened, as she never made a face like that. It's been three hours, but Yu is still not back. Cheng gets worried about her, as she was not even answering calls. With no other choice left, he put on his shoes and went out in the rain to look for her. He roams around the city in various locations and asks some girls about Yu, but no one knows about her. Drenched in rain, Chen came back home, thinking where Yu run off to. But to his surprise, he finds Yu fully drenched in front of his apartment door. Chen gets angry and asked why is she looking like a mess. Cheng is lecturing her about how she has not seen the real world. She is naive and can't always let others take advantage of her. He then insulted all angels and tells her to go back if she can't bear the frustration. Yu lost her temper and jumps at him. And as she was about to hit him, Cheng asked her to not overdo it. He looked at her face and realized how heartbroken she was. Yu picked the umbrella and hit his face. Cheng then asked if she feels any better after hitting him. Yu dropped the umbrella as she just realized what happened. She says sorry multiple times as she did not mean to injure him. Yu rushed to her room, closes the door and fall down on her legs. She does not know what she is doing, and is still crying, calling her the worst, and that she wants to disappear. Cheng is hurt from the bruise he got, and it is still raining outside. Cheng let the supervisor know about Yu whereabouts. The supervisor was out in the rain, and lets out a sigh of relief after reading the text. Cheng is still feeling the pain from that bruise. He is pissed off at Yu as she is not coming out. It's 11 at night, she still is not coming out of her room and her dinner is getting cold. Yu's crying face appears in Cheng's head and he can't help but care. The ring suddenly shouts, danger, danger, danger. The ring is making strange noises and taking him towards her room. He discovers that she did not lock her room. He gets inside and sees Yu fainted on the floor. Cheng tries to wake her up, but Yu seems to be burning from a fever. Cheng muttered, she was lying wet all this time. It would be a miracle for her to not catch a cold. He puts her on the bed and wants to change her wet clothes. He hits a sudden realization that he is the one who has to do it. Cheng slowly opens her sweater, thinking of Waifus. But unable to control himself, he peeked at her and bad thoughts comes to his mind. He changes all of her clothes and puts the wet towel on her forehead. Yu finally wakes up, and Cheng tells her to hurry up and take the medicines as he got other things to do. Suddenly, Cheng bursts out of the room, and Yu looks to be in berserk mode, saying medicine. The supervisor just finished taking her shower when she received a call from Cheng. Cheng tells her that Yu just lashed out at him out of nowhere and is attacking him like a predator. And when supervisor figured out the reason that he tried to make her take medicine, she explained that Yu took medicine in her childhood and vomited all day. And from then, whenever she hears the word medicine, it triggers her, and she starts attacking people nearby. Cheng is confused, as nursing a sick should not be like this. He then asked her why the ring is not stopping you. The supervisor explains it must be because she is unconscious. She said that the ring will not do anything, as it's not sensing any negative emotions from you. Cheng shouts and asked if there is any other way to make her stop. The supervisor advises him to make her drink the medicine that can calm her down. But there is no way Cheng can think of a way to do that in her current state. Suddenly, a halo appears on her head, and the supervisor warns him, as the halo is not just for decoration. Yu bends her halo and throws it toward Cheng. It goes toward him at tremendous speed, but Cheng dodged it and taunts Yu, saying is that all she got. He might have dodged the weapon, but it breaks his beloved action figure. The halo comes back to her like a boomerang. Cheng is in dismay as he spent so much time assembling it. To avoid further destruction, Cheng puts the medicine in his mouth so he can make her drink. And after attacking and dodging for a while, Cheng knocked her down and gave her medicine from his mouth. Finally, Yu calmed down and Cheng puts her on the bed. Cheng was so tired from all that happened and he heard Yu sleep talking, saying sorry to him. Cheng pinches her face and wonders why is she so cute in her sleep. And just when Cheng was about to leave, Yu grabbed his hand in her sleep. He tried his best to free himself, but unable to remove her hand. 
She then muttered in her sleep about not putting coriander add more beef and that she wants an extra large portion. Cheng was confused about what was happening. When Yu opened her mouth and took a big bite. It's morning. Yu Shan wakes up and finds herself grabbing Cheng's hand with bite marks all around his hand. Yu sees the towel and Cheng's forehead band-aid. She tries to render her memories about what happened and Cheng wakes up after she touched him. Unable to understand what to do, she puts blanket on her and acts to sleep. Cheng checks her body temperature which seems to have dropped. But Cheng himself seems to be sneezing and hopes he does not get infected. Yu then tries to remember what happened when she see herself in changed clothes. She screams at Cheng and asks why is she dressed like that. Cheng lies to her, saying he doesn't know anything about it, but couldn't stop his nosebleed. Yu noticed this, and while she was arguing with Cheng, he realized that she was acting to sleep this morning. With them fighting, the neighbors detect highly offensive behavior from their flat. A while later, Yu and Cheng are walking on a footpath. Suddenly, Yu received a message, and she apologizes to Cheng for yesterday and left. But Cheng tells her to stop, as she was going the wrong way. After a while, Yu entered a warehouse where the president and his friends were already waiting for her. They check her bag and sees the phone to be on the safe side. President apologizes to her for calling her to a strange location and also for yesterday's incident. He promised her to not publish the videos if she just do what he says. He also promised to share the profits from the activities if she tags along with him. He then went close to her and put his hand on her shoulder. But to his surprise, Yu grabs his hand and pushed him away. Yu said that she doesn't want to waste her time on him anymore. She gave him one last chance to surrender the videos and turn himself in. Angered by her behavior, the president threatened her again. Yu regrets her decision of running away before, as she should have just beat him earlier. But before she could do anything, Cheng came running and tell them to not move. But he lost his balance and falls on Yu hitting her head in the process. After a while, Yu was scolding Cheng as they were both captured because of him. The president calls Cheng an idiot and wondered from where he came from. He then ordered his team member to go and tell the security that they caught the perpetrators behind the secret filming. But Cheng begged him to stop and asked if he can defect to their side. He tried to save himself by putting all the blame on Yu. Cheng suggested to be president's underling for just a small share of the profits. The president knew something was wrong, so he acts innocent in front of Cheng. He then went close to him and took out the phone that was hidden in Cheng's t-shirt. He laughed at Cheng and said that he can't fool him with this little trick. But Cheng instantly take out the second phone and gave it to the president. Angered by his behavior, the president broke both phones. Cheng then take out the third phone and asked him to break it too. President angrily snatched the phone from Cheng's hands and crushed it. But Cheng smiled and asked if he truly believes that those were his phones. The other two members shouted as the first two phones were theirs. And to President's surprise, even his phones were not in his pocket anymore. Suddenly, he heard Cheng saying as expected of the President, it's good to use two phones as a precaution. The President was in shock because not even Cheng managed to free himself but also moved very fast. They then heard him saying that there's a way to restore the deleted files. He unlocked the phone and praised the president for his magnificent collection. The president quickly jumped and snatched the phone from Cheng's hand again. But when he looked at his phone, he realized that Cheng was just lying. Cheng jumped down and said that he was just joking. But still, his smile deepened because judging from president's reaction, he must have something in the phone. Suddenly, the phone rings and Cheng tells him to check the message as it is a surprise for him. The president played the recording on the phone and got shocked. It was the recording of them from moments earlier when they were threatening you. Cheng then informed the group that he's a special investigator assigned by the school, so he has listening devices installed in the locker room. And as the other guys were worried because they are going to be exposed, Cheng smiled again and revealed that it was just another joke. In reality, the one who was recording was none other than you herself. The president was in shock as you was making a video of them. Cheng tells him that because Yu is an idiot, it made him drop his guard. He also added that thanks to Yu's natural flatness, slipping a phone under her clothes was not a problem. The president then realized that Yu and Cheng were in cahoots and Cheng moved behind them to divert the attention from Yu. Cheng then went close to the president and said, the recording that's being made right now is actually a live broadcast. 
and everyone in his family, friends, and co-workers are watching it. The president called him a liar because it's impossible for Cheng to pull this off. But Cheng replied that if he thinks that he's lying, then he can click on the link and see for himself. Cheng also added that he already sent his location, so there will be a crowd soon. The president fell into despair and was trembling after hearing Cheng's words. But still, he gathered all his strength and was about to click on the link when suddenly someone knocks on the door and scared him. But it was none other than Cheng, who was just fooling around. Cheng then frees you and tells her to handle things from here. The other two members attacked you, but got defeated easily. And as you was fighting with the president, Cheng was recording the scene and cheering for her. The president picked a pipe and tried to attack you, but she hit his crotch. And as she was about to punch him, the supervisor gave him a flying kick and broke his teeth. She then asked Cheng if he get her awesome move on the video. They then tie the president and his friends. You ask Cheng if there really are many people outside the room. To which Cheng smiled and revealed that the live stream and the location thing was just a lie to scare the president. You was so impressed by Cheng as he bet it all on a lie. And when Cheng was thinking of blackmailing the group for the money, the supervisor confiscated the phone. Cheng tried to stop her, but the supervisor said that this is against the law. She also threatened Cheng to cut his allowance if he doesn't give up. After a while, Cheng was scolding you for all that happened. He called her a fool who can't even handle the smallest problem. He added that she eats more than anyone he knows, the house chores are beyond her abilities, and above all, she has a washboard for a chest. You tried to stop him as her chest has nothing to do with anything. But Cheng scolded her even more as she lose her temper easily. He also admits that he only wanted to just say that she is flat. You said sorry for all the trouble she caused and also apologized for hitting him. But Cheng asked her what's the use in apology now that it's already happened. You shouted what exactly does he wants her to say. That he's welcome to fight back whenever. Suddenly she heard Cheng's voice saying you said it yourself. He tells her that he was waiting for this from a very long time, and God knows that he didn't force her into this so she can't go back on her words now. He raised his hand and you closed her eyes, waiting to be slapped by him. But all he did was just flick her head and said that he was just kidding. He said to her that the next time she finds herself in a situation like this, then all she needs to do is to tell him everything. He realized his mistake and promised to be more rational to solve the problems together. He then smiled and asked her how she felt after watching those guys being played tricks on. You laughed and replied that it was really fun. The police came and asked Cheng about the suspects. Suddenly, the door of the warehouse opened and the group begged the officer to take them and admits their crimes. Cheng asked the supervisor what exactly she did to make them this obedient. The supervisor replied that all she did was just gave them a lecture. Then the other girls arrived and hugged you. Cheng was confused and wondered why the people keep coming. The supervisor tells him the reason. It's because she uploaded the video on the internet. She also revealed that she earned a lot of money from the video as it went viral. The next day, you get surprised as Cheng's tail comes out. Unable to control herself, she went close and grabbed it, thinking something would happen. Cheng looked at her in anger so she quickly apologized. She explained that in anime, whenever someone grabs tail, the character feels something, so she just wanted to see how would he react. Cheng scolded her and asked if she really think that he would squeal like the character of the anime. But still, Cheng was confused as he didn't realize that the tail was out. You noticed that Cheng's face color was weird, so she asked if he's okay. She tried to check his temperature by her forehead, which startled Cheng. You explained that this is how the supervisor always checks her temperature. She then tells him that his body temperature is high and that he has a cold. Cheng checked the temperature and it really was a fever. He remembered the time when he gave medicine to Yu and realized that it happened because of that. Suddenly, Yu's ring started to beep and gave her the assignment of taking care of her partner. She confidently tells Cheng to not worry as she will take very good care of him. But first, she gave him boiling hot liquids. Then next, she covered him in ice instead of applying an ice pack. Then she pours the whole bottle of shampoo into the washing machine. Then, used a vacuum cleaner to clean up the shelves. Cheng then realized that Yu was sent there by the gods as his punishment. Cheng's fever was getting worse minute by minute, and his vision was also getting blurry. He then decides to take a nap, so he tells Yu to give him a body pillow. And after searching for a while, Yu managed to bring him the pillow. But unconsciously, Cheng grabbed Yu instead of his pillow. 
Before you could say anything, Cheng's tail caught her and started to move upwards. Yu tried to wake Cheng, saying he got the wrong one, but the tail didn't let her to do anything. Suddenly, Yu's face become expressionless, as even in his sleep, Cheng said she's hard as iron. After a minute, Cheng had a slap mark on his face and was tied by his tail. Yu then looked at Cheng's face and let out a sigh. Suddenly, Cheng recovered from his fever and was feeling so warm. He opened his eyes and sees Yu in her angel form. She was covering his body with her wings and was providing heat with her halo. Cheng asked her what exactly she did to him. Yu explained that it's called Angel's Blessing, and the blessed person can escape from disease and calamity. She also revealed that it's her first time doing it, and she didn't know that it works on demons as well. Cheng quickly gets far from her and tells her to never use his body for her experiment. But still, he was feeling much better now, so he praised Yu's ability. Yu was so happy to hear praises from Cheng's mouth. Cheng then asked her if she was capable of doing such a trick, then why didn't she do it earlier? But Yu tried to change the topic, as this technique has a special prerequisite. She couldn't tell him that the prerequisite was kissing the forehead. Cheng then tells her about his strange dream. He said that at first, he was having fun on a small island, but all of a sudden, he smashed into a steel wall. And in the end, a meteorite hit the island and it sank to the bottom of the sea. The next day, Cheng was lying on the sofa, thinking it's fun. Right now, he was having a time of his life, as Yu was in maid costume and serving him. Some time back, Yu insists Cheng to give her a task, so she can repay him for helping her. She promised to do whatever Cheng wants, but if it's within her power. After hearing her words, Cheng smiled and agreed to fulfill her request. He gave her the task of wearing the maid costume, and serve him for one day. He then tells her to address him as master for today. Yu was hesitant at first, but after Cheng's acting of being hurt, she agreed. Cheng was fully enjoying his moment, ordered her to give him a foot massage. But to his surprise, Yu quickly agreed. And as she was giving him a foot massage, Cheng thought, why exactly is she being obedient? He then decides to test her patience by giving her several tasks. He tells her to clean the living room, give him sewn manhwa and sort it by the issue number. Yu was obediently following Cheng's every command and tried her best to make him happy. She then tells him to rest on her lap, as he must be tired. After a while, Yu was bringing water for Cheng, but she fell on the floor. Cheng makes fun of her, but instead of beating Cheng, Yu was quietly cleaning it. Cheng called her a bore, as no matter what he does, she's not getting angry. But Yu replied that this was all her fault, so she won't get angry, because this is her road to redemption. Cheng asked if she's really serious and that she won't get angry no matter what he does. He then called her stupid washboard, an idiot with no sense of direction, stupid glutton, dogshit moron, monstrous gorilla, by which Yu started to get angry. Cheng then groped her chest and asked if she has added some padding as the size doesn't look right. This made Yu super angry and she attempted to punch Cheng. And while Cheng was dodging her punches, she tells him that if she didn't add padding, the dress would have fallen off, as it was big for her. Cheng smiled and asked, why is she getting angry? He then ordered her to go to the store and buy him some snacks and ice cream. And as this is his last order, he tells her to go there while dressed like a maid. He was annoyed, but still, you agreed to go. Outside the store, a young girl stretched and said, she finally arrived. At the same time, Yu was walking back home after buying ice cream. And as everyone was staring at her, she decides to hurry back home. But as always, she lost on her way and was getting late. With no other choice left, she looked around and flew with her wings. She then noticed her home from the sky and dashed toward it. At the same time, Cheng was still waiting for Yu to arrive. He was thinking that she got lost again when he noticed something in the sky. It was Yu who was dashing towards him at full speed. Unable to stop herself, she collided with Cheng, but luckily she landed on his face. After a while, Cheng was scolding her for using her powers outside. Yu apologized to him and take out a gift to give him. She said when she was sick, she broke a lot of his things, so she wanted to apologize with a gift. She gave him the gift box and tells him that there's a toy in the box that was the shop's bestseller. Cheng got excited and thought it either has Optimus Prime or else Goku's figure in it. But he gets disappointed as it was an Ultraman lookalike. He turned towards Yu, but after looking at her innocent face, he said that he liked it. At the same time, the same girl from before was checking a photo on her phone and noticed someone in the sky. She smiled and wondered if this girl in the photo is an angel. 
The next day, the ring gave Cheng and Yu a new assignment. The assignment was to play a game together and have fun. Cheng was not happy, as he has to play a game with stupid Yu. But suddenly, he got an evil idea. He then suggested Yu to make this assignment a little more fun by having a contest. He tells her that the winner gets to a request and the loser must grant it. Yu, unaware of Cheng's true intentions, agreed to his request. And as they were about to play the game, Cheng thought that Yu is stupid because she doesn't know that he's in the top 8 players of that fighting game. The game starts and an evil smile emerged on Cheng's face. But in just some seconds, he lost the game. Yu then taunts Cheng and called him a noob. Angered, Cheng challenged her again and again, but lost every single time. Yu was laughing at Cheng as he was so desperate, but still couldn't win a single game. Yu then tells him the truth that she has played this game before. She then showed him her username on the game, it was Patrick Stars Achenchen. This shocked Cheng as Yu is the legendary player, who's far above the others on the scoreboard, but recently disappeared all of a sudden. Yu tells him to not call her by that name, as she just made that name without thinking. And now, she can't change it. She explained that she was rarely going outside, so she spent time playing video games. The supervisor always brought her something fun from the human world. But since she came to the human world, she haven't played much. She then saw a game that she never played before, so Cheng challenged her to play that one. His confidence restored, as he was the tournament's winner, and that is the game he's best at. Yu then quickly checked the rules of the game, and accepted his challenge. But even in this game, all Cheng could do was cry at his loss. He thought that even though it's Yu's first time playing this game, she's already this good. He then remembered that she even learned basketball easily from the manga and wondered just what kind of monster is Yu. They then played many games, but Cheng didn't even win a single match. While playing, Yu asked Cheng why does he hate angels so much. Cheng answered that all angels are arrogant and all they do is talk about stupid fairy tale ideals totally disconnected from reality. Yu laughed and agreed to what Cheng said, she added, she also thought something like that about demons before. But recently, her mindset has changed a little. Cheng then asked her what all angels think of demons. Yu answered that demons are despicable villains who always try to bend society rules. They are something like destroyers of the world. Cheng said that until recently, he was thinking the same way, but because of their relationship, he now knows that there are people like you among the angels. Cheng then called her a brainless idiot and asked her, how did she survive until today? Yu replied that in the past, there were people who clean her room, do the laundry, cook the food, etc. This irritated Cheng a little as he asked her if she is a princess. Yu looked at him with love and asked if she really were a princess, then what would he do? Cheng thought that Yu is super cute, then he punched himself to calm him down. And as Cheng was on top of Yu, saying he doesn't believe her, the ring announced that their assignment is complete. Yu smiled and said that she's the winner of their little contest, so what should she make him do? The first task she gave Cheng was to cook some dishes from some photos. Cheng picked his phone to check out the recipe and gets shocked. He saw a post on his phone and realized that it was Yu. He showed the post to Yu and asked if the person on the photo is her. To which Yu turned her head away and replied nope. He then scolds her for lying and for not being careful about using her powers outside. Cheng thought that if things get serious, then they will be in trouble, especially if the stinky four eyes see this. After a while, the supervisor came and informed them that there'll be big problems. She said that if Yu's identity is exposed, then she will be deported back. Yu asked Cheng for help, but he refused and said she should figure something herself. Even the supervisor refused to help her, because if the superiors find out about it, then it will be troublesome. She then told Chen that if Yu's identity is revealed, then he's going to be charged with the same crime. Even though Chen gets angry, but he had no other option but to fix this soon. Yu apologized to Chen for pulling him as well, but Chen tells her to not worry as he's already got used to it. But he still scolds her and tells her to not cause any more trouble for him. Yu offered to help him, but he refused and tell her to wait for him to fix the problem. After a while, he was in class thinking from where should he start. He was looking at the account of the girl, who uploaded Yu's photo. Suddenly, two students came and said they didn't know he was Yin's follower. Yin is a super popular anchor, who has a beautiful voice and nice figure. She's a perfect example of how a girl should be like. Cheng thought she's boring and asked what's so interesting about her. They then suggests him to watch one of her live stream, and then he will understand. 
and with just one look at her live stream, he fell in love with Yin, thinking, how can such a perfect girl exist? At the same time, Yu was in the cafeteria with her friends. Her friends showed her the photo and asked her thoughts about it. They said that the girl's hair color is like Yu's, and when they looked at her to ask her opinion, Yu was already long gone. The supervisor was near a vending machine, buying a Coke for herself. Suddenly, she noticed Yu dashing toward her, and before she could even react, Yu jumped at her. She looked at her with teary eyes and asked what she's supposed to do now. The supervisor pat her head and tells her to not worry as she'll figure something out. Meanwhile, in another place, some girls were looking at a guy, thinking he's so handsome. But they were confused because the guy was buying black silk stockings in the women's clothing store. At the same time, Cheng was looking at Yin's profile, thinking why she always posts in the evening. He then noticed something on the road, so he bent to pick it up. Then, the same guy from before was running, saying it's already too late. And while running, Cheng suddenly came in front of him, and they both collided. Chen calls him an idiot, but the guy quickly picked his bag and ran from there. Cheng thought that the man is strange, but still, as he was in good mood today, he decides to forgive him. He picked his bag, muttering, limited edition is not easy to get. But instead of his toy, it was a black silk stocking inside his bag. He then realized that the guy from earlier took his bag and ran. Cheng quickly ran after the guy, thinking, he must be aiming for his bag all along. But unknown to anyone, the supervisor was sitting on a tree, saying it went perfectly. Six hours before the incident, she, dressed as a delivery girl, and took a sign on something from that guy. She then gave him a pamphlet of a new clothing store, saying it's good and cheap. And after setting up the guy, she called Cheng and congratulate him for winning a free ticket for an offline lottery. Cheng reached the shop to claim his prize, and the supervisor, dressed as a sales girl, gave him his prize. And while he was leaving, she gave him a 50% discount voucher of a nearby mall. And while he was going back home, he noticed a blue dragon card on the road, so he tried to pick it up. And just like that, she set up the trap for both of them, because she was the one who switched their bags. At the same time, Yu was depressed, thinking she couldn't help with anything. Suddenly, she heard Cheng's voice calling someone a bastard. She looked behind and sees Cheng running after someone. The guy stopped, looking happy as he finally found the restroom. But before he could go in, he saw Cheng running toward him with an angry look on his face. He tried to stop Cheng, but currently, communication with Cheng is impossible. Unable to understand anything, the guy decides to run away, saying it's almost time. He thought that he managed to fool Cheng, but then, he felt a demonic presence coming after him. Cheng then jumped on him and managed to knock him down. The guy apologized to Cheng for running away and asked why exactly is he running after him. Cheng tells him to stop fooling around as he dared to steal from him. Then the sun set right before their eyes, and the guy sighed, saying it's time. Suddenly, Cheng got shocked as the guy starts to transform into a woman. First his chest, then his hands, then the legs, and just like that, he transformed into a cute girl. Cheng couldn't believe his eyes, but then, he noticed a tail on the girl's back. He then looked at her face and recognized that the girl is none other than Yin Sama. He said that he's her biggest fan and has seen all her broadcasts and videos. Yin asked him why is he not surprised after looking her. But Cheng replied that there's no need to be surprised just because she's a demon. He then revealed that he's a demon too. Now, Yin took a sigh of relief as they are of the same species. But then, Cheng realized something and said that even if Yin is a succubus, but how can he turn himself into a woman? Yin replied, it's because of an angel's curse. He tells him his backstory. One day, eight years ago, he has been looking for girls to hang out. When suddenly, an angel girl approached him and said, since he likes women so much, then turn into a woman yourself. And when he got back to his senses, he had a woman's body. And ever since then, once the evening comes, his body transforms into a woman's. He shouted that he is suffering for eight years, and because of the curse, he cannot flirt with cute girls anymore. And worse, he has to watch out for stinky guys, and he does this every single day. But Cheng tells him that it's his own fault, because he's such a womanizer. But Yin replied that Cheng doesn't understand anything, as there's no way he could be satisfied with just one woman. Cheng shivered as he just realized that Yin is an authentic, 100% male. He was crying inside, thinking, the internet is full of liars. Cheng then asked Yin how did his social network accounts have so many followers. Yin replied, that's because he understands the way guys think. 
and 99% of his fans are guys. He also added that he's only doing this because being an anchor is an easy way to make a lot of money. And with his body, he loved to squeeze money from his followers. Cheng then tells him to return his money as he gave so many gifts to him. But in front of Ian's cute face, Cheng couldn't do anything. Cheng now understands everything about the curse, and that Ian is looking for that angel who cursed him so he can get rid of the curse. Ian added that he came here in order to find salvation from his miserable life. But Cheng asked him, how is this a curse, because this is the dream of every man alive. Turning into a woman at night just double the fun. He can go into the women's bath and changing rooms. Cheng cried and said that he can even have hugs and skinship with girls without problems. But Yin clicked his teeth and said that Cheng doesn't understand anything. He said that even he thought about all these things, but he just can't do them because his Excalibur is missing from his place. Cheng fell into despair as he now understands everything. Yin cried and said that he thought all kinds of things, but the moment he turned into a girl, all his desires go poof. And while he looked at girls without clothes, he feel nothing. Besides, there is a trick about this curse. If you were to lose his virginity while he's a woman, he will never be able to turn back. Yin then saw a cucumber in Cheng's hand, so he angrily asked him to put it back. He also tells Cheng that the condition to lift the curse is just too brutal. He has to find a loved one and build a good relationship with her. This angered Cheng even more as Yin was calling this a brutal condition. He tells Yin to go and find someone to fall in love with so he can lift the curse. But Yin refused and said that there's no way he can fall in love with someone who isn't as beautiful as he is. Therefore, he just have one option, find that angel bitch and make her lift the curse. And he heard that here are traces of her activity around this area, that's why he came here. He then asked Cheng if he knows an angel who has a habit of bullying weak demons. Cheng thought about the supervisor and Yu, but concluded that those two won't do it. Cheng asked Yin what exactly is he planning to do after finding that angel. Yin replied that he will torture her both physically and mentally and will teach her a lesson for messing with a demon. Chen cried and said that he understand his feelings as even he said something like that himself. Yin also started to cry and they both recognized them as brothers because of the same pain and suffering. They then said that from this day onwards they are blood brothers. Chen then asked a favor from Yin and he quickly agreed. But when Cheng revealed that the favor is to let him touch his melons, Yin distanced himself from him. But Cheng angrily said that he can't trust the words alone, so he wants some proof to trust him completely. He added that since they are both men, so there is nothing much to it. Yin asked in a low voice that if he allow him to touch them, will he really believe him? Cheng replied yes he will, so Yin tells him to go ahead then. But as Cheng's hand was about to reach his melons, Yu came and sent him flying with a kick. Yin looked at Yu's magnificent form and felt something in his heart. Yu then hold Yin's hands and asked if she's okay, and if that pervert done anything wrong to her. Chen got up and called Yu an idiot for kicking him, but Yu angrily shouted that the crazy one is Chen, as he was doing bad things to an innocent girl in a dark alley. But Chen pointed at Yin and said that he's not a girl but a male demon. Yu looked at Yin's features and didn't believe Chen. Yin then went close to Yu, hold her hands and asked if she's his angel. This shocked Yu, and she asked Cheng, how does this girl knows her identity? Cheng called her a moron, and distanced her from Yin. He then came to the main issue, and explained everything about the photo to Yin. Yin now understood everything, and why Cheng was looking for him, but he refused to delete the photo. He said, that he will not get anything from deleting the photo, he's already earning a lot of money from it. He added, that the worst is that Yu is an angel, so he will never help her. At the same time, Yu looked at Yin's tail and unable to control herself, she went and grabbed it, sending a shock to Yin's body. Yin tells her to stop, as his tail is very sensitive. Even though Yu said sorry for grabbing his tail, but in reality, she was happy by Yin's reaction. Cheng praised Yu and tell her to grab that tail again, so she quickly grabbed it. Cheng took Yin's phone and made a video of his reaction. He tells him that if he doesn't want his shameless video to go viral, then he needs to delete Yu's photo. Yu tried to stop Cheng from doing this and said he's going too far. But Cheng tells her to shut up and said that she is the reason why he's doing all this. He asked her if she wants to pack up and go back to her homeworld, to which Yu replied she doesn't. Cheng said that when dealing with demons, the demon way is the only way, and nobody knows demons better than him. He then asked Yin about his decision, as his patience is not infinite. Yu knows that what she's doing is wrong, but for some reason, seeing Yin's reaction makes her want to keep going. 
Yin called him a traitor, but in front of Yu's torture, he agreed to delete the photo. Yu was worried about whether it's going to be alright or not, but Cheng tells her to not worry as he came prepared for it. After deleting Yu's photo, Cheng was thinking of blackmailing Yin, but Yu snatched the phone and deleted Yin's video. She then returned his phone back to him and apologized for doing this to him as she had no other option. And as compensation, she promised to help Yin if he ever finds himself in a difficult situation. Yin thought, Yu is a nice girl, so he also apologized for being too selfish. And thus, for the time being, the perfect solution was found for the issue. Valentine's Day, it's the most romantic holiday for couples. On this day, they express their love by giving presents and do some other lover's stuff. However, you can't achieve any of that without Valentine's Day chocolate. Each year on this day, boys look forward to receiving chocolates and fantasize about stepping into world of adults. But our hero, Cheng buys it every year for himself, and the big day has finally come. But there was a heavy rain, which resulted in a huge traffic jam. Cheng was frustrated, as he's going to be late. At the same time, Yu received a package at home. She looked at it and wondered what could be inside of it. Cheng was shocked, thinking why does it say that the recipient has already signed for the package. He then remembered that there's an idiot at home. He fell into despair, because he knows that you have a habit of opening delivered packages right away. He rushed back at home and saw you eating his chocolates. His heart crumbled after looking at the scene, and he jumped at her. Yu grabbed his hands, but they fall on the floor. He was on top of Yu, trying to eat the chocolate that was already in her mouth. Yu was confused and wondered what happened to Cheng. His grip was so strong that even she couldn't free herself. She was in shock because Cheng was never this strong before. And inch by inch, his lips were getting close to her. But then, she used all her power to throw him away. She took a sigh of relief and asked, what exactly is he doing? But Cheng was crying, saying how can she do this to him? But you tell him that if it's about the package, then she didn't touch it. It's in the wardrobe near the door. Cheng quickly went and grabbed it. He then asked her why does her chocolates look the same as the ones he ordered. Yu replied that she got it from the supervisor. The supervisor gave her so many boxes, saying she can't sell it before the holiday is over. All of Cheng's dreams and happiness got crushed after realizing the truth. And as he was lying on the floor, saying that they are all liars, Yu asked if he really wants chocolate that much. She then gave him some chocolates and said he can have them. She explained that she was hanging out with her friends, and they decided to make some. Cheng asked her if she's pulling a prank on him, because it was making some weird noises and special effects. But Yu tells him that it's safe because her friends told her that. Cheng then decides to eat it, thinking no one can make chocolate that tastes bad. He eats the chocolate and said, it is too good, it felt like, as if his soul is leaving his body. But it was the reality, his soul was really leaving his body. Actually, you didn't understood her friend's words, they told her she did good, but also suggests her to not cook again. The next morning, Yin came to met Yu, since she promised to help him in lifting his curse. He greeted her and apologized for causing her so much trouble before. Yu was in shock, because she doesn't know, who this person is. But Cheng tells her, that he is the same pervert, whose tail she grabbed yesterday. This shocked Yu even more, as now he is a male, and is much taller. Yin then introduced himself to Yu and said that he has never seen a cute angel like her. He grabbed her hand and asked if the one who casts the curse cannot be found, so can she help him in turning into a man? But before Yu could understand anything, Cheng throws some water on Yin to stop him from going any further. Angered, Yin asked what exactly is he doing, and what relationship he has with Yu. Cheng replied that it's none of his business, and before the situation gets out of hand, Yu interrupted and tells Yin that the supervisor is here, so he should meet her. Yin remembered that yesterday Yu told him about the supervisor and that she is quite knowledgeable. He then worriedly asked her what kind of person is the supervisor, but Yu tells him to not worry and said that the supervisor is very reliable and gentle. This makes Yin excited as he's going to meet a cute angel like Yu. They reached the location and before Yin could go in, Cheng stopped him and tells him to turn back before it's too late. But Yin said, there's no way he's going to believe a single word coming out of a demon's mouth. And besides, the one he's about to meet is a girl, so there shouldn't be any problems. And as Yin went inside, Cheng taunts Yu, saying, she's so popular, so she must be bubbling with joy. He added that when she met him, she beat him to a pulp, but she is not treating Yin like that. Yu tried to make fun of Cheng and asked if he's jealous. But in front of his angry face, she apologized and asked why is he looking so pissed. 
And while Cheng was thinking, why is he so pissed, someone came flying from behind the door. It was Yin, who was beaten into a pulp. Then the supervisor came out and said, who allowed him to come in without knocking. Yin tried to act smart and said, not even his father has ever hit him, but he gets kicked again. He dodged the kick at the right time, or he would have been dead. The supervisor said that she gets this urge to punch him every time she looks at him. She then noticed Yu and Cheng so she greeted them. Cheng was hiding behind Yu, thinking that's her true colors. At the same time, Yin couldn't understand what exactly is happening. It's the first time he saw such a strange woman. His guts are telling him that he's going to have a hard time dealing with her. The supervisor then said that she now remembered he's the demon who applied for the job some time ago. This shocked Yin as he never applied for any kind of job. The supervisor then showed him the transfer request that was signed by Yin. According to the contract, Yin agrees to unconditionally serve the manager of this area for one year starting from the moment of signing. Yin tried his best to stop her, but she didn't listen to any of his words and said that the person that he's looking for is not here, and she is the one who spread those rumors in order to lure him. After hearing her words, Yin fell into despair because he now understands that only hell awaits him. The supervisor went close to him and said that she will teach him a lesson for causing so much trouble to you. Yin was crying inside and wondered if all angels are this horrifying. Every cell in his body was on high alert. He knows that this woman is too dangerous. He knows he has to run away, or he will be killed by this woman. And as he was trying to run away from the supervisor, she used her halo and captured him. She dragged him back to her and said, there's no escaping her. Yin was crying and begging her to leave him, but she didn't listen. Cheng shouted and said that there's a rule that forbids them to use their powers in the open. The supervisor looked at him and asked if he saw somebody breaking it, to which Cheng quickly denied it. She then put a collar around Yin's neck and said, it's just a precaution to prevent him from running away. She explained, if he try to take it off, then his head will go pop like a tomato. But she tells him to not worry as she will take good care of him because she's quite fond of Yin's abilities. But she reminded him that if he ever dare to wear that smile he had when he entered the door, she will pull his tongue with the pliers and shove it up in his buns. And while she was taking Yin inside, all he could do was cry. Yu muttered that she never saw the supervisor like this, but somehow, it looked like she was having a bit of fun. Cheng agreed because he now knows that she just got her new toy. After some days, Yu was trying to find her way back home because she got lost again, and even her phone ran out of battery. And as she was looking around, trying to figure out where she is, someone came running and they both collided. The girl said sorry to Yu as she was reading news and didn't notice when the stairs ended. After a while, the girl was still apologizing to Yu, but Yu tells her to not worry. Besides, she treated her to a milk tea as an apology. The girl then introduced herself as Luo Lai, and she's a second year student at Yu's school. Luo Lai tells Yu that she is her senpai and also a streamer. She explained that she came here to stream herself and her kohai, participating in the double tennis tournament, but she totally forgot about that, and now she's going to be late. She then asked Yu for a favor. After a while, we see Luo and Yu, who are getting ready for the upcoming double match. Luo turned on her camera and started her live stream. Yu then asked Luo how to play tennis. This shocked Luo as she didn't know that Yu has never played tennis before. The other team laughed at them and suggested them to retreat, or they will get hurt. Yu was worried that she might slow Luo down, but Luo tells her to not worry and leave everything to her. The first round of the game begins and Luo tells you to look at her and learn how to play it. She explained that first you whoosh it like this then you wham it like this and shout eat shit and die. The other team gets shocked to see just how good Luo is. Luo turns toward you and asked if she get it. You replied yes as that was so easy to understand. The other team calmed down and thought they could win the game as you is just a newbie. They know that for the win all they need to do is to aim at the weakest member. They then hit the ball toward Yu, Luo wanted to help Yu, but couldn't. But then, to everyone's surprise, Yu does some backflips and return the ball and shouts, eat shit and die. The ball was so fast and strong that it even made a hole in the ground. Luo praised Yu as she learned the game so quickly. Then the second team arrived and said that they are not like those amateurs they've just played against. Yu jumped to serve the ball so the opponent was watching closely so he can tell where the ball will land. But instead of looking at the ball, his mind focused on Yu's skirt, and just like that, he missed the shot. He thought that Yu did it on purpose and that she plays dirty. 
Luo suggests you to not swing that hard or she will flash her underwear. But you tell her to not worry and show that she's wearing shorts. But Luo stopped her as they might shut down her stream. Angered by Yu's dirty playing, the opponent hit the ball with everything he's got. And to Yu's surprise, she missed the ball, and it hit Luo's melon. The audience shouted and laughed at them. Luo then tells Yu to be careful, as this opponent is not to be taken lightly. Angered, you tell Luo to leave these two to her. She said, she has lost her dignity, and now she won it back. And so, the game ended with a lopsided score. It was all going smoothly until the final round, but Luo shouts that it's the final battle and they must not be complacent. But before the final battle could start, the opponent team withdraw from the match. Thus, the exciting final round was over even before it began. Luo ended her stream and thanked you for helping her. Then Luo's partner arrived and apologized for not arriving on time, as she was stuck in a traffic jam. You looked at the girls and thought, they get along so well. Luo then thanked you again and left, as she has some more things to do. You looked at her phone and thought that she should find a place to recharge it. But suddenly, someone pulled her ear. It was Chen, who was angry at her because he was looking for her since morning. You asked how exactly did he manage to find her. Chen replied that he noticed her on a stream of a streamer that he follows, so he checked the map and came there. Yu was smiling, so Chen tells her to stop, as it's disgusting. The next day, Cheng asked Yin what is he doing in their school. Yin explained that the supervisor filed the admission papers on his behalf, so there is no choice left for him. He added that whenever he remembers that he has to endure the supervisor's torture for a year, he's losing the will to live. Suddenly, his alarm rang, so he went to the bathroom. And after a while, he came back, dressed as a girl. Back on topic, Yin thought that there is something strange about the supervisor because she already knows about the nature of his curse. Cheng interrupted and asked why did he change into women's clothes. Yin replied that there's nothing wrong with a girl wearing women's clothes and if he were to wear men's clothes after his body has changed, then he'd look like some weirdo. He also added he wears underwear all the time, even when he's man, because if he doesn't wear bra, the nipples will bulge out. Yin then asked Cheng why is he there with him. Cheng explained everything, and Yin laughed at him, as Cheng is the idiot, who got tricked into the marriage scheme. He checks the ring that was used in the contract, and Yin thought that there is something strange about the ring. He explained that the wedding ring is usually worn on the ring finger of the left hand. Cheng gets surprised, as he never noticed this before. Yin thought that he has seen this ring before, but couldn't remember where. He then insults Cheng again and asked about the other moron, who agreed to this marriage scheme. Suddenly, Yu came and asked Chen why he texted her to come and meet him there. Yin quickly stood up and greeted Yu, but then he noticed the same ring in her hand and muttered, this looks just like. Before he could even finish, Cheng told him that Yu is that other moron. Shocked, Yin looked at Cheng, who had a smug look on his face. Yu then shouts at Cheng as he didn't make dinner and because of that, she hasn't eaten anything tonight. Yin was shocked to see them talking like a married couple. He asked Yu if she really is married to Cheng. Yu replied, yes, because she had her reasons for that. This shocked Yin even more, and he fell into despair. He muttered that if he knew about the advantages of that marriage scheme, he would have agreed to it. He looked at Cheng and tells him to stop smirking. Yin tells Yu that there is nothing good about this rotten bastard, who is still sneering. But Cheng tells him to stop saying nonsense, because they are just hostages of the situation. It's not like they are together because they want to. He then looked at Yu, so she agreed with him. Yin thought about this for a while, and gave a proposal to her. He tells her to divorce Cheng, because he is a scum, and he only intends to use her. He added that after divorcing Cheng, she can marry him. Yin said that he's not like Cheng, he will treat you 100% better. But before Yu could give any answer, Cheng pushed him away and refused his offer. He said that once the contract has been made, it cannot be terminated halfway. Yin was disappointed by this rule and wondered, who's that brain dead? who added this rule to the contract. He then grabbed Yu's hand and pulled her towards him. He tells her to cuck Cheng and then he will become her lover. Yin said that guys like Cheng spend their salary on action figures and mobile games every month, and he must have accumulated quite some debt, so she should not let him drag her down. Yu interrupted and said that Cheng is a good cook. But Yin said the truth that Cheng must have had no other choice but to learn how to cook since he's so poor that he cannot afford to eat out. Yin asked you, does Cheng told her, that instant noodles are the most noble and delicious dish the human world has to offer. 
This shocked Yu as she asked if they are not, because they are super tasty, and every month they only eat them for a week. Cheng was sweating while Yu added that he told her that instant noodles is not the kind of delicious food that one can afford to eat on a daily basis. Yin looked at Cheng with disgust and said he's the biggest scumbag he ever met. Cheng tried to deny this and said she loves them so much so he's forced to buy them. Yin then asked Yu who manages her living expenses, and she replied, Cheng, because she's not good with the rules of the human world. Yin understood everything, that Cheng has been pickpocketing Yu's money and wasting them on games and action figures. He tells her that she can confirm this by looking into the bank transactions. Cheng tells him to shut up, as there's no way someone in their right mind would spend a month's worth of earnings on an action figure. But even so, he just borrowed the money, and he intends to pay her back. Yin showed the truth to Yu and said that Cheng is a demon, who is rotten to the core. He offered Yu to become his lover as he earns a lot of money, and will take good care of her. Yu was confused, thinking, if all the demons are so open-minded. Cheng knew this is bad, because Yin's offer was so enticing, that even he was tempted for a second. He thought, that if Yu really go out with Yin, then he'll lose his allowance and will be ruthlessly kicked out. And then, he will wind up on the streets and will have to work day and night to pay off the debts. And in the end, he will starve to death and die in the slums. He knows he couldn't let this happen, so he shouted, no, never. He grabbed Yu's hand and pulled her towards him and shouted, she is his wife and he will never give her to him. Yin called him a bastard and asked, what exactly is he doing? But Cheng tells him to shut up and said, he can't live without Yu anymore and if she leaves him, then he will die. Yu was confused and wanted Cheng to let her go. But Cheng tells her to stay quiet and said that he will not give her to anyone. Yin looked at Cheng, who was holding Yu in his hands, but he decided to not give up either. He grabbed Yu's hand and starts pulling her towards him. Yu was getting sandwiched between the two demons and shouting at them to stop, but they were not listening. She was confused and thought she is in a rom-com or something. Yin tells Cheng to leave Yu and live with his waifus. But Cheng said, even if he live with them, but that doesn't mean that he will let him have you. He added that there are many beautiful girls, so why is he stuck on this brainless boobless idiot? Angered by his words, Yin grabbed his collar and asked if he likes big breasts. Cheng looked at him and replied, yes he sure does. He like the way they look. But Yin said, there's nothing good about big breasts, men are the only ones who fantasizes about them. They are heavy and not only they hamper your everyday activities, but also cause neck and back pain if you don't pay attention to your posture. He added that small breasts are compact, convenient, and downright marvelous. Yin then decides to explain just what kind of miracle he's a witness to. He said that small chests fall into one of three categories. The first category, late bloomers, who are lagging behind their peers in terms of growth. Lowlies fall into the second category, their body shape never changes. The third category is skinny people, who ended up like that because of malnutrition or illness. He said that an overwhelming majority of flat chest falls into these categories, however, there is also a fourth category. It's reserved for those exceptional girls, who have developed in all the right places but the chest, and they are the rarest of the rare. Meanwhile, Yu was listening to this nonsense and gets angry. Cheng was still arguing, asking what does it have to do with the fact that he's trying to steal his wife. Unable to control her anger, Yu smashed their heads with each other and left. After a while, the supervisor was worried for Yu because she texted her a long time ago, but she still hasn't replied. She then noticed Yu, who came close to her and leans on her. She thinks that indeed, they are soft, warm and feel very nice. The next day, Cheng was looking at Yu and thought, even though it's been a day since that incident with Yin, but she still isn't talking to him. And what's more, each time he try to start a conversation, she just glares at him fiercely. After a while, Cheng checked the fridge and angrily asked her where is his ice cream, but Yu didn't respond. Then, he asked for the remote, as she was watching since morning, but she didn't give it. This angered Cheng, and he decides to let her sulk, thinking women are such a pain. But after some hours, he made some sweets for Yu and asked if she wants to have a bite. He thought, after giving these sweets to her, she will forgive him. But with superhuman speed, she ate it all. Cheng tried to stop her, but all he got were bite marks all over his hand. He thought, even though this method didn't work, but still, he has a plan B. He then showed her a new game and said, it's super hard and no one could beat it. 
And while Yu was playing, Cheng thought he's a genius, as playing games will distract her from the bad thoughts and lighten her mood. But to his surprise, Yu completed the game in one minute and set the fastest and highest score records. He then used his plan C of using a spinner toy. He thought that after seeing the toy, Yu will beg him for buying it for her as well. He then starts showing his moves, thinking it's going to be over soon. But to his surprise, Yu tells him to go and play in some other place, as he was blocking the TV. Angered, Cheng asked her what exactly she wants him to do. He said that he is just trying to ease the tension, because the ring can give them assignment at any moment, and no one wants to do it in a bad mood. Yu looked at him and said, if that's the case, then she should just take him down with her, and starts pulling out the ring. Shocked, Cheng tells her to stop, as she is going too far. Cheng realized that Yu is a hard one, so with no other choice left, he accepted his mistake. He said he's prepared to accept whatever punishment she see fit. Yu looked at him and asked if he is really serious about the punishment. She said that if he's really serious, then say he was wrong, and he won't do it again. With no other choice left, Cheng said sorry and that he was wrong. But Yu tells him to say it again, but in a loud voice. Even though Cheng was against this, but he still shouted that he was wrong, and apologizes to her. Now that Yu's anger lifted, he tells her that she's the reason why all that happened in the first place. But Yu said that she now knows that he's just using her to get the allowance so he can enjoy his stay in the human world. Cheng replied that even though she's right, but that's not all there is to it. He said when he saw her with Yin, he felt vexed for some reason. But he tells her to not get any wrong idea, it's up to her whether she should elope with that guy or not. Yu denied this and said she just couldn't think straight at that moment. Because that was the first time such a cute girl confessed to her, so she was just a little bit overwhelmed. She explained that when Yin turned into a girl, he's just too cute and merely looking at his face gives her butterflies. Cheng thought and muttered that according to him, Yu is more cuter though. But suddenly, he realized what just happened, but it was already too late. Yu heard his words and starts teasing him. She said, so Senpai did notice her and that's how he sees her. Cheng tells her to stop and said that she's a useless angel that can't do anything. And the only good thing about her is that she's pretty. This makes Yu happy and after teasing him for a while, she forgives him. She added that there won't be a next time and asked how much money did he pocket in all this time. The next day, Yin was thinking about his life and about his curse. Because of his curse, every evening, he turns into a woman. And a long time ago, searching for the way to lift the curse, he came alone to the human world. To avoid revealing his identity, he has to hide his transformation from other people. And the best place for the transformation is the toilet, but he always has trouble in finding one. Also, the girl he transforms into is a beauty, or maybe his succubus buff to attractiveness is the reason. But he gets into trouble on a regular basis. Sometimes on bus, or sometimes when he does any part-time job. And the worst part about the curse is that if he loses his virginity while he is in a girl form, he'd never be able to turn back. He has been living this nightmare forever until one day he overheard that there is an angel who's especially cruel towards demons. So in order to get rid of the curse, he sneaked into her turf, thinking he would torture her and show her the wrath of a demon. But even though his plan was perfect, but at present, all he could do now is cry. Suddenly, the supervisor came and starts staring at his melons. She asked that she wants his help with something, and order him to take off his clothes. This shocked Yin because he knows that the supervisor is up to something. But in front of the supervisor, all he could do is let her do whatever she wants. After a while, we see her taking measurements of his chest and other areas. And after checking, she understood that when Yin transforms into a woman, his mass remains the same. Which means that the excess mass is transferred to other parts of his body. Yin took a sigh of relief, thinking her experiments are now over. But the supervisor tells him that it's just the beginning. She went close to him and starts groping his melons. Meanwhile, Yu was in a toy shop and is squeezing a toy that she likes. The supervisor said that Yin's body doesn't seem different from an ordinary woman. But whenever his emotional excitement reaches a certain level, his tail comes out. After several hours of experiments, the supervisor collected a good amount of data, leaving Yin on the floor, completely tired. Yin stood up and said, why exactly is she going to such lengths? Is it that fun in having him as her toy? He asked, then why is she okay with you marrying a demon, because angels hate demons? The supervisor replied, that she don't hate demons, and it doesn't matter whether he is an angel or a demon, 
When it comes to love, she's a pretty open-minded person. The next day, Cheng was in deep thought. Yin was with him too and thought that he's having a deja vu. He asked Cheng what is wrong, and Cheng tells him that it's about you. He said she hasn't hit him for a while now. Confused, Yin asked if she should hit him on a daily basis. But Cheng explained that the ring has a weird function, that when you're about to hit your partner, the ring on your hand converts your animosity into arousal. And he used to use this function to mess with her. But recently, he stole her ice cream and licked it in front of her. But instead of getting angry, she took a bite and said she will buy some more for him. And when she was looking for the TV remote, he tells her that he will not let her watch anything. But surprisingly, she took the remote from his hands and said they can watch it together. He was worried that every time he tried to mess with her, she doesn't show even the slightest sign of anger. Yin shouted at Cheng, asking why does he want her to be angry so much. But Cheng shouted back and said, because it's fun, and anyone in his place would have done the same. He added that he's a demon and the pain of others is his happiness. Even though Yin wants to deny it, but what Cheng said makes sense to him. Yin thought that he has heard of this animosity converted into arousal before, but couldn't remember where. Cheng then added one more thing, that today's morning, what you did was beyond strange. She gets ready early in the morning, as she was going to meet her friends. Cheng tells her to not get lost again, and she said that she has already got lost so many times, that she knows this neighborhood like the back of her hand. But before leaving, she set his hair and gave him a smile. Cheng said that he was speechless from the shock and couldn't believe that she changed so much. He said that before, she was wild and aggressive, like a demi-human. But recently, out of nowhere, she gives off a vibe of a docile house cat. He thought that there is something wrong with her behavior. Yin was shocked to hear all that and realized that Yu has a thing for Cheng. Yin looked at Cheng and thought just what kind of dumb protagonist he is for not seeing such an obvious thing. He was so jealous, thinking why didn't this happen to him as he's the most suitable candidate for this kind of development. He cried because all he is getting is endless torture by that stupid four-eyed sadist on a daily basis. But suddenly, a thought came to his mind. He smiled, thinking the fact that Cheng is such an utter loser isn't necessarily a bad thing. He then asked Cheng to repeat just what did he say. Cheng replied that according to him, Yu is interested in him. But Yin said that it's impossible. Moreover, this might actually be some kind of a trap, and Cheng is in a deep shit. Yin added that he has heard about this cruel form of torture, and it's a brutal one, which freaked you both physically and mentally. First, she goes out her way to shower you with attention, and when you start liking her back, she cruelly and callously abandons you, dashing all your dream and aspirations when you are the most vulnerable. And once this happens, you will suffer from the pain that's worse than any physical torture. After seeing Cheng's reaction, Yin thought that his plan succeeded. He knows that Cheng is a virgin and it was his first love, so after hearing his words, Cheng will lose interest in the opposite sex entirely. But Cheng muttered that Yu is an idiot, and she doesn't have the mental capacity to come up with such intricate schemes. Yin then asked him, has any other girl ever shown that kind of affection for him before? Yin said that Cheng not only has a twisted personality, but is an utterly selfish cheapstake, who pockets his wife's money and wastes them on mobile games. Cheng said that maybe Yu is after his handsome looks or lust after his body. To which, Yin looked at him like he's some kind of imbecile. Then at last, Yin tells Cheng to wake up and said, how can he forget about that cruel cold-hearted woman who is close to you? He strikes fear in Cheng's heart by saying that the supervisor might be the mastermind behind all this. Cheng was sweating and realized this makes perfect sense. And while Cheng was scared, Yin was happy to know that Cheng fell into his trap. He puts his hand on Cheng's shoulder and said, next time someone has a crush on him, he should just send them away. But in reality, Yin thought that Cheng is a dumbass. Cheng agreed and thanked Yin for his advice. Yin replied, they are brothers in arms, and if he ever gets stressed out about something, he can just come and talk to him. At night while Cheng was at home, even though he looked like he was successfully bamboozled. But in reality, he was thinking just how stupid Yin is, because there's no way. He would believe a word coming out of a demon's mouth. That's right, this man doesn't trust anyone at all. But he thought that as a precaution, he shouldn't rule out the possibility entirely. Therefore, Cheng devised a method to probe the truth. He was so good in playing mind tricks that his skill level could be called psychological warfare. By using his talk no jutsu and unlimited babble works, he is able to talk the enemy right into verbal traps. And thus, the enemy had no choice but to be brutally played with. 
He went close to you and said, he just made some black tea for her. You accepted the tea, but before she could drink it, Cheng said that he'd like to ask her something. You said okay, so he asked, what does she think about him? Confused, you asked, what exactly does he mean by that? She looked at him smiling and tells him to stop as it's looking so gross. But making a fool of himself was a part of his plan. He deliberately worded the question that way in order to make the enemy believe that he's just an idiot who can't even phrase a question properly. Doing that misleads your opponent into thinking that you have an awkward side to you, but also makes an impression of a delicate person. You took a sigh of relief and tells him that he scared her there for a second. You thought for a while and said, first of all, he's an otaku, who loves to hug Dakimakuras with waifu prints, and giggles like an idiot. And as she was speaking, Cheng was trying to control his anger. She added that he's also a jerk, who steals money from his family. Cheng angrily asked if she is trying to pick a fight, but you replied that she is just saying the truth. She added that after living with him for a while, she found out that he has a lot of good points too. And even though he might look like a bad person at first glance, he's actually easy to get along with. Cheng then tells her to stop, as it's so gross to hear this from her. She then starts playing with her hair and said, it's his turn now. She said, it is unfair if she's the only one who had to tell how they feel. Cheng smiled and thought, this is his chance as the atmosphere is just right. He then asked you if she likes him, which startled you. Cheng thought it's checkmate, because he can tell if she's lying by judging her reaction. But in his excitement, he said to you that he likes her. And when he realized about what he just said, it felt like his soul left his body. He thought that he made a slip of tongue, and pondering his next move while talking was a bad idea. But still, he tried to not panic, as he still can salvage the situation. He was thinking all this in milliseconds. He thought this surprise attack cost him 800 points, but the enemy lost a thousand, so she has to give herself away. But when he looked at Yu's face, he understood that he messed up. At that very moment, imperceptible changes were happening in Yu's mind. The beginning of the world, the dinosaurs, apes, mankind, and the entire history of humans. Cheng pinched her cheek and tells her to come back to reality. But as soon as Yu get her sense back, she jumped far, far away from Cheng. Cheng knew he messed up big as this reaction was just way too strong. He then heard Yu's voice saying, sorry she doesn't know much about this stuff so she needs to call the supervisor. But before she could dial, Cheng shouted and tells her to stop as this was just a joke. He grabbed her hand to stop her and said, she can't do anything stupid. But when he looked at her face, he thought that she is just too cute. But then he punched himself to calm him down and got an idea. He started laughing and said he knew that she really has a thing for him, and with just a little talk, she gave herself away. He said he just wanted to check her reaction, and he played her like a fiddle. You heard all this, and Cheng added that he doesn't like her. Yu then angrily tells her to not make such cheap jokes, and any normal person would have given the same reaction as her. She said no one in their right mind would fall in love with a stupid rotten demon. She added, it's because he does this kind of stupid shit, he's so unpopular. Angered, Cheng headbutt her and tells her to stop insulting him. But you also hit him and said, he's an idiot, and after hitting each other for a while, they both fall to the ground. They both were thinking the same thing, why the hell they are even fighting, and they are such a fool. You thought, this is the worst, because first, he said some crazy stuff, then he does some nonsense, so she hate this day. But while she was getting up, her leg hit the table, and Cheng's action figure was about to fall. Cheng noticed this and jumped to catch the figure. He caught the model but got close to you in the process. You asked him to move a bit as he was jamming her hair. Cheng quickly got up and apologized to her, but the ring angrily asked why didn't he kiss her as it wants to see the kiss. It announced this is an assignment, smooch her right this instant. Cheng shouted, why now, all of a sudden, you stupid ring as it has been lying low for so long. But the ring tells him to shut up and said, it's no kiss no life for him today. This shocked Cheng, as now, he has no other choice but to kiss. He then heard you saying, since it's an assignment, so there's no helping it now. She tells him to hurry up, and said, she too doesn't really want to do this kind of stuff, but now, they don't have any choice left. Confused, Cheng wondered, when did she become this bold? Yu tells him to do it as quickly as he can, before she lose control. Cheng thought, if he keeps hesitating, it might look like he's conscious of kissing her. He then went close to her for the kiss, thinking it will be over in a flash. 
He looked at Yu's lips and wondered, just how can they smell so nice? Yu looked in his eyes and thought, he's making it even harder for her with those eyes. Unable to control herself, she grabbed him and closed her eyes. Cheng was trying to calm him down as their lips were getting closer. He thought, this is merely a kiss, just a contact of mucous membranes, nothing more, but his heart was beating so fast. And then, after a long struggle, he finally did it and jumped back. Yu's hand was on her cheek while Cheng's was on his lips. A smile appeared on Yu's face and she called him a chicken. Cheng said that the ring didn't say where to kiss, so he did the right thing. But Yu was just laughing and calling him a chicken. The ring then announced that the assignment is complete, but in a disappointing voice. Cheng then tells Yu that they did it just because of this stupid assignment and there can be nothing between a demon and an angel. After a while, Cheng was in his room, thinking what the hell just he did. At the same time, Yu was thinking that it was so embarrassing. They both thought the same thing, that they really were gonna kiss. The ring then tells them that for completing this assignment, they have graduated from this difficulty level. The next day, Yin reached the supervisor's office and was shocked to see the mess. The supervisor explained that they are in the process of archiving old documents and Yu isn't particularly helpful. Yu tells Yin that her class is going to start soon and asked if he can help the supervisor in her place. Yin agreed, so Yu said goodbye to him and left. Yin thought this is a good opportunity for him to find the supervisor's weaknesses so he can use them against her. He doesn't know anything about her and it feels like she's always hiding something. One time, she said her name, but when Yin tries to recall it, his entire body turns numb and he feels dizzy like some force is stopping him. And even her glasses are strange, because no matter from what angle you look at them, you can't see her eyes. He thought that if he take those glasses off, he would find something. In his curiosity, he moved his hands towards her glasses, but quickly stepped back when he realized just what was about to happen. He quickly start cleaning the room so he can save his life and noticed a box of some strange things. After cleaning up, he asked the supervisor just what kind of job does she do there. She said she handles the district safety, supervises angels and demons that live in the human world, and also handle registrations and transfers. She added that the rest is the part of her main job, which is similar to succubus nature. Confused, Yin asked what exactly does she mean? Supervisor then tells him that she's actually a Cupid. Cupid is a common name for angels that specialize in love relationships. They can make people fall in love by shooting a love arrow. They can also create a love protection to keep romantic progress on track. Yin said that Cupid must be some kind of a military rank used by battle angels. But the supervisor corrects him and said, it's a common name for angels of love, to which Yin coughed blood. He said, there's no way he can accept this, as someone like her can never be a Cupid. He cried and said, Cupids are very popular even among the demons. They are kind, charming, elegant, and very caring. They hate violence and strife. They even treat demons, whose beliefs are so different from theirs with the same kindness. They cheer you up when you are having a hard time, and give you advice when you are having troubles. The supervisor smiled and asked him if she's not gentle, caring, and adorable. And Yin replied that these are the least suitable adjectives for describing her. She then tells him to handle that box with care as there are quite valuable things inside it. Yin gets confused and thought, how can these strange stuff be valuable? But then, suddenly, he understood everything. He excitedly asked the supervisor if the box has the tools of a cupid, to which she said yes. He quickly opened the box and picked an arrow, saying he knows about it. He said, hitting two hearts with this arrow plants seeds of mutual affection that grow into love. But the supervisor refused and said, that arrow just makes the target go into heat. Confused, Yin's mind couldn't understand what she just said. She then picked a rope and Yin excitedly said, he knows about it. He said that it's a red binding cord of predestined love, and if you bind a couple with this cord, it will make the sparks of love fly between them. But the supervisor denied it too and said, it's just a rope for BDSM games, it just increases the pleasure if you wrap it around. Yin then picked a spray, and the supervisor said, it just makes one go into heat. Then the next was a smartphone, that lets you hypnotize people and commands them. Yin called her an asshole in his mind, as all those tools are just for her amusement. But then, the supervisor said that she can't rely solely on tried and true tools nowadays. 
She said that kids these days are so spoiled that if she doesn't up her game, then she won't be able to keep up with them. So she even uses real guns and bullets in her job. Yin heard this and cursed the person who let her become a Cupid. She added, she's not doing it because she wants to, as there are fewer and fewer marriages with each passing year. She said, in search of joy, youth turns to comics and anime, and more people stay single. So if this continues, then humanity will perish. Shocked, Yin asked if it's really this serious, but she replied that she's just messing around with him. She then tells him about an office worker and a schooler. She said, they have been living together for three months already, but all they had done is just some kisses and hand-holding. But then, she smiled and said, this is where Yin comes in. She said, first a Cupid gets a couple together, and then, a succubus is responsible for parting skills, so they are the best team ever. She then tells him to wrap up the cleaning, and get ready to work. Confused, Yin asked, just what kind of work is she talking about, because he was just here to help with cleaning. But she tells him to stop saying nonsense, as they have an important job tonight. Yin immediately refused, because he knows that the supervisor is up to no good. Yin tried to run away, but suddenly he fall to the ground and lose all his strength. The supervisor laughed and asked, how is he feeling after losing his strength? She went close to him and explained that his body became not only weak, but also very sensitive. She added that the caller punished him for going against his master's order. Yin was begging her to stop, as she was using her hand on his oversensitive body. She plays with his tail and said, if he doesn't behave, his body will turn weak and his skin will become very sensitive. In front of supervisor's endless torture, all Yin could do was beg for forgiveness. She then lift his head and said, he didn't have a right to refuse from the very beginning. Yin apologized for his mistake and agreed to help her with anything she wants. Then the next day at school, a teacher tells everyone that to get credit for the course, they need to complete the assignment. She tells them to split into group of four people minimum, as teamwork will be essential there. After hearing her words, Chen gets disappointed. The other students started to make groups to complete the assignment. Yu's friends offer her to team up with them, and she happily agreed. But still, there was one person short, because the teacher said they need at least four people in a group. Yu looked around and noticed Cheng leaving alone. As Cheng was walking, someone grabbed his hand. He turns to look at the person and it was Yu. Without explaining anything to him, she started dragging him. She takes him to her friends and said she found someone who isn't in a group. Cheng refused and said he will never join a group. Yu asked him the reason, because he's not in any group. Yu's friends were trying to remember who Cheng is. Suddenly, one girl remembered Cheng and said she saw him in a cafeteria with that big breast girl when they were harassing you. The other girl was shocked to know this and asked what happened after that. She replied that after some time, you kicked their asses and left. At the same time, Cheng was thinking of a way to weasel out of the situation because he knew what the next question will be. And just as he expected, the girl asked you how exactly they know each other. Yu was about to reveal that they are both living together, but Cheng interrupted and said they live in the same apartment block. Cheng whispered to Yu that she was about to expose their relationship to them. Yu agreed, but still replied that they are her friends, so telling them shouldn't be a problem. But as soon as Cheng said he will add two chicken legs in the dinner tonight, Yu tells them that they are strangers. The teacher then announced that the topics for the group assignment will be chosen via a lottery and told them to get in line. Cheng was thinking of a way to get out of his current situation, but Yu grabs his arm and tells him to get along with others a bit more. The other team members were talking about the hard topics they received and that they are screwed. Yu confidently tells them to witness her pulling an easy and simple topic. At the same time, the teacher went close to Cheng and asked how is he doing, which shocked Yu. The teacher said now that he hasn't come to her classes for a while, she has gotten a bit lonely, but Cheng tells her to stop making jokes. Confused, Yu wondered why the teacher is so frank with Cheng. She quickly pulled him toward her and said she drew the chit so he need to see what she got. She then taunted him and said she didn't expect him to have a friend he has close relations with. Confused, Cheng asked what exactly did she mean, because she is a teacher. He said she is just a teacher, whose classes he go to and there is nothing close about their relationship. His teacher understood everything and said he's just joking. She went close to him and said they used to have a pretty close relationship. She said, they used to do things that they can't forget about. 
but Cheng angrily replied, if it weren't for her, then he wouldn't have ended like he did. After hearing their conversation, Yu's mind stopped responding and she was imagining something she shouldn't have. But Cheng tells her to come back to her senses and said, this teacher likes to mess with people by using words that are easy to misunderstand. At the same time, Yu's friends were enjoying a live show and thought, watching them is so fun. The teacher then whispered to Cheng that his girlfriend is really cute and she didn't expect someone with his personality to get a girlfriend. Cheng replied that they are not like that, but she motivates him to reach that stage quickly. She then asked you how is she doing and tells her to not be so stiff and that she can call her Lan Ni when she is not on the clock. In reality, Lan knew that Yu is jealous and she finds it so exciting. She then tells Yu to relax and said she was just joking as she would never be into such a childish guy. She then revealed that this idiot has already failed twice and it's his third attempt already. Shocked, Yu realized that Cheng is super dumb. But Cheng tells her to shut up as she is the last person he want to hear it from. Yan added that Cheng is doing well in other parts of the exam, but when it comes to the group project, he always fails. Every time she gave any group project, he is the first person to leave or ask if he can do it alone. One time he tried to bribe her with the Cayman Rider action figure, which she obviously refused. That shocked Cheng so much, because according to him, there's no way a person could refuse to a Cayman Rider action figure. But unknown to everyone, this time, Cheng was planning to hack into the school network to change his mark from fail to pass. He then saw Yu laughing and shouted at her to stop because she is the one who ruined his perfect plan. Yan then tells them to stop messing around and asked what exactly they got as their assignment. Yu tells him to hurry up as she is so excited to see their topic. But as soon as Cheng opened the chit, he was confused to see the game written on it. Yu's friends asked what exactly they can do in that topic. Yan replied, even though the topic looks easy, it is really hard and cannot be done by only four people. She then tell two other students to join Cheng's group, as those two are not in any group. She then taunts Cheng and said she never thought that the day would come when her lone wolf joins a group. She said he's really a lucky devil as this cute little girl is taking care of him. She tells him to treasure you or someone will steal her away from him. Cheng tells her to shut up and thought, why is every character in eyeglasses is such a busybody? Suddenly, another teacher came and asked Lan if she is done yet as it is time for their lunch. Lan then tells the class to complete their homework by next week and left. The other boys were with Yu and said she really is amazing because she got such an easy topic. They muttered that it is such an easy topic that they will even have the time to hang out. They then suggests that every member will do their share of work and then they will complete it into a single report and left. Yu's friends were angry at their behavior because they decided everything on their own. And as they were talking with Yu to create a chat group, Chen came and gave his phone to add him in the group. They then asked Yu if she will be okay because she's such a scatterbrain sometimes that they can't help but worry. But Yu confidently tell them to not worry as there will be no problem whatsoever. They then tell her to give them a call if she has any problem and left. And after her friends left, she asked Cheng if everything is okay, as he's been acting strange today. She said, usually, he gets into his bad attitude when something like this happens, but he was just too quiet today. Cheng thought that nowadays, Yu is picking on him more and more. He replied that he's done here and tried to leave. But suddenly, Yu grabbed him from behind. He looked back and saw Yu making a puppy face. But then, she said it's nothing, and he can go, so Cheng left. After a while, Yu was sitting alone as everyone has left. But Cheng was standing behind the doors and wondered, what exactly is she doing alone? Suddenly, two boys came and asked Yu to join their group. But before Yu could say anything, Cheng put some papers on the desk and said, she's already in a group. He then gave those papers to Yu and starts dragging her. Confused, the boys wondered, what exactly is wrong with them? Outside, Yu asked Cheng why did he come back to class. Cheng angrily replied that he was afraid that she might try something foolish so he came to check on her. Besides, she can't do anything by herself and eventually she will come begging to him for help so that's why he came. He then smiled and asked her why did she make those puppy eyes and pulled his shirt when he was leaving the class. Yu whispered that she will do her best to not make any trouble for him and asked if they can work together. Shocked, Cheng tells her to do what she wants, which made Yu extremely happy. As they were walking, Yu asked where are they going and what are these papers. Cheng said they reached the location 
and asked her to hand some of the papers to him. He said, these are the survey forms that he made after he left her in the class. But he said, making these was the easy part, but finding people to fill them will be much harder. He added, this is the most popular place in the neighborhood where you can find people of all age groups. There is also a shopping mall and a food court with high traffic, so this should be the best place to conduct a survey. He gave some of the forms to you and said, it might take up to two to three days as no one wants to spend their free time in filling out forms. But you replied that she can get enough people to fill out all of these forms. She said, it is an easy task and he can leave it to her. She then excitedly went to complete her task. She went close to some people and tells them about the forms. And in just some minutes, a crowd gathered around her to fill out the forms. Shocked, Cheng couldn't believe his eyes when you asked him to hand over his forms as well because she was already out of forms. And in just half an hour, she gave all the forms to Cheng. Cheng thought that her sociability is god tier and wondered just what kind of monster she is. He asked her if she has any superpower because she did this in such a short time and they even gave her so many snacks. You replied that she met most of these people back when she was getting lost all over this neighborhood so they kind of know her. Some kids then came running to her and tells her to come later to play with them and also tells her to not get lost again. After some time, you took a bath and tells Cheng that the bath is free to use now. But Cheng replied that he will go in some time, which shocked you. She went close to him and asked, what exactly is he doing? Cheng replied that he's sorting out the forms they gathered today. You offered to help him in that, but Cheng refused and said she can't do things like any normal person does. He then looked at the free show and thought, this idiot is so defenseless. Yu was shocked to see that they have gathered quite a variety of forms. Suddenly, she looked at something and starts laughing. Cheng was looking at her and thought, it's only times like this, he realized that she really is an angel. All this time, he was thinking of her as a fool, who only gets in the way, but now he thought that perhaps the fool was actually him all along. Suddenly, Yu went close to him and asked, why is he staring at her like that? But Cheng replied that he wasn't staring at her, he was just lost in some thoughts. He then checked his phone and said, everyone has already decided on what to do. Yu gets excited and asked him why didn't he tell this to her before. Cheng replied that she should have received the notifications from the group chat. But Yu tells him that her phone is out of battery and she forgot to put it on charge before taking shower. Cheng then explained that they need to make a game that shouldn't be too complex like a tabletop game or something. Yu then quickly went and brings a game and said, this game was given to her by the supervisor so they can play it to see if this works. But Cheng refused and said, nothing good can come out of touching that woman's gift. But suddenly, the ring announced that they must play this game together. They both knew that something is going to happen, but still, Yu tells him to be positive. Even though Cheng was unhappy, he agreed to play. Yu then starts unwrapping the game, but stopped halfway. Cheng asked her why did she stop and what's inside the box. Yu said that the game says truth or dare orders for lovers on it. She then found something more in the box so she decides to read it. It said lie detector so she wondered why is it here. But suddenly Cheng hit the device and said his hand slipped. He then crushed the lie detector with his leg and said his foot also slipped. He then took a sigh of relief and thought he almost fell into that classic trap. Yu was crying at the loss of her game device, but Cheng tells her to stop crying, as it was for her good. Now all that left were the cards of truth and dare. Cheng tells Yu to not start the timer, so he can check what's written on the back of the cards. But to his shock, Yu already started the timer, as she doesn't want to let him ruin her gaming experience again. Depressed, Cheng was thinking, what can he do about this moron, but then a thought crossed his mind. He asked you if she has ever played a truth or dare game before, to which she replied, no. But she tells him to not worry and said, she is a fast learner, so we just need to go first and show her the ropes. Cheng explained that in a truth or dare game, you need to draw a card and do whatever will be written on it. But this make you excited, and she said, it's gonna be so fun now. Cheng was crying inside and was begging God to kill him. Still, he decides to go first and show her how the game is played. But as soon as he touched the card, he picked it up in style and said, it's his turn. Actually, once he touched the card, the spirit of a duelist suddenly flared up in him. He tells you, no matter what kind of card game she's playing, but when she draw a card, she have to perform this ritual. And only then, the deck will answer her expectations. But when Cheng looked at the card, it says, to play a make a baby game together. 
The next second, Cheng tears the card into pieces. He said it was just a demonstration, so it doesn't count and tells her to start the game. Confused, you thought that something is wrong, but she still decides to go first. She said the real game starts now and picked a card. She imitate Cheng's style and shouted, it's her turn. She thought that this ritual is quite fun and decides to see what she got in the card. And to her shock, it say, play make a baby game together in a park, behind the woods. Disgusted, she too tear the card into pieces. They were both sitting quietly, realizing what just happened. You apologize to Cheng for starting the timer as she learned her lesson. Suddenly, the ring announced, if they continue to destroy the game cards and props, then they will get punished. Unable to do anything about the situation, Cheng agreed to play and move his hand to pick a card. He picked the card and suddenly felt silent. You asked him what exactly is written on his card. Cheng showed the card to her that said they need to hug for three minutes. Yu starts blushing after reading the card and slowly open her arms and tells Cheng to hug her. Cheng hesitated and said it's just a game and it's totally up to them whether they want to do it or not. He said they can't force them and ask you about her thoughts. You agreed and they both tried to laugh it off. But suddenly he heard a laughing sound from the ring. Cheng gets terrified and suddenly he hugged you. Flustered, you asked what exactly is he doing and tells him to let her go. But Cheng tells her to bear with it for a while because he can't control his body anymore. He said he can't even move a finger and this damn ring must have gained a new function after that level up. He said, it will be normal in three minutes, so bear it until then. Cheng then squeezed you a little, and you grabbed his t-shirt. Cheng was thinking, why isn't this over yet, as this is the first time he has held a girl for so long. He thought, Yu's body is so slender and soft. She also smells so good, that Cheng was not able to control himself, but he still decides to endure it. Then the timer announced, that time is up and this round is cleared. Cheng excitedly said it's finally over, and he can use his body again. But then, he noticed Yu's hand grabbing his t-shirt. Suddenly, Yu came back to her senses and pushed him away with her full force. After a while, it was Yu's turn, so she picked up a card that says, your opponent tells what he or she likes about you. But Cheng called this nonsense and said, he doesn't have anything to tell. But the ring used its power on him again, and he suddenly started speaking. He said that all this time, he kept a secret related to her that he couldn't tell anyone about. It was that he never really cared that much whether she is flat or not. He said sorry for calling her a washboard all these times because it was just an excuse to pick on her. Yu was angrily hiding her chest from her and was looking away. But then Cheng added that he's actually into legs. Be it hips with lots of flesh and elasticity, or pink and smooth feet or the delightful Zedai Ryuiki. From top to bottom, he loves every inch of them. And also, he pointed at Yu and said her legs are his ideal type. They are not too long and not too short, not too thin or thick, they are just perfect. And the bouncing feeling they give off, it's the best of the best. Be it bare legs, while tights or black ones, her legs can pull off everything. He added that he likes her in the black tights the most. But suddenly, he came back to his senses and realized what just happened. He thought, why the hell did he tell her that? He tried to cover up by saying that the ring made him say all that. But Yu looked at him in disgust and tells him to stay away from her while she was hiding her legs. Cheng tried to explain things, but she called him a pervert and covered her ears and shouts that she is not listening to him. Cheng cursed the ring because he realized that it's the second level of the ring that made him do that. But then he thought, now that it came to this, then there is no point in stopping now, and he will take her down with her. He shouted that it's his turn and pick a card. He smiled as he showed the card to you that said, your opponent reveals one secret, and you may ask them anything. He said, she can cover her mouth, but it's all futile. He went close to her and asked if she ever had any indecent thoughts about him. But then, he thought he's an idiot, because he wasted his chance by asking this question. But suddenly, he heard you saying sometimes. She said that his collarbone is very beautiful. When he concentrates on his studies, she can't help but sneak a look at it. And especially after he's fresh from the bath, when he's covered with the beads of droplets, she has the urge to kiss it. Surprised, Cheng couldn't believe that you really had this thought about him. Suddenly, you came to realize what just happened and tried to explain the situation to him. She said the ring made her say that, but Cheng tells her to stay away from him because he never thought she was after his body. Yu was trying to explain, but Cheng was not listening and called her pervert. 
Yu sits down in a corner and mutters she wants to die. But Cheng laughed at her and said, this serves her right, as she's the same as him. Angered, Yu get up and picked a card, shouting, she's gonna squeeze all his embarrassing secrets out of him. After a while, we see some cards on the floor with the titles, name the most sensitive spot, embrace each other for three minutes, telling your most embarrassing secret and many more. Along with the cards, Cheng and Yu were also on the floor, completely tired. Cheng taunts Yu to accept that she's scared to continue, but she replied that her courage knows no bounds. Cheng said, then don't come crying and begging to him to stop later and picked a card. Yu replied that there's no need to force himself, he can just admit his defeat and also picked a card. Cheng's card says caved on on it and he did it without breaking a sweat. They then played a pocky game, and the first one to break the snack will be punished, but they both tied. Then the princess carries pose, then the transformation pose, the advanced transformation, and the ultimate transformation. And after all these useless cards, the main one starts again. The first was to caress your opponent's face for one minute. Yu was shy at first, but when she noticed Cheng's hand shaking, she starts smiling and make fun of him. Then the next one was SM bandage play. But even though you tied him in ropes, there was no completion signal. Cheng realized that it's SM, so Yu has to step on him to complete the task. Yu agreed and put her leg on him, but it was still not enough. And after thinking for a while, Cheng realized the mistake and tells her to step on him harder. And so, Yu used more force on him, and the timer announced that this round is clear. Cheng excitedly shouted that it worked, but then, Yu used more force on him. And as Cheng was shouting in pain, Yu was enjoying this. But then suddenly, she came back to her senses and realized that she was really crushing him. She quickly stepped back and apologized to him. After a while, Cheng free himself and his body was covered in bruises. Yu was confused and thought, why was she doing it? She then heard Cheng's voice, saying it's the last card. He went close to her and said, he's so looking forward to it. The card says that he can order her to do anything. He laughed and shouted, it's his turn and he will pay her back double for what she just did to him. Yu was sitting quietly in front of him, waiting for her punishment. But Cheng thought he can't bully her when she is like this and decided to just ask her some random question to end the game. And after thinking for a while, he said that she has a lot of hoodies and asked if she is into hip-hop fashion. He thought it's just a simple and harmless question, but in reality it's not. Yu answered that because her chest is too small, so she wear loose clothes to hide that from others. For a moment, they both fell silent but then, Cheng couldn't control and started laughing at her. And while Yu was hitting Cheng, the ring announced that their assignment is now complete. Cheng used his hand to stop Yu and said, the assignment is complete now, but by mistake, Cheng put his hand on her chest. He starts sweating, because he realized that Yu was not wearing any underwear. Then, all that can be heard after that, was the ring saying, dangerously aggressive behavior detected. After a while, they both were sitting when Cheng said, he checked the report, and it seems to be fine. Yu said she's feeling sleepy, so she is going to sleep. Cheng nods and said that he still have some business to take care of. The same night, in some other place, Yin asked the supervisor why she brought him to a remote place like this. She replied, it's for the work and it's their first mission together. Then, some guys arrived, and the supervisor muttered, so this time, he came too. They were both hiding behind some boxes, and Yin asked her, who are these guys? She explained, it's a gang, whose leader got rejected by every girl for his menacing looks, and now, he visits popular spots for couples to harass them. Yin asked, why did she bring him, and what can he do about the situation? She replied, that she wants him to charm the gang's leader, and once he rediscovers the beauty of love, he will surely stop his harassment raids. She said, that he just need to use his ability, the charming beam, and it will be over in a flash. Yin said he doesn't have that kind of ability and asked why she wants him to do it, because she can just make a pin cushion out of him with her weird arrows. She explained that her arrows have time limits and there are some side effects as well, so he is the one who needs to do it. She said it's too easy for him, he just needs to tickle his ego and he will come wagging his tail right away. But Yin shouted at her to stop her delusions, as it's not how it works in real life. Yin then explained about his ability, that it can just allow one to choose an appropriate manner of speech to capture the heart and mind of the other person. The supervisor was disappointed by him, because that is not what she read in Succubi User Guide. She gave him a disappointed look and said, so it's beyond your abilities. Yin suddenly realized her plan and said, he is a straight guy and he will not fell into her trap. 
He was smiling thinking, reverse psychology doesn't work on him. But then he heard her calling him a useless succubus. She said, he is a succubus in the name only, so from now, she will call him Trashcubus, or a virgin Trashcubus. Angered, Yin tells her to shut her trap, and said, he will show her, what a real succubus is capable of. And while the gang leader was waiting for his prey to arrive, he noticed someone attacking him, and blocked the attack. Disguised, Yin said to the leader, that he got quick reflexes, because he did not expect him to block that. The other members were angered by this and decide to teach Yin a lesson, but are stopped by the leader. Angered, he said, since Yin came there alone, so he must be very brave or extremely stupid. Yin taunts him, saying he won't be able to laugh any longer when he will be done with him. Ten minutes ago, Yin was thinking of a plan, because he knew that the leader is the type that's a bit hard to handle. The supervisor interrupted and asked when he's going to seduce him, but Yin angrily refused and said, his ability doesn't work like that. He tells her that ordinary methods doesn't work on guys like him, so he needs the right tool for the job. As if the supervisor was waiting for this, she quickly showed him all the tools she was carrying. He then tells her to give chest compression bandage and a face mask to him. And before leaving, he tells her to not worry, because he's a succubus who can handle every man and can even turn a gay straight. The leader dashed toward Yin to attack him, but Yin thought that he's too slow for him. Ever since he turned into a woman, in order to protect himself, he studied all kinds of self-defense techniques. And as he has a lot of combat experience, Yin can easily handle a few punks, even though he doesn't have the strength of a man. Yin knows that winning this fight won't solve anything, but as soon as he will beat their leader, his minions will fall in line. And as the fight goes on, Yin gets cornered by the leader and he tried to kick him there. But the leader stopped his kick and completely blocked his hands as well. He then removed Yin's mask to see why he was so desperate to hide his face under the mask. But he gets shocked to see that Yin was a girl. Confused, he muttered, a girl. Yin said so what, if you wanna do it, then just do it. The leader shouted, he doesn't care whether she's a girl or a guy. He doesn't show mercy on any. And as he was about to punch Yin, he looked at his face and felt something in his heart. The leader suddenly stopped, wondering why he can't hit her. His minions were cheering for him, and shouts to teach Yin a lesson. Yin smiled and taunts him, saying is he not able to do it, because she's a girl. But the leader tells Yin to shut up and said, he doesn't even have to move a finger to deal with him. He said, no woman has ever been able to look at him for 10 seconds straight, they all fainted halfway, or wept in fear. He tells Yin to keep looking at him, as he will show him what true fear is. But Yin muttered and asked the leader to stop staring at him, as he's not used to being stared at like this. This was his first attack on the leader's heart. Yin smiled, because he realized that his plan is working on the leader. Yin then free himself from the leader's hands and tried to escape, but the leader pushed him on the wall. But then, according to Yin's plan, the bandage was ripped by the leader's hand, and his melons bounce and hit his face. For a moment, the leader felt that he's in heaven and muttered they were extremely soft. Yin shouts, his bandage broken, and tried to act cute. The leader was on the floor, completely defeated. The minions shouted at Yin and said they will kill him for injuring their boss. But when they looked at Yin's face, they all froze like statues. The leader tells them to stop and ask Yin, why isn't he afraid after looking his face? But Yin replied that he loved guys who has fearsome faces as they look so manly and handsome. But then he said in a cute voice that he wasn't talking about the leader, but just telling him his personal preferences. This was the second successful attack on the leader's heart. The leader then asked him why is he dressed like a guy. Yin replied, there are a lot of guys weaker than him, and when he defeats them, they all say that they were just holding back, because he's a girl. So he dressed like a guy to stop losers from using this lame excuse, to which the leader smirked. Angered, Yin tells him to stop laughing, and finish their fight. But the leader smiled and said, it's her win, because he is not in the mood for fighting now. Surprised, Yin said okay and muttered, he caught him by surprise. This was going all according to Yin's plan. He said to the leader that even after finding that he's a girl, he didn't treat him any differently. He then acts cute and thanks the leader, saying, that made him happy. And this was the third successful attack on the leader's heart. He then looked away and tried to leave, but is stopped by the leader. He asked him to tell him her name before leaving. But Yin just smiled and said, he's not gonna tell it to him yet, but next time, if he can beat him, then he will think about it, and left. And this was the final successful attack, and the leader got charmed by Yin. As Yin was leaving, an evil smile emerged on his face, saying, got you. 
After returning, he was bragging about his awesome performance to the supervisor. She agreed with him and said, it was so cool. She said, when the leader grabbed him, she thought that it's over, to which Yin laughed and said, it was all an act. He said, this trick is called fake surrender, and each move was calculated, and strictly according to his plan. The supervisor asked, how did he know his preferences, to which Yin smiled and said, no one knows a guy's heart better than another guy. She admits that it was impressive, but reminds him that he is a guy, so why is he so happy to capture the heart of another guy? After hearing that, Yin lost his smile and fall to his knees. He said she is right and wondered, why did he go far and beyond, to find a key to the heart of a guy? But suddenly, the supervisor put her hand on him and tells him to cheer up, as he did really good. She said, both his appearance and skill were top-notch, when he play a role of a girl, his acting is impeccable. She then asked, why doesn't he just stay as a girl, as he is much more attractive when he's a girl. Yin tells her to shut up, but she said, everyone will agree with her, so if you guys really agree, then just type one in the comment section. She then grabbed him and said, she is serious, because everyone wants to see cute girls. She then whispered in his ear, that above all, she is a lesbian. Startled, Yin jumped back and covered his chest, so the supervisor just laughed and said, she is just joking. She then tells him to go with her, as she will treat him to something good today. After a while, she gave him a juice can, and buys herself a cola, saying, a can of cola after work is the best. Confused, Yin wondered, why did she gave him juice instead of cola? She then ordered two bowls of yum noodles, and asked one to be less spicy, without coriander. She then gave him the dish and said, it's made from sweet potato, and it's delicious. Yin accepted and thanked her, but then, a thought crossed his mind. The supervisor tells him to hurry up, or it's gonna get cold. But to her surprise, Yin asked her, how did she know, that he doesn't like spicy food? He added, and why did she give him juice, even though she bought soda for herself, that shocked the supervisor. She froze in her place after he asked, how did she know that he hates spicy food and carbonated drinks? She tried to fool him and said, she gave him her portion by mistake. But Yin tells her to stop lying, because the stall owner obviously knows her, and she herself said, that a can of cola after work is the best. He said, he couldn't stand spicy food and carbonated drinks since he was a kid, and he never tells this to anyone, except to the person who cursed him. He added, he always thought it was strange, that she knew about him ever since they met, not to mention about the curse. He then angrily asked her, who the hell is she, and how does she know so much about him? But then, she twisted his hand and said, don't confuse kindness with weakness, as she never allowed him to talk to her like that. Yin said, she is always like this, trying to weasel her way out by changing the subject, but he's not afraid of her right now. The supervisor then released his arm and said, he is right. She said, she knows the angel that cursed him, and she has known about him for a long time, because that angel is the one who told her about everything about him. She added, that she got interested in him and his ability, that's why, she tricked him into coming here. Yin then grabbed her shoulder and muttered, he knew it, that she might know something. He then begged her to tell him about her location, and promised that after he deal with her, he will help the supervisor with anything she wants. She looked at Yin's face and asked, if he met that angel by any chance, then what's he gonna do to her? Yin was about to say something, but then stopped himself and said, he will just ask her to undo his damn curse. He laughed and said, the only thing he wants is to have his normal life back again, and that's why he came here in the first place. But the supervisor said that sadly, she doesn't know her whereabouts, as they have not been in contact for a while now. She added, but it's not like she can't help him, but it will depend on his performance. She said, if he works hard, then once she hears anything about her, she might consider telling him. This made Yin happy, and he promised to work twice as hard from now on. And as they were leaving, she tells Yin to admit that he knew about her knowing something, so he tried to fish for information from the very beginning, to which he agreed. She then asked, but then, wouldn't that make her his primary suspect? But Yin refused and said, he can't be such a poor judge of character, because, unlike other people, his sixth sense is super strong. But even if he didn't, she and that angel's personalities are totally different, and he can even notice that angel in a crowd at a glance. And as Yin was boasting about his super sixth sense and that he ruled her out at the very beginning, the supervisor praised him for that. She then tells him that the snack he just ate, he owe her for that, as they are splitting, which shocked Yin. The next day, Yu's friends were waiting for her and Cheng outside a cafe. After a while, they reached the location and Yu apologized for being late. 
Her friends were shocked to see the work and asked her if she is the one who did all of that. They said, it's so detailed that with this they will definitely get a very good grade. Surprisingly, you tell them that Cheng helped her and this questionnaire is his work. Her friends praised Cheng and said, they knew it because there is no way you could have done such a perfect job all by her own. They then apologized to Cheng for talking bad about him behind his back. Yu was happy to see Cheng and her friends talking. Suddenly, one of her friend whispered that she never expected her to team up with a guy behind their back. Yu quickly changed the topic, thinking she could never tell her that she is living with Cheng, because then she will get another earful from Cheng. Her friends then talk bad about the other two guys as they are not there to review and discuss their reports. Suddenly, Cheng noticed the guys arriving, who apologized to them for being late. They said they got caught up in something and almost forgot about the meeting. One girl then scolds them for not taking the project seriously and tells them to be a little more responsible. But they tell her to not worry as they have already completed the reports. They put the reports on the table and said they got an appointment with a friend and tried to leave. Angered, the girl tried to stop them, but before she could say anything, Cheng smacked them with their reports and tells them to take their trash with them before leaving. Angered, the guys came back and asked if he is looking for a fight. One guy said they finished their reports in time, so what is his problem? One of the girl tried to stop the fight, but the guy tells her to shut up and said Cheng is the one who's picking a fight. Cheng sighed and said he was just trying to save them a face, which angered the guy even more. But then he showed the report and said the font, font size, and formatting of their report are all wrong. Second, the topic was about the card game, then why are theirs full of totally unrelated stuff? Third, he don't care from which shitty website they copied this shit from, but they should have at least removed the watermarks. Scared, the guys realized that Cheng knows everything. Cheng added, he doesn't care about how anyone does their stuff, but this time, it's a group assignment, so the entire group will have to answer for it. And since he's in the same boat with them, so he won't sink because of their mistake. The guys tried to laugh it off and said that the teacher will not study it under a microscope, so she will accept anything, as long as it looks the part. Cheng sighed and said he knew this would happen, so he already made preparations. He took out the reports from his bag and said he did everyone's part for them, which shocked them. Confused, you wondered when Cheng did all that and why didn't she notice it before. She then realized that he did all of that when he said that he had some business to take care of. The girls were shocked and amazed by Cheng. He said that he was ready for the worst case scenario, so he prepared one for all. The girls thought the reports are incredible, and it was much better than the ones they made. He then taunts the other two that instead of submitting their trash, they should go with the report he made for them. This made the guy even more angry, and he grabbed Cheng's collar. He asked why is he acting so high and mighty, to which he replied that he's just providing the most efficient solution. And before the situation could go out of hand, you interrupted and stopped their fight. She thought that just a moment ago, everything was fine, so why did it have to come to this? Cheng said he doesn't care anymore, and they can do whatever they want and leave the place. The guy tried to attack him from behind, but you kicked him on the face. She said she's sick and tired of their complaints and tells them to run away from there. She then tells her friends to hold the fort for her while she will bring Cheng back. She then went to find Cheng, thinking, where can he go? Outside, Cheng purchased a soda for himself when he heard you calling for him. He looked at her and said she made him surprised by not getting lost. Yu tells him to go back with her, to which Cheng immediately refused. She said she taught those guys a lesson, and if he doesn't go, then he will fail this course once again. But Cheng replied, he doesn't care. She grabbed his jacket to stop him, but Cheng pushed her hand away. He said she is such a pain because he already tells her that he won't go. He sighed and muttered, this is why he hate group activities. You agreed that this time there were people who messed up, but there were also those who took their job seriously. Cheng angrily shouted, he doesn't have the time to worry about how other people do their job. All he wants is to be done with this boring assignment. He said if others can't keep up the pace, it just says about their incompetence and tells her to stop dragging him into this mess. Yu tried to calm him down and said she just hoped that he too could enjoy his campus life in the human world. But Cheng tells her to stop pushing her values onto other people, and she has always been like this, she never considers his feeling. Yu was standing quietly, while Cheng kept bashing out, he added, she just loves to play friends with everyone. That's exactly why people take advantage of her. But Yu said he's wrong about this. 
Cheng agreed that sure, today it didn't go exactly as he thought it would. But that didn't change the moral of the story, that you cannot rely on any of those people. You muttered, he doesn't even trust other people this much. She said, in order to make friends, you need to trust each other and then slowly build relationships based on this trust. But Cheng started laughing and said, did she just say trust? He said, this so-called trust is the least trustworthy thing in this world, just as friends and family. You can't really trust any of them. The only thing trust is good for is lowering your defenses and letting other people take advantage of you. He shouted, that's the reality, relying on other people to do something for you is a straight ticket to an early grave. He said, in the world, the person most worthy of your trust is yourself, because that's the only person who will never betray you. He added, it's much easier to live on their own. If you don't know how to do something, then just go and learn. It will take a little more time, but since you can do it on your own, then why bother asking others? He went close and said, blindly trusting others will only result in more betrayal, so if you want to live a good life, then don't trust anyone. That's the best way. Frustrated, you shouted, it's not like that, his line of reasoning is fallacious. She shouted, that no matter what, she will never betray him. But Cheng said, she might and she will, but she denied it. Angered, Cheng said, yes, you will for sure, making empty promises is easy, but keeping them is a whole other story. He tells her to imagine a situation, where she has to choose between keeping and breaking the promise, and keeping it would be detrimental for her, then she would definitely betray him at the first opportunity. He grabbed her hand and said, they have been tied by this damn ring, and if not for this stupid ring, he would have long ago. But suddenly, he looked at Yu's crying face and stopped himself. He grits his teeth, releases her hand, and leaves. After Cheng left, Yu thought, all this time she has been receiving help from him, and she never noticed when she started to have this desire to help him with something. She thought that she has already got to know him pretty well, but in reality, she knows nothing about him at all. At the same time, the supervisor has secretly watched all this and muttered, this couple of dummies, they are such a pain in the butt. The next day, you woke up and says, she slept too much. She checked the time, and thank God, that it's the weekend. She was so hungry, because it is already lunch time. She slowly opened the door to look for Chang and realized, he didn't come home. She then looked in the kitchen, thinking he left her some food. But after checking she called herself a fool, because she expect him to leave her some food, after that fight they had yesterday. She then decides to eat first, and then think about anything later. She gets ready, checked her keys, cell phone, wallet, and leaves, as everything was perfect. After a while, she was eating burgers, saying they are so good. And after eating three bags full of them, she was lying on the ground. After a while, she decides to go back, when she noticed some guys ganging up on a little girl. The girl in front of them was crying and begging them to leave her. And as the guys were scolding her, you stopped them and said, there is no need to go this far on a kid. Angered, the guys tell her to run away, or she will be in trouble as well. You sighed, and after a minute, the guys were all running away, shouting, they will remember her face. The little girl then thanked you and said, she was amazing, as she single-handedly took out the entire gang. You looked at the girl and thought, her hair color and her pupils, reminds her of someone. The little girl then offered some candies, which made you excited. They both then enjoyed the candies, and you thought this girl is so great. She asked the girl that she noticed a bag on her, and asked, is he going on a trip? The girl replied, her relative lives around here, so she came for the holidays. She said, it's been a long time since she has been here, so she might have got lost, and even her phone ran out of battery. Yu tells her to not worry and said, she will help her look for it, as she is quite familiar with this area. The girl smiled and thanked you for helping her, so you thought, she is such a nice kid. You checked the photo of the place the girl was looking for and thought, that the place looks familiar to her. She smiled, thinking, that having this feeling is proof that it's somewhere nearby, and called herself a genius. She concluded, all they need to do is look around the neighborhood, which shocked the girl a little. But when you asked her the matter, the girl said, she just got lost in thought. They both then went on their journey to find the place that was in the photo. The girl noticed you looking everywhere, even in the dustbin, which gave her a strange feeling. Yu was confused, thinking it's already been a while, so why she hasn't found the place yet. The little girl asked her if she is lost by any chance. Yu tells her to not worry, as she knows the area very well, so there will be no problem. She confidently tell her to leave everything to her, as she will find it in a jiffy. 
and after searching for some hours, the little girl happily said that this is the place. You looked at the building and realized just how stupid she is, as it's her own house building. And as she was lost in thoughts, the girl tells her to hurry up, as the elevator arrived. They entered the elevator, and when the girl pressed the button for the same floor, where you lives, you self-confidence shattered into pieces. The girl then pointed at a door, saying this is the place of her relative. Yu was crying inside, and shouted, but this is her place. Confused, the little girl then realized something. She excitedly tells Yu that she has been dying to meet her, and introduced herself as Jia Yao. She said that she is going to make the most of her vacation at her big bro's place. Shocked, Yu muttered and asked, is she Cheng's little sis? But before she could even finish, Yao interrupted and said, she is his younger brother. It took a while for you to understand what this little girl just said, and once she did understand, her eyes popped out by the shock. She was sweating and tells her to quit joking, to which the girl replied she is not. You looked at her carefully and said, no matter what angle she looked from, her features are of a girl. But Yao lifts his skirt and tells her to verify, if she has any doubts. Shocked, Yu tells her to stop, as she believe her words. She then welcomed the boy, saying, let's wait for his GG inside. Yao then thanked Yu and addressed her as Sao Sao, which means sister-in-law. But Yu tells him that she is not used to be called that way yet, so let's stick to Jai Jai for now. Yu then went to get some snacks and tells him to feel comfortable. After a while, she changed her dress and thought that she never expected that Cheng has a Didi. Meanwhile, Yao was looking at Cheng's collection. He then heard some noise of falling someone from the kitchen, and then Yu arrived with some pudding and a juice. She looked at Yao and warns him to not touch anything in this cabinet, because if his GG found out, then the repercussions will be terrible. And as Yao was enjoying pudding, Yu asked why he wears girl clothes. To which Yao replied that he loved wearing cute clothes and girls' clothes are so cute. Also, it's normal to wear the clothes that you like. Confused, Yu thought, is it really normal, and questioned herself if she is the weird one there. Suddenly, Yao sensed something and looked at the door, which confused Yu. Outside, Cheng finally arrived and noticed another pair of shoes outside his door. He went inside to look and find Yu with a little girl, who smiled after seeing him. Scared, Cheng dropped the bag and muttered, why are you here? But the next second, he was on the floor and Yao was on top of him. Yao apologized to Yu, saying he really wanted to play with her a bit more as her reactions are so amusing. But then, Yao looked at Cheng and said, long time no see, little brother. He asked if he is enjoying his newlywed life, to which Cheng just muttered one word, Xin Jai. Yu's mind then stopped working, thinking he should address Yao as Didi, so why is he addressing him as Jai? Four hours earlier, Yao arrived in the human world, and as soon as she arrived, the supervisor called her, but she disconnected the call and put her phone on airplane mode. And the first thing she did after that, visited the new shopping center, which has all the new collection of action figures. And after some shopping, she decides to enjoy a little before going home. She muttered that she came specifically to take a look at that weird little angel girl, who is living with Cheng. And luckily, she noticed a smell of an angel. She looked at the girl, and it was the same angel girl from the photo, so she decides to have some fun. She was secretly following Yu and wondered how she managed to eat all that food. She then heard Yu saying that she doesn't have an appetite today, which shocked her. Yao then noticed some bad guys and had a plan. She then hit the guys with some marbles, and when they looked behind to check, they found her showing them the middle finger. Angered, they realized that this girl did that on purpose. And according to her plan, while they were teaching her a lesson, Yu decides to help the girl. According to her plan, Yao showed the picture of the building, thinking, tricking Yu will be a piece of cake. Yao thought she will use her secret technique to get on her good side, the one she called. When I got lost, met a kind Oni-san, who turned out to be her sister-in-law. She was thinking of getting closer to her, and once you lower her guard, she will fall into Yao's trap. Yao was smiling, thinking it is a perfect plan, and was waiting for you to say her line. But when she looked at Yu's expression, she wondered, what does it mean? Yao couldn't believe that there exists a person, who doesn't recognize her home, as there's no way a person can be that dumb. But to her shock, Yu was making such puzzle expressions, which were confusing Yao. She then noticed Yu suddenly started smiling, and thought, she is a weirdo. But then, she remembered, that she has already seen that smile before, that's the smile of a person, that solved a mystery. Yao grit her teeth, thinking, Yu is much smarter than she expected. 
And the reason why Yao got shocked when Yu suggested to look around was this. She thought she should not lose her composure and decided to tag along. She thought that Yu is planning to pretend to be obvious of her game and observe Yao's reactions. But still, she was not surprised by Yu as all angels are fearsome and so cunning. She then decides to observe Yu before making any further plans as she didn't know. What tricks does Yu have up her sleeve? Yu thought that it is strange because they have been walking for quite a while but they didn't found the building yet. Yao was frustrated as they have visited the same places more than five times already. But even after spending so much time with Yu, she was unable to find her weak points. She thought that Yu is damn good as her acting skills are unparalleled. Yu's performance was so spot on that even Yao couldn't pull it off. She realized that Yu is deliberately wasting her time and is waiting for Yao to fall into her trap. Even Yao gets scared for a second, thinking Yu is such a monster. But she then smiled and thought, as expected of an angel, just like the other one she know. Yao was smiling, thinking she won't lose and will stay with Yu till the end. But after spending some hours, Yao doubted and thought, could it be that this girl is really just dumb? And when Yu tell her that she will find the building in a jiffy, Yao doubt became clear. She then grabbed Yu's jacket and said, she has a feeling that they should try looking in other direction. And then, she acted and said, this is her building, and thanked Yu, who was still trying to understand the situation. At present, Yao was looking Cheng's figures collection and said, he gathered so many treasures in such a short time. At the same time, Cheng was shivering and was sitting quietly, while Yu was still trying to understand, whether this girl is a little brother, little sister, or big sister. But then she came back to her senses and noticed Yao collecting Cheng's games and figures, saying, they are going home with her. She then looked at Cheng, thinking, when she go close to his stuff, he always gets mad, so why is he not angry at all? But after seeing Cheng's face, who has blood coming out of his eyes and mouth, she understood everything. Suddenly, Cheng whispered to her that no matter what happens, do not interfere. He warned her that if she does, then the consequences will be terrifying, and no words can describe the horrors. Scared, Yu nodded and thought, Yao must be a very scary person. She wasn't surprised by this, as Yao has been playing her like a violin just a minute ago, so Yu decides to be careful. But as Yu was looking at Yao's tail moving back and forth, she was having the urge to grab it. Suddenly, Yao approached her and asked, what's the matter and why is she looking at her like that? Scared, Yu wondered, how did Yao appear in front of her in a second, and before she could even react, Yao captured Yu by her tail. Yao looked at Yu's reaction and said, so this is not your first time. Suddenly, they heard the doorbell, and Yao gets angry. She opened the door and found Yin, who excitedly shouted that he brought some delicious snacks for Yu. He then looked at Yao and asked who this brat is. Scared, Cheng and Yu then witnessed a living hell in front of them, and all they could hear was Yin screaming in pain. And after a minute, Yao tied Yin and throw him in the floor, saying, this little shit has ruined all her fun. Suddenly, she remembered something, and ordered Cheng to bring the action figures that she told him to buy. And after seeing the figures, she got happy, but then, slowly, her smile faded as she looked at Cheng. Cheng was looking at her with teary eyes, but then, she sent him flying with a punch. She angrily asked him if the box looked like octagon shape to him, and why is there a bump on the box? Cheng apologized, saying, it was so hard to grab, so he must have dropped the box by accident. She then asked him, who does he owe a blessing of living in the human world to? Scared, Cheng answered, to JJ. She asked, who is the one who worked hard to raise him and the one who's been paying for his living expenses and education every month? To which Cheng replied, it's you JJ. So she angrily asked, then why can't he do such a simple task for her and attack Cheng? Cheng was saying sorry, when I heard a smack sound. It was Yu who protected him from Yai's attack. She shouted and requested Yao to not bully him. But then she thought, what the hell is she doing, as she just lost cool and sprang into action. Cheng called her an idiot and said he warned her to not interfere. But before he could do anything, they both heard Yao saying, you really are amusing, little angel girl, and you even dared to flirt right in front of her. Then, she converts her tail form, to which Cheng shouted and begged her to not use that thing. But Yao still starts attacking them. They dodged her attacks, but then, Yu decides to fight back and transformed her halo into a whip. Yu then dashed toward Yao and kicked her, but Yao easily blocked it. She said, even though Yu know some tricks, but she still has a long way to go. She then flew into the sky, and used her tail to grab Yu's leg. 
She then picked her in the sky, and Yu begged her to stop, as she was not wearing appropriate clothes for that. Yu was trying to protect her dignity and telling Yao to put her down. But then, Yao noticed that Yu was wearing leggings, so she grabbed it and tear it apart. Chen watched the whole scene and noticed that Yu is wearing pink underwear. Yu used her skirt to hide it and begged Yao to put her down, but Yao smiled and said, this is the reaction she was waiting for. She added that there is no point in hiding it now as they all have already seen it. Angered, Yu used her halo to attack Yao and managed to free herself. And as soon as she jumped down, she looked at Cheng, who was pretending that he didn't saw anything. And as Yu was distracted, Yao attacked her again. And as Yu thought that this is the end for her, the supervisor arrived and stopped the attack, saying, it's enough. She asked Yao, didn't she just go too far just now? To which she replied no, because then she wouldn't be able to lure out an old fox. She said that she knows that the supervisor was hiding her presence and watching the show in secret. The supervisor then tells her that the first thing she should do after arriving is report her, but Yao refused to do that. Yu then asked the supervisor if they know each other, to which she replied, yes, as they used to work together, which shocked both Yu and Cheng. And as the supervisor and Yao were arguing, they heard some strange voice. They looked in the direction of the sound and noticed Yin looking at them with teary eyes. The supervisor muttered, so you were here while Yao was thinking, who the hell is this? Cheng and Yu were thinking the same thing, that they totally forgot about him. The supervisor removed the tape from Yin's mouth and asked, how did he end up there? Yao was confused and asked, who the hell is this wench, and how did she end it up here tied, to which the other two shouted, that she is the one who tied him up. Yao went close to take a look and said, as she recall, the one who came in was a guy. She then grabbed his melons and gets surprised to see the real deal. She then noticed a collar on Yin's neck and said, what a coincidence, as she has one too, and asked, if that stinky four eyes put it on him. Suddenly, she realized something and said, so you are that succubus that turns into a girl in the evening, which this stinky four eyes asked her to look into. But before she could reveal anything, the supervisor slapped her and said, little kids shouldn't run their mouths, and when they do, they get spanky spanky. Scared, Yin was crying inside, thinking, what the hell is with these two? Gao said to the supervisor that she is not looking for a fight, and more importantly, Yin looks interesting and asked her to lend Yin to her. But the supervisor refused. Yao then grabbed Yin's hand and said, just for a week, but the supervisor refused and said, not even for a day. They both were pulling Yin back and forth, Yao promised that she won't break him, but the supervisor still refused. Froth came out of Yin's mouth and he wondered why he is the one who always gets hurt. Yu tells them that Yin has already passed out, so Yao leaves him and said, he is all yours. She said that she is feeling hungry as she spent lots of energy because this dumb angel girl dragged her all around the neighborhood. She then ordered Cheng to make something for her, even though Cheng refused at first, but in front of her angry face, he quickly left. Yao then called him weak, saying even after coming to the human world, he is the same loser he has always been. She added that he even had to be protected by a girl just now and called him a disgrace, but Cheng didn't say a single word. She then smiled evilly and asked you to come over to her for a bit. Yu was getting scared, so Zio tells her to not be on guard, as it's not like she tried to murder her, she was just playing. The supervisor tells Zio to stop scaring Yu, to which she replied, she would never, as she is the gentlest person there is. Zio went close to Yu and whispered in her ear that she knows a couple of Cheng's secrets. Zio asked Yu if she is interested, and Yu's expression changed after hearing that. Yin also gets alerted, thinking, it's a scoop. Zio's past then gets revealed, that one time, she was waiting in a line, getting frustrated over the fact that there were too many people. She was saying that she is too tired, and if she had known earlier that it would turn out like this, she wouldn't have worn her cosplay. After several hours, finally, her turn came. But to her bad luck, the shopkeeper tells her that they just run out of stock. She angrily asked, how the hell did it get sold out so fast, and that she waited for more than four hours, so she need the item anyhow. She then points at some people, asking the shopkeeper why is he letting them buy so much at once. The shopkeeper was getting scared since he could sense her murderous aura. The whole building started to shake, so everyone looked behind, wondering if it's an earthquake. Zio lost all her reasoning and asked if they really think that they can get away with this. She then destroyed the whole building, shouting, Rot in hell, you damn bastards. 
Back at present, the supervisor was saying, fortunately, there were no casualties, so they have been able to cover it up by forging the proof that the building crashed because of the contractor. Even now, there is a rule of selling one limited edition goods per customer, otherwise, there is a rumor that a little girl from hell will come after their soul. Zio also remembered about that incident and said it was her bad and that it's been a long time since then. But suddenly, she tells the supervisor to stop and asked why is she talking about her? Ten minutes ago, you refused by saying that she is not really interested in knowing Cheng's secret, but she is more curious about her. The supervisor replied she should have said so sooner as she can tell a lot and that's how Zio's secret got revealed. The supervisor tells you, after causing that incident, this dummy was banned from casually traveling into human world by the Joint Committee of Demons and Angels. And when coming on special occasions, she must be accompanied by an authorized supervisor at all times. While the supervisor and Zio were arguing, Cheng was calmly making food. As the two were fighting, you asked which one of them is stronger. Zio replied with a smile that there is no need to ask, as of course she is stronger. The supervisor agreed, saying that she is indeed stronger, even if by a small margin. Zio gets happy and tells her that even she can be nice once in a while, but the supervisor continued that if they were to hold a real competition, she would have come out on top. Zio gets furious after hearing that and shouted she can't believe that she called her nice and asked if she wants to go at it. But the supervisor tells her to look behind as a little girl is cosplaying over there, which easily fools Zio. And then the supervisor touched her head, saying she lost. Zio angrily shouted that this doesn't count as she wasn't paying attention, and she wants a do-over, but the supervisor replied, a loss is a loss, no cheating. The supervisor then tells everyone that Zio is one of the strongest people in the demon world, and that she is one of the candidates for becoming the demon king. Yu and Yin both gets too shocked, and Yin shouted in a scared voice, a candidate for the demon king. But then he heard them saying, so he was awake all this time. Yin thought he messed up, as he was too overwhelmed that he jumped right up. He tried to change the topic, and start praising Zio, saying that the candidate for the Demon King is surely a very strong person, it's his first time seeing one, she is just awesome. But Zio makes a disappointed face and asked if they really think so. Both Yin and Yu gets confused after seeing her reaction. And then Zio said that the Demon King is not really that great. The title only sounds cool in manga, and it's just a label of a person who the hero holds a grudge against, while preparing their backstabbing move. In reality, they have to take care of all the problems. One spends his day signing an endless stream of documents and holding endless meetings, which shocked them. Zio added that one also needs to look at the disgusting faces of old bald geezers on a daily basis, who, for their information, doesn't do a thing. Above all, you don't get paid, you don't get any bonuses, no overtime pay either, all you get is just a load of work. After some time, Cheng arrived with the food and said, it's time to eat. After having dinner, Cheng was ready to wash the dishes. Suddenly, he heard the supervisor saying, already preparing to clean up, he is so diligent, and then she offered him some help. But Cheng tells her to not do anything, as she will only get in the way. The supervisor then call Yin and Yu to come and help but Cheng stopped her and agreed to take her help. While working, the supervisor praised Cheng for his cooking and said that it's been a long time since she has eaten something so delicious. She suggests him to open a food stall in front of their school, but Cheng tells her to shut her mouth. He then asked her if this was her scheming as well, to which she gets confused. Cheng asked if she is the one who called his sister to come, right, but the supervisor tells him to guess it himself. Cheng gets angry, saying that he is not a little kid, as she is the only one who can pull such a prank. Meanwhile, Zio, Yin, and Yu were playing video games. Even though Zio and Yin were on the same team, Yu was easily winning every game. After the game, Zio praised Yu, saying that she didn't expect her to be this good, and that she likes her. She then asked her to play a different game, and Yu couldn't say no to her. The supervisor then asked them, what are they playing, as it's so lively. She mocks Zio, saying that her little Yu Shan is pretty good, as she just destroyed her completely. Zio gets angry and tells her to shut up, adding that it's been a long time since she played that game, so she is just rusty. The supervisor then challenges Zio to a match between angels and demons, so she accepted it. 
Zio then tells Cheng to bring two more joysticks so they can have a match. While Cheng was giving them the joysticks, the scene was looking something else, since four beautiful ladies were sitting in front of him. Zio makes fun of him, saying that he looked like a main character from a harem manga, and that he is so shameless. But Yin tells her to not include him into this harem, as he is a boy. After some hours of playing, Yin said he is tired and couldn't play anymore. The supervisor checked the time and said it's too late. She tells Zio that it's time to go, but Zio refused instantly, saying that she hasn't had her fill yet. She then grabbed Yu and said, she will be sleeping with this girl tonight, which shocked Yu. The supervisor tells Zio to stop acting up, as she still has a ton of paperwork to do on her, so be a good girl and come with her, but Zio still refused. Supervisor then tells Yu that it can't be helped and asked for Yu's opinion. Zio was looking at Yu with teary eyes and begging her to say yes to it. With no other choice left, Yu replied that she doesn't mind. Before leaving, the supervisor tells Zio to be a good girl and not make a racket, to which Zio showed her the middle finger while saying, she knows. Yin gets happy after hearing that and said, then he is staying over too. But then the supervisor pulled his ears and dragged him out with her. Zio wished her good night while addressing her as the stinky four eyes and that she wants to never see her. After some time, Cheng was cleaning the house while Yu and Zio were sitting on the couch. Zio was feeling that something is wrong as the atmosphere is too silent. She then asked if the two of them had a fight and they both felt a sudden chill. Judging by their reaction, Zio figures that she is right and said no wonder she was having goosebumps all this time. She then tells Cheng to buy her some bubble tea as she has a sudden craving. Cheng was saying where can he find it this late, but Zio forced him out and tell him to not come for an hour. After sending him out, Zio said that it's time to move on to the next scene. She looked at Yu and asked if she has warmed up the bath and she replied yes. Zio then tells Yu to follow her in the bath and stop sitting like a statue. Yu was hesitant at first, but Zio tells her to stop asking stupid questions and come with her. Inside, both Zio and Yu removed their clothes. Yu was staring at Zio's body with a suspicious look. Zio saw that and asked if she wants to confirm that and starts removing her leggings, but Yu stopped her on time. Suddenly, Zio remembered something and then removed her horns. Seeing that, Yu gets too shocked and shouted, how can she pull out her horns? And to use disappointment, Zio tells her that they are just an accessory. She said she wears them on her head like a hairband, as they have the effect of concealing her presence. She added that she can even change their shape, just press on the nose and meditate for three seconds. She showed Yu's how it works, by changing the horns into different shapes. After some time, while Yu was washing Zio's back, she said that it was quite a surprise, that demons don't really have horns. But Zio tells her that of course demons have horns, but she is a special case as she has a physical condition that prevents her body from growing them out. Yu gets confused and mutters, physical condition. But then Zio tells her to stop talking about the boring stuff while slowly moving her tail behind Yu's back. Zio said, let's switch, and then she used her tail to remove Yu's towel. Yu took some seconds to realize what just happened, and then she grabbed the towel, telling Zio to wait and that she can wash herself just fine. Zio gets happy, saying, this is the reaction she was looking for, as she always wanted to experience this kind of development. She was slowly moving her hands towards Yu, telling her to not be shy, and let her see just how well her body has grown. After washing her back, Zio and Yu both were in the bathtub. Yu was moving her head repeatedly, following Zio's tail. Suddenly, she heard her asking if she wants to touch it. After getting her permission, Yu slowly moved her hand and then grabbed it. She gets happy, saying, This softness, this elasticity, it's so pleasant to the touch. Yu asked Zio if she isn't afraid when others touch her tail too, to which Zio replied, Why should she be? On the contrary, it feels nice. Zio then tells Yu that she just mentioned too, so could it be that she has touched someone else's tail? She makes fun of Yu, telling her, it's a surprise that beneath that innocent look, she is such a lecherous woman, which confused Yu a little. Zio then tells her, that touching other person's tail without consent is sexual harassment, because the demon's tail can only be touched during mating. Yu suddenly leaves her tail, saying sorry and that she didn't know it, but Zio said that she was kidding, and her reactions are so amusing. 
But then, Zio thought, she has a feeling that something is missing, but wondered, what is that? After some time, Cheng returned a bit earlier, as he was worried about you. He checked the house and thought, looks like nothing bad happened there. He then heard Zio saying, so her little brother is back, and Cheng asked why is she wearing his clothes. Zio replied, she was so excited to come into human world, that she forgot to bring a change of clothes. She added, but a super beautiful girl wearing his shirt, surely, it must have make his heart race. Cheng was getting furious after hearing that nonsense. He then gave her the bubble tea, saying that he bought it. Cheng then asked her about you, and what happened to her. Zio said that the little angel girl got tired, so she went to bed early. Suddenly, Cheng noticed that Zio didn't dry her hair after coming out of the bath. He scolds her for that, but Zio tells him that drying them takes forever, besides, they feel good like that, so what's the problem? Zhu gets frustrated, saying that she is just like a kid, and then he opened the bathroom's door. Inside, he encountered Yu, who was standing without her clothes. After realizing what just happened, Cheng fell into despair. The next second, Zio was hearing him screaming, begging Yu to stop beating him, and just let him explain. After some time, Yu was helping Zio to dry her hair. She praised Yu, saying that she didn't expect her to be this good at hair drying. Yu thanked her and said she used to be bad at blow drying and would always make a mess, and every time she had to call Cheng for help. Zio then heard Yu saying that she is so useless that she can't do anything right. She is always getting into trouble, she is impulsive and petty. She rushes into things headlong without stopping to check the situation, she always causes trouble to others, and nobody like people like her. She thought that it's kind of amazing, when she got this ring and the farce of married life just started. All she could think about was how to break free from these chains, but now that she thinks about it, she might actually lucked out because before she knew it, she was living a happy and fulfilling life. You said it's strange, at first, all she wanted was to get away from this arrangement and didn't care what he thought of her at all, but now she doesn't want to hate her. Suddenly, Zio burst out laughing, saying that her speech is right out of the book. She thanked you for the good laugh and said she thought it was something serious. Zio then tells her to wait and let her guess. She then acted as Chen and said the exact same words as him, that she can't really trust anyone, as there is only one person she can trust, that is she herself. Because she will never betray herself, it's easier to live alone. Zio then asked Yu if Cheng said something along these lines, and Yu thought, it's exactly the same. Zio tells Yu that it's not her fault, so don't take it personally, that is just how Cheng is. She couldn't believe the skills that Cheng decided to max out on being a loner as when it comes to dealing with other people. He turns into a totally different person, to the point of being paranoid. He becomes irritable and agitated, his mouth starts spouting nonsense, and he devolves into a rambling idiot. And after he calms down, he may put a gun to his head and restart his life. She giggles and tells you that when Cheng gives her a cold shoulder, he is actually afraid of losing face and is willing to go far and beyond just to be not seen as an inept loser. Yu replies that she understands and her mood improved a little. Zio notices that and asks her what does she think is the biggest difference between demons and angels. Yu thinks about for a bit and asks if it's their genitals, to which Zio comments that she has a wild imagination. She then tells Yu that the answer is perception and values, which shocked her. Zio says that demons are highly sensitive to malice as well as the dark side of human soul and negative thoughts. So this means that they are used to seeing the hidden side of human nature and this leads them withdrawing into themselves. That's why they don't easily trust other people. And that's also one of the reasons why demons like Solitude want to know what they put trust into. And the answer is contracts. The ones that benefit both parties and where she has to put something important to her on the line. Something she won't betray no matter what. That's one of the reasons why demons like to sign contracts so much, just like the one they too have entered. That's why they, demons don't understand the angels' way of thinking. To them they look like children playing house. Demon and angels are like two sides of human nature, they exist at the same time, and have no way of understanding each other, but even so, no one cannot exist without the other. But then Zio added, that of course, not every demon is like that. Changing your views after experiencing certain things is not unheard of. That moron is an extremes case, she can say a headache. She thought that Cheng will grow up a little after coming to the human world. But he is the same as ever. And then she looks at you. 
Xiao gets an idea and tells you a secret of Cheng that there is a reason why Cheng ended up like that and asks you if she wants to know that. Yu looks around to see if she is alone, but then says forget it. She says that going behind people's backs and learning their secrets, that doesn't sit right with her, and once he feels like telling her, she will hear him out. Xiao praises Yu for saying that, but she knows that Yu is actually curious and want to know about it. She tells Yu to not worry and promises that she won't tell Chang about this, it's a limited time offer just for today, but Yu still refuses. Xiao comments that she is no fun, all this talking made her real thirsty, and asks you to bring her some bubble tea, to which you replies with sure. After you left, Xiao says that she really is a nice girl, and then asks Cheng if she is right or not. Cheng, who is hiding behind the wall and was eavesdropping, freezes in fear after hearing that. Xiao laughs while saying that if eavesdropping is not a good habit, to which Zhu blushes. Xiao asks if he is blushing, which shocked him, and he hits the wall in frustration. After that, you bring the tea and inform that to Zio, while she is searching something in her bag and says that's enough depressing topics for the day. She then takes out some mangas and asks you with a devilish grin if she likes BL. Yu gets confused hearing that as Zio tells her to come close since she has got some nice ones and Yu agrees to it. Moving on, Yin whispers to Zio asking why she has to listen to that angel despite being strong and why the demons that come to the human world have to be managed by angels. At that, Zio asks if they don't know, and all of them with puzzled expressions replied, they don't. Then suddenly, the supervisor pops up behind Zio and tells them to let her explain this one. She mentions that at first, demons and angels managed the human world together. But as time went on, demons started to become lazy and did their job poorly, which caused a lot of trouble and chaos. So, in order to prevent chaos from happening again, demons and angels made a treaty and from then on the human world was managed by angels alone. Now the demons coming to the human world must be supervised by an angel, and that's how things ended up this way. After that, Yu asks the supervisor if it doesn't cause discontent among the demons, but she tells her to ask them herself. Hearing that, Chang and the others reply that it's too much trouble and that they are perfectly fine with getting food without having to work for it. Afterward, Yin greets all of the viewers on her live stream and asks why are they still coming to her streams, even though she has been streaming for a while already. Then she responds to one of the commenters, saying that the outfit she is wearing is a cosplay of the character from the game she has fallen in love with recently, and just getting her hair done took her quite a while. Furthermore, she replies to another comment saying she didn't forget to put on her underwear this time, and adds that she is super serious about following the platform rules. Then she cutely thanks one of her viewers for gifts while addressing them as master and says that they are very generous. After a while, Yin tells her viewers that she will be ending the stream since she is tired and needs to get some rest. Then she ends the stream saying she will see them tomorrow and wishes them good night. After ending the stream, Yin lets out a sigh while looking tired. Furthermore, she complains about how hot and tiresome it is and her throat is parched. Then she stretches her back in the chair and decides to take a shower. On the other side, the supervisor finishes taking her shower and after she arrives at her room, someone asks if she is already done showering and states that it must have felt good. Then she sees a shadowy figure outside her balcony who turns out to be Zio and she wishes her good evening while addressing her as a sweetie. Seeing her, the advisor quickly dashes in the opposite direction, however, she trips on the floor. Afterward, Zio asks what's wrong and why she looks so flustered. Then she holds her glasses and questions if she is looking for this with a smirk on her face. At that, the supervisor suddenly tries to grab her glasses back from Zio, but Zio dodges all of her attempts with ease. After that, Zio clicks a button that was on the glasses and it notifies her about turning off camouflage. Hearing that notification, the supervisor becomes restless and then she uses her towel to wrap herself inside it. Afterwards, Zio states that she hasn't changed one bit and gets excited thinking how she will bully her. On the other side, Yin finishes showering and comes out of the bathroom while singing. Then she notices something strange and drops all of her clothes in shock. Afterward, Yin looks at her melting ice cream and exclaims that she totally forgot to put the ice cream into the fridge. Then she calms herself down and says that she will order another one from the shop and looks for her phone. However, she witnesses that her phone is covered in ice cream and then she screams in sorrow. On the other side, Zio says how she told her long ago to stop relying on those glasses and adds that her pathological condition has progressed. 
Then she grabs the towel and starts pulling it, and says that it's about time she got rid of that thing. She continues to pull the towels while telling the supervisor to let her take a look and adds that resistance is futile. Afterwards, the supervisor suddenly starts sobbing, so Zio asks her if she is crying for real. At that, Zio starts laughing and makes fun of her, and says that it must be very embarrassing. Suddenly, the self-destruct sequence on Zio's collar activates and she gets shocked seeing it. Then she tells her to wait, since she was joking and not be so unreasonable. However, the sound of beep from Zio's collar continues, so she restlessly tells her to stop it, or she is going to die. She then apologizes for taking her glasses, and promises not to pull pranks on her anymore in panic. After that, the supervisor puts on her glasses saying she will pull out her tail, and put it into 20, if she plays a prank on her next time, whereas Zio with a dreadful expression states that she thought she was done for. Then the supervisor asks how those guys let her go outside, to which she replies that she sneaked out of the bathroom. Zio gets angry and asks how dare she drop everything and come to the human world to help dummies, who managed to get into a fight. However, the supervisor tells her to calm down and gave her a candy. Then she asks Zio if that kid is to her liking, to which she replies that she is a nice little girl and kind of reminds her of a Fufu doll. Furthermore, Zio says that she is impressed that she has been able to pull off this marriage scheme and adds that little girl is not an ordinary angel. She also states that she couldn't believe it when she first saw that photo, but now she is convinced. She then mentions Yu's red hair, but then she wonders if it is actually pink. After that, she asks if it is magenta, but the supervisor says she is the only one she knows who can joke about that. Afterward, Zio says she doesn't care about it, however, the supervisor replies that she thought she would be against the idea. Hearing that, Zio asks why would she be against something so fun and exciting, and continues that when it comes to chasing after fun, she always follows through. However, she advises her to be careful as things might get complicated if something were to happen to you, but the supervisor says that it will be fine as long as nothing goes wrong. Afterward, Zio states that it's about time she go back, as it will be bad if they found out that she sneaked out. Then she asks the supervisor about the succubus and if he went out for something, to which she replies that they don't live together. At that, the supervisor realizes something and surprises Zio by asking if her original goal was to check up on them. She bashfully answers that she only came to play a prank on her, but the supervisor says she understands now why she looks disappointed and that she should have known, considering the relationship. Zio then tells her to shut up, and adds that no one would want to have a relationship with a stinky four-eyed stupid angel like her, while flying away. She further tells her to wait and states that the time will come when she will smash those glasses of hers into pieces. At that, the supervisor replies that she told her not to use her powers in the human world, but Zio says it's fine, as long as nobody finds out. Moving on, Cheng seems troubled because Yu is lying unconscious over his body on an uninhabited island, and he wonders what the hell that place is. A few hours ago, Zio yells at Cheng to wake up and when he opens his eyes, he sees Zio leaping at him. Zio then stomps on his belly, while shouting angry crow takes flight, but Zio on the other hand almost loses his soul. Subsequently, she asks how would he rate his second wake-up service from his beloved little sister, but Cheng angrily yells that he almost died. After that, Zio tells him to get ready as they will be leaving soon, but Cheng asks where to. She replies that they are going to the beach, and adds how every self-respecting romantic comedy must have at least one beach episode. At that, Cheng shouts that she is reading too much Manhua and it's the first time he heard about that. But Zio replies that it was decided just now. On the other side, Yu wakes up thinking that she is very sleepy since she went to bed late the previous day. She couldn't think straight and blames Zio for shoving at her something. But suddenly, she covers her mouth as she is about to puke. At the same time, Cheng gets out of his room complaining about how Zio is doing whatever she wants and that it is such a pain. After that, both Cheng and Yu notice each other outside their room and they have eye contact with each other. However, Cheng suddenly looks away from Yu while blushing and leaves her surprised. He then wonders why he is subconsciously trying to avoid her, and that just remembering what that person said the previous day makes him unable to look for in the eyes. Afterward, he quickly shuts his door and thinks that there must be something wrong with him. On the contrary, Yu thinks that he is overdoing it, judging from how fast he ran away and wonders if that's how much he doesn't want to see her face. Moving on, they arrive at the beach and Zio rides on Cheng's shoulder while getting excited over how many people there are. 
The supervisor is amazed seeing how fast they changed into their swimsuits. However, Xiao and Cheng tell her that it's common sense to change into a swimsuit at home before going to the beach. Afterwards, she invites you to change into swimsuits as well, but Yu replies that she doesn't have a swimsuit. At that, the supervisor tells her not to worry and that she got her covered. Xiao on the other side notifies Cheng that she is leaving the rest to him and mentions that she will go have some fun. Meanwhile, Yin yaps about summer, the beach, and the breath of freedom, while T posing in front of Chen, and tells him that it's been a while, even though they met just the previous day. Afterward, Yin continues to yap that he doesn't understand what being there means, to which Chen tells him to get his ass over there, and help. At that, Yin advises him not to cloud his vision with unimportant things, and asks if he doesn't want the joy of playing in the water together with girls. He then tells Cheng to look at some girls in bikinis, and states that it makes his heart sing, However, Cheng asks what that has to do with him, and further tells him to stop speaking like somebody who has experienced it himself, but Yin angrily replies that he was about to go join them. Afterwards, some of the girls invite Yin to hang out with them and he replies that he is totally free, and adds that he will be right with them. However, he suddenly gets tied up by a rope and dragged on the sand by the supervisor. She then asks how about she joins him, and adds that it will be more exciting that way. After that, the supervisor drags him around, but Yin states that he doesn't feel good all of a sudden and requests to leave him alone. On the other side, Cheng completes his errand and wonders what should he play to pass the time. Then as Cheng is playing Breath of the Wild on his switch, Yu approaches him and asks if he is not going to swim, and seeing her, Cheng on the contrary becomes speechless. Moving on, Yu reads a book with indescribable content and tells Zio that there is something she doesn't understand. At that, Zio asks what it is, and Yu inquires if the things mentioned in that book are a common thing between guys. Hearing that, Zio gets speechless, but then she pulls a prank and says that it is a natural process like eating or sleeping. Yu on the contrary gets surprised hearing her answer and bashfully asks if Cheng can also do those things. Then Zio asks if Cheng has a guy friend, and specifies if he has someone he's close enough to bicker with, and who remains his friend regardless of how much they fight. Afterward, Yu shockingly remembers Yin, and rigorously nods her head. At that, Zio replies that she got her answer and then Yu feels embarrassed, as she envisions Cheng and Yin doing intimate things with each other. Seeing Yu in that state, Zio thinks that she is fun to play with, and meanwhile, Cheng and Yu sneeze inside their room. Back to the main story, Yu asks Cheng if he is not going to swim, however, Cheng becomes surprised seeing her and instantly gets up. After that, Yu tries to call him several times, but he looks away from her and ignores her calls. At that, Yu pouts from frustration and sits in a corner of the mat alone. He listens to some dudes talking about how cute Yu is, and plans to chat her up, since she is all by herself. Then the guys approach her, and asks if she is lonely, however, as they are about to invite her, Cheng intimidates them from behind. Afterwards, they leave telling her to never mind and that they were just passing by. Meanwhile, Cheng wonders why he has to deal with them and that it makes him look like he cares. Suddenly, Zio starts laughing maniacally in front of his face and it makes him startled. Then addressing Cheng as her little bro, she states that it was so lame, but Cheng asks how she is his big sister. Afterwards, Zio grabs Yu's arm and tells her to leave Cheng alone and go swim with her. However, Yu tells he to wait and adds that this is her first time at the beach. She then continues to tell her that she can't swim but Zio tells her to not worry as she will teach her how to. After that, Zio tells her that there is no time to lose, and reveals Yu's bikini by unzipping her jacket. Meanwhile, Cheng takes a peek at her, whereas Yu yells that she can do it herself. Then she blushingly takes off her jacket and lifts her floater. Afterward, she peeks back to see what Cheng is doing. But Zio asks what she is waiting for, to which she replies that she is coming. After a while, at the sea, Yu wonders why Cheng was acting like that, and if he couldn't understand that she was trying to start a conversation with him. She then looks at her position, and notices that they are already quite far from the shore. Afterward, she asks Zio if they really need to go this far from the shore in order to learn how to swim, but she finds out that Zio wasn't with her. On the other side, Zio spectates the game Cheng was playing, and compliments that he is good at it, however, Cheng realizes something. He then angrily asks what she is doing here, and she replies that she swam a lot and got tired, so she is taking a break. Cheng further asks if she wasn't teaching you how to swim, but she replies that she totally forgot about that. Then Cheng looks for you among the crowd, and finds out that she is far from the shore. After that, he yells at Zio for leaving her alone, 
However, she replies that she is so tired that she can't move a muscle, but Cheng tells her to stop fooling around and bring her back. Afterward, Zio states that if he is so worried, then he should go get her himself. Zio then admits that she did that on purpose, and after Cheng asks why, she replies that it's because it's fun, and adds that he should get over their fight from the previous day. She further mentions that if he doesn't hurry, something might happen to her. Hearing that, Cheng dashes towards Yu and Zio comments that it's the right choice. She then menacingly stares at him and prepares for the next part of her plan. On the other side, Yu tells herself to calm down and thinks about moving closer to the shore using her swimming ring. She then thinks that it's not a big deal and that she isn't a child anymore. However, she witnesses a big wave coming towards her and loses her soul. Seeing that, everyone gossips about how big of a wave that is, however, Cheng on the contrary thinks that Zio is going overboard. At the same time, Zio reaches out her hand towards the wave and smiles menacingly. Afterward, Yu wonders what that is and thinks that she is going to die if she doesn't get out of there soon. Then suddenly, she slips out of her swimming tube and falls into the ocean. After getting up, she wonders what's going to happen to her and wishes for someone to help her. She then subconsciously thinks about Cheng and in the next moment, Cheng comes running to her aid. Subsequently, he pulls her out of the water and reassures her saying that it's alright now. However, the waves close on them, so Cheng tightly hugs Yu, thinking that they are done for. After the wave crashes on them, Cheng opens his eyes to see that they are completely fine. At that, everyone questions if that was a mirage and that it scared the shit out of them. Cheng on the other contrary realizes that Zio was pulling a prank on them, and angrily looks at her and finds that she is laughing at him. Seeing that, he gets angry and thinks that she played him like a fiddle, and also thinks that you should have realized that they are in shallow water where toddlers play. He further thinks that there is no way someone can drown in there and wishes her to get back to her senses. Afterward, Cheng distances himself from Yu as he was still hugging her. However, Zio raises her finger and they notice that a whirlpool was forming underneath them. Following that, Zio flicks her finger and suddenly, Yu gets dragged under the water. Cheng then gets surprised seeing Yu vanish under the water and later, he also gets dragged underwater. On the surface, Zio calls Cheng a greenhorn and adds that she totally caught him off guard. Then as they were getting dragged to the bottom of the ocean, Zio commented that she is getting excited just by thinking about what is going to happen next. However, the advisor interrupts her saying that it looks like she is having fun and menacingly asks if she would mind if she joins her. Moving on, Cheng and Yu get hurled into the air by the sea as they were holding their breath in confusion. In a panic, Yu reveals her angel wings in an attempt to fly, but Cheng quickly grabs her leg. At that, Yu becomes confused and she notices that Cheng was grabbing onto her leg. After a short pause, she loudly asks what he is doing and why he is grabbing her leg, whereas Cheng tells her to stop jerking that much or he will fall. Afterward, Yu states that he is too heavy and tells him to fly on his own. She was struggling to keep herself floating, so Cheng asks if she isn't ridiculously strong and tells her to just flap those wings harder. Then suddenly, Yu notices something in front of her and questions if that is an island. On the other side, Cheng gets distracted by Yu's inquiry and begins to slip off her leg. Afterward, he grabs her bikini to halt the fall, but Yu gets embarrassed by his action and lets out a scream. She then kicks him in the face asking what he is doing and tells him to let go of her. After that, they both lose their balance and begin to fall to the ground. On the other hand, Yin looks at the angry advisor and then he looks at Zio who was pretending to be calm. Then he wonders what happened between those two and he could feel a storm coming because of their eerie atmosphere. He has been thinking of running for a while now, but he just can't find the right moment. Afterward, the supervisor slams her hand on the desk and startles them. At that, Zio tells her to bring it on and that she is outnumbered, since it's two versus one, whereas Yin tells her not to drag him into that. However, the supervisor grabs a drink from the fridge and they silently observe what she is doing. Then she sits on the sofa and it leaves both of them confused. Back to the present, Cheng finds himself on the shore of the island and Yu was lying on top of him. After a short period, she gets up while holding her head in pain. However, Cheng angrily asks if she could get off him and adds that she is heavy. At that, she instantly distances herself while apologizing, but then she notices something strange. She points at him in a panic state and mentions that his ears are back to being normal again. Cheng then asks how long his ears have been like that and adds that he can't change them back. Afterward, he realizes something about the place they are in. But meanwhile, Yu is shocked to know that he can move his ears like Zio and thinks they are very cute. Then she wonders what she should do and that she wants to touch and feel their softness. 
but she holds back her urge and asks Cheng about where they are while adding that it looks deserted. At that, he responds that he is afraid that this is the demon world, and hearing it, she becomes speechless. She then freaks out after learning that they are in the demon world, and yells that she is done for, but Cheng angrily tells her to stop screaming and calm down. Afterward, she mentions that she heard demons catch the angels who stray into the demon world and cook their flesh on the bonfire, to which Cheng angrily yells that she won't die and that they are not savages. He then tells her that the place they are in is, in fact, the demon world, but it doesn't entirely belong to the demon realm. At that, you ask what he means, so he explains that his sister sent them to that place, so it's his bastard sister's island. Hearing that, Yu gets shocked and asks what kind of family owns an entire island. Cheng then tells her to stop screaming suddenly and explains that her sister is a demon king's understudy, so this island comes as a bonus with that job. At that, Yu tells him to give her a minute to process all of this and reconfirms with him if this place is an island that's kinda like in the demon world, and Zio is the one who sent them there. Then she asks what will happen next, but he angrily yells that he wishes he knew. Afterward, she glances at her surroundings and asks if this is the place he grew up. He replies not really, and mentions that this is the place where his sister stores her collectibles and goes on vacation. Then she inquires if there is anyone else on the island, however, Cheng answers that this place is special, and the general public can't get in. Afterward, Yu comes to the conclusion that Zio sent them there on purpose so that they could relax and hang out, but Cheng tells her that she is definitely up to no good. Then he wonders what they should do now, since he doesn't know the way out and if they have to spend the night on this island. Additionally, he thinks that a single guy and an unmarried girl wearing nothing but a swimsuit is something that he bet never crossed Yu's dummy's mind. However, looking at her carefree attitude, he believes that this won't be something to worry about for a while. Then Yu asks if what he said is true, and then it's okay if she does something. Cheng tells her to go ahead and thinks that he is the only one here who is concerned about their future. Afterwards, Yu reveals her wings and stretches her body saying that it's been a long time since she had a chance to spread her wings. However, Cheng says he would advise against striking that kind of pose, and the next moment, something snatches her swimsuit off her body. Meanwhile, Cheng becomes speechless while looking at her body, and it is revealed that it was a pigeon that snatched her clothes away. After that, Yu scream in embarrassment while hiding her melons and asks what that was. Cheng explains that they are her sister's pets which she calls uploaders and adds that they like to play pranks on unaware people by snatching their clothes when those aren't watching. He also mentions that her sister taught them weird phrases. Hearing that, Yu replies that it's unforgivable and flies towards them at an incredible speed. Meanwhile, Cheng tells her to wait, but she ignores him and yells at the pigeons to give her clothes back. Then as she was about to grab the pigeon that stole her clothes, the landscape suddenly changed to the beach and she crashed on the ground. Afterwards, she asks what happened, to which Cheng replies that's why he told her to wait. Then while displaying her bare melons, she says that she was sure that she was flying up, not down. Cheng explains while looking away that if she tries to leave the island by ordinary means, she will end up back there, and adds that she should cover herself. Then she screams in embarrassment and covers her body with her hands in the brink of tears. Looking at her sorry state, Cheng feels guilty and then he lets out a sigh. After that, he grabs his jacket and throws it towards her. Then he tells her to put this on and makes her angry by saying that he didn't see anything worth crying about. Moving on, Yu wears Cheng's jacket and thanks him in a calm tone. But Cheng tells her now that she is dressed, she should stop crying and yelling. Suddenly, Yu notices some scars on Cheng's back and asks him about it. However, Cheng remains silent. After that, he walks some distance and lies underneath a tree and says that he is going to take a nap. At that, Yu tells him to wait, but Cheng angrily asks if she has another bright idea on how to leave this place. He then continues that if she doesn't have any ideas, she should stop wasting her energy on playing around and just get some sleep, and adds that once his sister gets bored, she will come and get them out of there. On the other side, Zio spies on them using the camera she installed in a drone and while licking a lollipop, she states that it looks like things are going well over there. However, she glances over at the supervisor who seemed to be in a calm mood, and wonders what that four-eyed moron's deal is. Zio then approaches the supervisor while referring to her as a four-eyed moron and asks what she is doing. She continues to ask if she doesn't want to know where her little angel girl is now, and mentions that no matter how calm she looks, she knows that she is worried sick. Then Zio teases her by saying that if she wants to know that badly, she might consider telling her. Ten minutes later, Zio angrily tells the advisor to give her at least some reaction, 
and adds that she is making her look like a clown. She continues to tell her to open her mouth and ask, whereas Yin thinks that he should better stay away from them. Afterward, Zio loses her patience and reveals to her that she actually sent those two to that island, and also asks if she managed to surprise her. At that, the advisor closes the book she was reading and says that 56 minutes and 36 seconds is a new record though. She still can't last an hour if no one is talking to her just like the old times. Then Zio realizes that she got tricked and angrily yells at her. Afterward, the supervisor mentions that if she acted the way she wanted to, she would have toyed with her and this could have gone on for three whole days. Additionally, she tells her to be careful considering how long she has known her, while Zio with angry expression calls her old hell. Then the supervisor prepares to depart for the island and invites Yin. However, Zio tells her to wait. In a panic, she tells the supervisor to give her three minutes and adds that she has a good reason. And hearing that, the advisor becomes intrigued. On the flip side, Yu wipes her sweat as she finishes building her grandiose sand castle. Then she glances over at Cheng to see that he is still sleeping and makes a bored expression. Meanwhile, Zio lectures the supervisor by saying that her methods are too conservative and that they simply don't work. Additionally, she asks if she can honestly say that those two made any progress for the past few months, and adds that it would be better to do it her way. Ian on the other side wonders how it came to that and believes that he will be alright, as long as he stays out of that. Afterwards, Zio surprises Yin by asking his opinion on her statement to which he hesitantly replies yes. Hearing that, the supervisor menacingly glances at Yin and leaves him frightened. Then she angrily tells Zio that a melon plucked before ripening will not be sweet. However, Zio argues that sometimes catching them unprepared yields better results. After that, they simultaneously glares at Yin and asks who he thinks is right, but Yin on the verge of tears requests for someone to save him. Moving on, Zio asks the supervisor how she will get there, knowing where they are. Then she teases her saying that she is the only one who can open the gateway to that place, and she is not going to tell her how to do it. However, she guarantees her that if they leave them on that island for a little bit longer, those two will at least kiss. Hearing that, the supervisor gets intrigued whereas Zio with popcorn in her hand asks what she thinks. Then she suggests that they should just stay here and watch them go at it, and also adds that it might turn out to be fun. After a short pause, the supervisor sits beside her saying that she will believe her just this once, while Zio says that she made the right choice. Afterward, Zio flicks her finger and tells the advisor that she can see the real-time footage on the screen that she connected to the island's surveillance system, and the supervisor replies that it's not bad at all. Then Zio and the advisor order Yin to bring them drinks and snacks, whereas Yin thinks that both of them are demons. On the flip side, as it was getting evening, Yu lay on the beach while her stomach growled because of hunger. Then she states that she is very hungry and also mentions how she skipped breakfast as well. Afterward, she glances at Cheng and sees that he is still taking a nap. Then she approaches him by asking if he is hungry and if he knows where they can find some food. However, because of his lack of response, Yu thinks that he is too carefree and thinks about finding it herself. After she departs inside the forest, Cheng takes a peek and thinks that she will be alright since there is nothing dangerous on the island. Meanwhile, Yu finds the foliage to be so dense that it's dark in there. Then she decides to go deeper in search of some wild fruits, and thinks that she can fly up and look around if she gets lost. Afterwards, she comes across some wild mushrooms and intensely looks at them. However, she didn't know what those mushrooms were, and whether they were edible or not. Then she decides to take a couple of them and show them to Cheng, she believes that he could do something with them. Later, she hears some rustling noise and looks back in confusion. Then she asks what that noise is, or if she is hearing things, however, she decides to head back since she is famished. After a while, she realizes that she got lost, but she wasn't worried since she had a plan B. Then she reveals her wings in an attempt to fly, however, she soon crashes on the ground, and states that the branches are so dense that she can't spread her wings. Afterwards, she whimpers in pain and finds out that her foot got hurt. Suddenly, she notices that the mushrooms she gathered earlier got scattered on the ground and wonders what should she do, since they were very hard to pick. Afterwards, she starts crying out of frustration and later, she wipes her tears and slaps her cheeks to calm herself down. After a short pause, she starts crying again and depressingly questions how could she be so useless, that she can't even do such a simple thing. Then she wonders what now, since she is starving, hurt her foot, and got lost. It's almost night and she can't see in the dark. After that, she looks at the sky wondering if she were to shout his name and if he happened to hear her, would Cheng come looking for her? 
Meanwhile, Cheng hears everything she is saying since he was quietly following her. Then he wonders how he ended up there, since it's cold at night and his body is itchy from all the grass. He also wonders why he followed her and there must be something wrong with his head, since whatever she is up to is none of his business. However, since his action was saying otherwise, he comes to the conclusion that he is just being rational and trying to preserve everyone's strength. Additionally, he thinks about getting a strange feeling just now, and it's like there is something else here on this island. He notices that Yu is out of his sight, and asks himself where she went. On the other side, Yu travels through the forest while complaining that Cheng would have a sour expression on his face, even if he responded to her call, and adds that she would rather not see that kind of face right now. Then she decides to get to the beach or at least find a clearing in the woods, since sulking won't get her anywhere. As she was on her way, she says that she is very hungry and wished that she could have some meat. Suddenly, she notices some fruits on a tree and then she finds out that they are mulberries, and begins to take them with her. However, a bear menacingly appears in front of her from the bushes and lets out a roar. On the other end, Cheng hears that sound and gets alerted. After that, the bear menacingly glares at her, but she remains speechless. Then the bear loudly roars at her face, but Yu still remains calm leaving the bear confused. After a while, she starts drooling while looking at the bear with sparkling eyes and then she yells meat. At that, the bear gets frightened and lets out a roar out of fear. On the other side, Cheng wonders what is going on and he thinks the sound came from close by. After that, he dashes towards Yu, asking what that noise was and if something happened. However, he witnesses Yu biting on the bear while the bear runs for his life, and seeing that, he becomes speechless. Subsequently, the bear takes her to the beach while running in a panicked state. Yu then grabs the bear's head saying that she got her dinner, and that he shouldn't think of running away. Afterward, she notices that by chasing him, she got to the beach and questions if she was hearing things or if she heard Cheng's voice just now. Meanwhile, Cheng becomes speechless seeing her actions, and approaches her. On the contrary, Yu calls Cheng saying that she found food for them, and hearing that, Cheng smacks her head. Yu asks why he hit her, while on the verge of tears, whereas Cheng pats the bear's head to comfort him. At that, Yu gets confused, so Cheng explains that the bear is her sister's pet, and adds that she often leaves him on the island to watch after the house. Hearing that, Yu gets shocked and asks if that bear is his sister's pet. Cheng further explains that he is usually docile, and the most he can do is play a prank on a stranger by startling them. At that, Yu apologizes to the bear saying it wasn't on purpose and that she didn't mean to hurt him. However, the bear hides behind Cheng leaving her dumbstruck. Afterwards, Cheng bids the bear farewell and tells him to be careful on his way back and remember to warn his friends that they have a guest on this island. Then suddenly, Yu's stomach starts growling and she states that if only she knew, she would have brought the food she gathered, instead of chasing after the bear. However, Cheng tells her that if she had eaten those mushrooms, she would have been dead by now. Hearing that, Yu says she didn't mention that the food she gathered was mushrooms and asks how he knows. He replies that it was just a guess since he knows the area well and it would have been more strange if he didn't guess it. Afterward, he lets out a big sigh and tells her to go with him, but she asks where they are going. He replies they are going to find some food and a place to stay the night, and also something to wear since it's cold as hell. Then Yu mentions that it's pitch dark in the forest, but Cheng tells her that demons can see in the dark just fine and that as long as she follows him, she will be fine. Later on, he tells her to hurry up and move before the temperature drops too low. Then he looks back to tell her to stay closer, but she vanishes from his sight. Yu on the contrary states that he suddenly vanished from her sight and as she was about to go in the opposite direction, Cheng angrily yells at her. Then he says that she is such a pain and tells her to stay closer. Afterward, as he glances back to ask how she managed to get lost when she was this close to him, he notices that she disappeared again. Then he sees that she is looking elsewhere so he angrily yells if she is toying with him. Later on, she ties her hand using his tail and angrily tells her that now, she won't get lost anymore. He on the contrary touches his tail saying that it's warm, and mentions that his tail is more coarse than Ian or Zio's. At that, Cheng tells her to shut up and stop randomly touching his tail. She then apologizes to him saying she will do her best not to cause any trouble, so she requests him to not be angry in a cute manner. Seeing that, Cheng instantly looks away out of embarrassment and wonders why he can't look her in the eye. Then he wonders what's going on with him since this morning and that there must be something wrong with him. Yu gets upset seeing his reaction, and wonders if he already hates her. Then she suddenly notices something and catches the pigeon that was trying to sneak up on her. 
Afterward, she addresses the pigeon as a horny pigeon and says that it was naive of him to think that she would fall for the same trick twice. Afterwards, she lets go of the pigeon, but the pigeon angers her by calling her forever flat. Later on, Cheng pulls her using his tail and asks what she is doing, but she tells him to wait since her clothes got stuck on something. Then she frees her clothes from the vines and runs towards him. However, she doesn't notice that her swimsuit clothes are hanging on the vines. Moving on, Yu with a perplexed expression, looks at the huge statues of different designs that were on the island, and gazing at three humanoid statues, she exclaims, Wow. Cheng explains to Yu that these are the items from his sister's collection and as soon as she sees something, she takes it to this island, but Yu shockingly asks if she even got that one. Cheng replies that this seems to be the lower part of some statue of which Zio didn't like the entire assembly, but she simply couldn't not pass by, as she usually takes the original here and leaves a replica in its place, however, this time she left the original head there too. On the other side, the supervisor grabs Zio by her clothes as she was trying to run away, and angrily asks if she was the culprit behind all those thefts. And while they are on this topic, the supervisor also asks if she made any addition to this pile of crap of hers recently. To which she replies, of course not, it's been a long time since she has added a piece to her collection, so stop talking nonsense. Later on, Yu groans in pain as it looks like she stepped on a thorn again and adds, sure enough, walking barefoot is hard. Cheng then asks what is she standing there for and tells her to stay close, to which Yu responds that she is coming. She thinks about enduring it, since she wouldn't want to inconvenience him even more than she already has. However, Cheng tells her to take a break for now and hearing that, she becomes astonished. Cheng then adds that he is tired from walking like this and needs some rest, so he asks if she has any objections. He also mentions that he will go scout ahead for a bit and tells her to wait for him here, but she says she will go with him too. He advises against it saying, it takes a lot of energy to look after her, so she shouldn't make him waste anymore. Just stay where she is and don't go anywhere. Hearing his response, she lets out a sigh sitting on a stone while saying, let's just sit down and wait. She wonders what those scars on Chang's back are, as they're right where his wings should be. And that's what the marking left by his wings being ripped off would look like, she thinks. She also wonders just what happened to Chang to leave that kind of wound. What he went through to end up this way. These wounds, and the fact that he is so prone to extremes could be related. She then tries to think about it for a bit but soon gives up since she just couldn't think of anything. She was thinking about asking him, but she might reopen his old wounds. Nonetheless, she was really curious. After that, she notices the bear holding some food, but the bear freaks out seeing her and runs away at an incredible speed. Yu gets shocked seeing that, but then she witnesses some fruits lying on the ground. She says it could be that the bear was looking for them to give them some food, and while slicing a coconut with her bare hands, she compliments the bear saying, he is such a nice person. Cheng then notifies Yu that he is back from scouting, and he thinks they have 15 minutes of walking ahead of them, give or take. However, he witnesses Yu chomping down on some fruits and asks where that food came from, to which she replies this is from the bear, he brought it a minute ago. Yu then offers him a coconut saying, try this one, it's delicious. Cheng asks how he is supposed to open it, to which she effortlessly slices the coconut with her bare hands and frightens him by saying, like this, easy, right. After they were done eating, Yu comments that was great, though everything tastes good when you're hungry. Meanwhile, Cheng thinks that they don't have to worry about food for a while. Cheng then tells her to get ready to go and she replies okay. Moreover, he tells her to give him her foot, to which she gets confused. Then as he was wrapping her foot with leaves, Yu thinks that scared her, since she thought he was up to something. She says that she feels like a dumpling that is being wrapped up. But Cheng makes an angry face hearing that and Yu tells him to let her do it herself. Cheng then adds that this is a leaf of Japanese banana and it's thick enough to make a foot wrap. However, Yu asks if that scouting just now was an excuse to go look for these leaves. Hearing that, Cheng makes an intimidating expression and Yu says, that was a joke. He just happened to pick it up while scouting, since he noticed how slow she was walking, and adds that the longer she stays silent being afraid to draw attention to the issue, the bigger the issue will become, to which Yu apologizes. After wrapping up one of her legs, he asks her to give him the other one and she replies with a yes. After that, he glances over her body and is surprised to see that her private part is not covered with any fabric. Then he blushes from the sudden surprise and wonders why she is going commando. 
He wonders why she is not wearing any clothes. But judging by her expression it doesn't look like she is doing it on purpose. It could be that she accidentally dropped them somewhere. He further thinks there is no way that someone could be stupid enough to not feel that their clothes are coming off. And that means the reasonable explanation would be that he just imagined it. Afterward, he thinks about giving it another look. But then he looks away since she really isn't wearing anything down there. He additionally thinks, how could she not feel that it became cold down there, and wonders why was she wearing a strappy swimsuit in the first place. He then comes to a realization and angrily thinks that this must be the supervisor's doing. On the other side, Zio compliments the supervisor saying, that an accidental exposure of a girl's private parts is one of the fastest ways to close the distance between characters. The awkwardness and hormones running wild, not only did she achieve the desired result, but she did it in a way that the audience loves. The supervisor replies she is not as well versed in this as Zio is and her skills are barely on the level of someone who is dabbling in rom-com. But Zio tells her not to be modest since she is the one who should be learning from her. On the flip side, Cheng wonders what he should do and if he should warn her, but he can't think of a way to tell her. He then imagines himself telling you that her clothes fell off and thinks that there is no way he is telling her that. Later on, Yu asks if there is something wrong, to which Cheng becomes startled and hurriedly binds her foot. After he is finished, Yu says, while wow, her feet doesn't hurt anymore, this is so much better. Meanwhile, Cheng closes his eyes and thinks to himself that just pretend he didn't see anything. Yu then thanks him with a smile, but Cheng blushes from witnessing that. It would be one thing if he didn't know, but now each time he remembers that there is nothing under those clothes, he can't help but be conscious. He accidentally glances at her lower body and then he bashes his head on a tree thinking, sinful thoughts, be gone. He then adds, let's go, to which she replies sure. As they are traveling, Yu notices his tail and grabs it, to which he gets startled. Seeing his reaction, Yu asks what's wrong and if he is feeling unwell. She also asks if he is having a stomach ache, but Cheng bashfully tells her to stop touching his tail. She becomes speechless seeing his reaction, but then she drops his tail in a panicked state. She then tells him that he is the one who told her to hold on to his tail, but Cheng tells her to stay close and then she won't have to hold it. She replies that she understands while wondering what's going on since he wasn't afraid of his tail being touched in the past. She also wonders what's with the expression he had just now, as this is the first time she has seen him like that and it feels a little lewd. Yu then asks why he is walking while leaning forward like that, but Cheng tells her to shut up and just watch her step. After a while, Cheng announces that they have arrived and this should be the place. Yu asks what place and states that there is nothing here but a lake, however, Cheng mentions that this spot is the center of the island. He thinks that it was around here and then he finds it. Yu exclaims wow, a kitty statue, whereas Cheng says that there should be another one here. Yu then looks at the posture of the other cat statue and says, what a weird pose. Meanwhile, Cheng grabs both of the statues and puts them together in a mating position. Seeing that, Yu gets shocked and wonders, what the hell? She then notices something in the water and questions if something is rising to the surface. She keeps looking at that thing as it surfaces on the ground, and after a while, she shockingly asks what that is. She thinks she has seen this thing on TV when she was a kid, but Cheng asks why she is surprised after all those things she saw today. Cheng then invites her to go, while she stares at the gigantic structure in shock. After that, Cheng remains speechless so Yu asks him if is there something wrong. Cheng replies that it's locked and apparently, they need a password to open it, so Yu asks what they do now. On the other side, Zio maniacally laughs asking if they really thought that she would let them in this easily, and adds, that Cheng is naive. The supervisor asks if she made some preparations, to which she replies she bet she did. In order to obtain a password, they will have to complete a series of challenges, the hints to which she has planted all over the island. And each challenge involves physical intimacy of one sort or another, including, but not limited to Princess Carrie, snuggling, caved on, kissing, and other intense and exciting challenges. There will be a lot of situations involving that famous suspension bridge effect so popular in rom-coms, the one that brings people together and stimulates their feelings. And that's not all, there are 6 main and 10 side quests, as well as 76 decryption challenges, which she called, the forest book. Hearing that, the supervisor replies that she always found that kind of development rather too cliché. Zio then angrily says that it's called classic, and adds that it never goes out of style. But the supervisor asks how much money has she earned on it. Zio tells her not to underestimate these kinds of challenges and she is telling this to her as someone with lots of experience in this area. 
She continues that if everything goes according to her plan and they complete all these challenges, then they will surely arrive to the happy end in no time. The supervisor then asks if that really is the case and she replies that she gives her word to her. Meanwhile, Cheng wonders what the password could be and then he enters a sentence, to which the password gets accepted and they are granted access. At this, Yu exclaimed wow, and adds that it's spacious just like she had seen in movies, whereas Cheng said, let's go. Witnessing that, Zio gets dumbfounded and asks how Cheng knows the password, since she never told it to anyone. The supervisor guesses that she used some meme or a phrase from some anime or a game of a password. However, Zio replies that she was prepared for this kind of situation. In order to pass through the next door, they needed to say the passphrase out loud, and in order to obtain the passphrase, they needed to go somewhere. Hearing that, Cheng becomes irritated whereas Zio says she equipped the second door with the passphrase lock, and after the first incorrect attempt, the system will go into lockdown. However, Cheng yells, I love Elijah, at which the passphrase gets accepted and then the door starts to open. Seeing that, Zio gets shocked and asks how Cheng got it on the first try. Yu then states that his sister is a security freak, and asks how he knows all the passwords, to which Cheng replies that it wasn't like this the last time he was here, and adds that Zio likes to use memes and famous phrases from anime and games as password, so if they keep up with her watchlist and games backlog, they might have a high chance of guessing the password. The advisor then menacingly glares at Zio, to which she asks, what's with that are you right in the head, and adds that she still has a trump card up her sleeve. Afterwards, Cheng and Yu come across a security mechanism in the shape of a lock and Yu mentions that it says that they can get the key by completing challenges. Zio then excitedly says that they didn't expect that, and adds that it's a lock that they will need an actual key to open. However, Cheng finds the key to the lock by lifting a flower pot nearby, and says that he found it. Yu then asks how he knows where to look, to which Cheng replies that it's a spare key, and he guesses that Zio forgot to get rid of it. On the other side, the advisor grabs Zio's head in rage, but Zio tells her to wait and let her explain. Meanwhile, Yin hears the advisors and Zio's squabbling as she is showering. She then comments that those two sure are lively, and she wonders how Yu is doing. Not like she can help her now, but he hopes nothing bad happens to them. Or rather to Yu, since she couldn't care less about Cheng. She further says, at least she didn't get dragged into some mess this time and who knows what kind of torture those two demons could have prepared for her. After that, Yu looks around to see if she is safe and curiously asks Cheng, that strange treasure chest that just appeared over there, may she open it and check what's inside, to which he replies, no. However, she opens the chest anyway for a glimpse, but Cheng angrily yells to don't touch that. He then tells her to watch out and pulls her back to save her from an attack. Yu notices that it melted her clothes, and that's why Cheng says he told her not to touch it, since it sprays them with a liquid that melts their clothes, However, it doesn't burn their skin or anything. He further says that Zio put lures and traps all over the place, and next time she sees something that piques her interest, she shouldn't touch it, to which she replies, got it. After that, she notices that her clothes are torn now, but then she takes a closer look and gets embarrassed to find out that she wasn't wearing any fabric down there. She wonders where her swimsuit underwear went, and if could it be that they got completely melted by that liquid just now. Cheng on the other hand asks why is she standing over there and says, let's go. But Yu hesitantly grabs her clothes and blushingly replies that she is coming. Watching her reaction, Cheng understands that she finally noticed. However, Yu wondered that if her clothes didn't get melted just now, then could it be that Cheng had already seen her down there, and that would also explain his weird behavior back then. After that, Yu stares daggers at him, to which Cheng thinks that he should better play dumb and pretend that he knows nothing. Cheng then notifies her that they have arrived and that this is the place. He opens the door and they arrive at a normal looking living room. Yu thinks that compared to all that weirdness outside, this room looks refreshingly normal, though, after everything she has seen, she wouldn't be surprised to find something bizarre here as well. Cheng mentions that the bathroom is that way and she should go first, while he will try to find some clean clothes for her, to which she responds with an okay. He further adds that she can find towels, soap, and shampoo in there and she replies that she got it. After that, she glances at Cheng and grabs his attention, to which Cheng asks what's wrong and if there is no hot water. She then blushingly asks if he saw, but Cheng plays dumb asking, saw what? She becomes speechless at his reply and then she says, nothing, never mind. She thinks that it looks like she was worried about nothing and speaking of it, how could she be so stupid to not even notice that she lost her clothes? Meanwhile, Cheng stops his nosebleed thinking, 
that he thought he was done for and if she stayed over there even a second longer, she would have found him out. On the other side, Yu stretches her body while taking a bath and comments that this is refreshing. Cheng notifies her from outside the bathroom that he found some old Zio's clothes and he will leave them at the door, to which she thanks him. Yu then thinks that Zio's clothes might be too small for her, since she has the figure of a little girl. After that, she wears Zio's clothes and gets amazed to know that they actually fit. She then touches the part of her melons and comments that even here too. After that, she looks at herself in the mirror and strikes several poses. She then notifies Cheng that the bathroom is free, but due to his lack of response, she questions, where did he go? She notices Cheng on the sofa and looks at him while he is sleeping. Then looking at his sleeping face, she finds out that he fell asleep, and that he must be very tired after all that happened in the forest. After that, she passionately looks at him and then she pokes on his face. She continues to poke his face multiple times, but Cheng gets irritated and moves his face sideways. Yu smiles while thinking that this is fun and it looks like he is fast asleep. She nervously wonders if it is okay to be a little mischievous in this kind of situation, and then she reaches out her hand. She begins to pinch his ears and feels comforted by this feeling while lying on top of him. She further thinks that they are so soft and so pleasant to the touch. She then sniffs his collarbone and thinks that he smells good, like a shower gel. After that, she comes to the realization of what she is doing and that she is acting like a pervert here. Cheng then shows subtle signs of waking up which scares her and she thinks about getting away before he notices. However, Cheng suddenly grabs her waist and pulls her towards him in his sleep. At that, Yu becomes flabbergasted and wonders why he did that now, all of a sudden. On the other side, Zio and the supervisor both raise their fist in the air out of excitement and comments nice. Yu then thinks she can't believe this guy, but it looks like he is still sleeping. She also curses herself since she forgot that he has a habit of hugging things in his sleep. Yu then tries to free herself, but it is impossible since she can't break free from his grip. She further thinks, why is this guy so strong each time he is sleeping, and that it is so close that she can feel his breath. After that, she tries her best to get up, but the ring suddenly starts acting, and then she gets shocked wondering what is going on, she can't move a muscle. Cheng then aggressively pulls her towards him, at which Zio and the supervisor act excitedly from the other side of the screen. Then as Cheng was about to kiss her in his sleep, Yu turned her head away, which resulted in him kissing her cheeks. On the other side, the supervisor and Sayo act defeated as Cheng and Yu avoid lip contact. Meanwhile, Yu feels flustered as she is being kissed and wonders what's going on. After that, Yu becomes embarrassed at the thought that Cheng kissed her on the face. Had she known that this would happen, she would never have messed with his ears, and she thinks that she paid a terrible price for her mischief. Cheng then suddenly flips her sideways while hugging, to which Yu thinks that he stopped. After that, Cheng kisses her on the forehead, and she becomes flustered. Meanwhile, Yu wonders what she should do and adds that her heart is going to jump out of her chest. Cheng then places his hand on Yu's head and pats her, while smiling in his sleep. At that, Yu bets he is dreaming about something weird again, and then she witnesses his goofy smile and becomes angry. But even so, she questions why it makes her feel so at ease and thinks that it feels good. She then slowly closes her eyes, and then they both fall asleep in each other's arms. On the other side, the supervisor and Zio witness them falling asleep on their TV and becoming speechless afterwards. Zio then angrily yells that they were so close, and after she was expecting something spicy, they give her this instead. It's like when the newest episode of the show they are watching builds and builds, then finally gets to the juicy part, and then it suddenly ends. Meanwhile, Yin finished her shower in comments, that was great. She then says that drinking a can of juice after a bath is the best, however, she notices something strange. She asks the supervisor and Zioa about what's wrong and why they are staring at her like that. Afterward, they get dangerously closer to Yin, to which she tells them that they are scaring her, and if they have something to say, they should just say it. While tearing up, Yin asks them what they are up to, and tells them to stay away from her. On the other side, Cheng wakes up feeling that his hand went numb as Yu was lying over his arm. Then he glances at you to see that she is sleeping on his body, and he starts sweating while wondering what's going on. He wonders what the hell happened and why, on earth, she is sleeping here. Since he fell asleep, he can't remember a thing. Nonetheless, he needs to get out of here before she wakes up and makes a scene. He then tries to remove her hands slowly, but Yu feels irritated in her sleep, and afterwards, she moves on top of his chest, while hugging him more tightly. Meanwhile, Cheng becomes flustered, wondering what is happening, but Yu moves her mouth and murmurs, Niam, Niam. 
She was dreaming about a pudding, and while attempting to eat it, she bit Cheng's ears and made him startled. Cheng feels horny from her biting his sensitive ears, so he tightly grabs onto the sofa with both of his hands. He couldn't bear it anymore, so he used his tail to tie her up, and then he lifted her up in the air. He thinks that was close since he almost screamed, and he adds that this moron's sleeping habits are unbelievable. He also thinks that it will be bad if she keeps this up and that he really needs to get out of here. Cheng then slowly moves her using his tail and finds a chance to get out of there. However, his ring suddenly activates, and he becomes dumbfounded as he can't move a muscle. On the contrary, Yu feels discomfort and grabs his tail, to which he becomes startled. From the sudden shock, he loses his grip on her, and then she starts falling over him. As she was about to fall, Cheng turned his face sideways, which resulted in Yu kissing Cheng's cheeks. At that, Cheng becomes speechless and screams inside his head. On the other side, Xiao and the advisor dress Yin up in costume and take photos of her. Then, as Yin strikes a pose, they instruct her to look at the camera and smile. The advisor adds that she didn't expect her to have so much fun in that bag of hers, whereas Xiao says, one should always be prepared for anything, let's continue, to which Yin asks if they aren't done yet. Then, while grabbing some costumes, Xiao says, what a silly question and tells Yin to try this one next, whereas the advisor asks if the one she is holding is great too. Seeing that, Yin trembles in fear, and then she tears up. The next morning, Cheng feels tired as Yu sleeps on top of him in an unruly manner. He then notices that it's already morning, and suddenly, he receives a message from his ring saying that they gave him such a chance, yet he wasted it. After that, Yu begins to open her eyes to the sound of chopping vegetables. After waking up, she witnesses Cheng's back as he is cooking a meal for them. She was confused by it, and then she fixed her posture in a daze. After that, as Cheng was in the midst of cooking, she suddenly hugs him from behind and comments, This smells good. However, Cheng angrily tells her that it's dangerous, and tells her to get off. He then smacks her in the head out of anger, to which Yu grabs her head in pain and questions who she is and where she is. Meanwhile, Cheng tells her to go wash up since the food will be ready soon, to which Yu questions if it's breakfast, but Cheng angrily responds that it's already noon. After Cheng was done cooking, Yu ate her lunch while thinking that it was very tasty. It's already their second day on this island, and yesterday was a pretty eventful day. Then, as she continues to eat, she shockingly remembers the last night and wonders what happened the night after that. She doesn't remember anything after that, and it's like watching a movie and falling asleep in the middle of it. She tries to remember the post she woke up to, and since Cheng has terrible sleeping habits, she wonders if he did something weird to her while she was asleep and left her like that. Meanwhile, as Cheng was eating, he made eye contact with Yu and looked away, at which Yu became suspicious of his reaction. Cheng then asks what's wrong, to which she replies nothing. She couldn't bring herself to ask him, as she was the one who did something weird first. After a brief moment of silence, they simultaneously tell each other that they were surprised to find that they have such terrible sleeping habits. Both of them get surprised to hear it, and then simultaneously says that they are the last person they want to hear that from. They also add the incident from last night, and then they tell each other to never mind. At that, they both become angry and simultaneously says to stop parroting them, they sound like a broken record. On the other side, Zio and the supervisor become confused by their behavior. Zio questions what's going on and says that it's like she skipped an episode of an anime, whereas the supervisor says she has a feeling there was some kind of development they missed. Afterwards, as the bear was sleeping on the island, Yu suddenly poked his cheek and asked, smilingly, if he was awake. The bear gets frightened to see her face and lets out a whimper, to which Yu apologizes, and adds that she didn't mean to startle him. Yu then brings a basket of fruit, saying she brought him some food, and looking at how he was sleeping here, he must be hungry. She wanted to thank him for the food he brought them last night and also apologize for scaring him. She then states that they are delicious and adds that she took them while Chang wasn't looking, so she requests the bear not to tell him. Meanwhile, the bear sniffs the food and blushes to see her sincerity. On the contrary, Cheng comes out of the base wearing a hat and carrying a basket, and states that it is very hot. Yu then suddenly asks where he is going, but Cheng becomes startled to see her riding on the bear. He wonders when these two get so close and adds that Zio's pet would usually never let anyone close to him, except for Zio and him. Afterwards, Yu repeats where he is going with that thing on his back, to which Cheng replies that he is going to pick some ingredients from the kitchen garden they have on the island. At that, Yu says she will come and help him, but Cheng replies that there is no need as she will only get in the way, and tells her to just stay here and not to wander anywhere. 
Yu tells him to wait, and then she states that he is back at it again, with an irritated expression. In a parallel world where the genders are reversed, Cheng wakes up to find herself naked with Yu in their bed. She then looks at Yu's grinning face and becomes startled. She asks, what the hell? But Yu tells her, it's still early, let's sleep a bit more. However, she angrily asks if he is kidding her and asks him to get out of here. After that, she punches him off the bed, at which Yu grabs his head in pain and asks what got into her so early in the morning. Cheng replies, that's her line, and asks what he is doing, sneaking into her room again. However, Yu replies that this is his room, and last night, she came into his room half asleep and climbed into his bed. He further adds that he is the victim here, to which Cheng blushingly asks why she is naked. At that, Yu replies, that's because he undressed her, and since sleeping with their clothes on isn't comfy, he took them off. Hearing that, Cheng tells him to go kill himself, but Yu says she jumped into his bed herself, which means that she is the one who tried to seduce him first. However, Cheng angrily throws a pillow at his face and tells him to go die. Afterwards, she bashfully asks if they did it again, but Yu obliviously replies that nothing happened, to which Cheng tells him to stop trying to play dumb. She questions why this happened again, even though she knows that she shouldn't have, and adds, why didn't he wake her up? Yu replies, because she won't wake up no matter what he does to her, and that's how her body is. He adds that even though she is asleep, her body still instinctively reacts, but Cheng throws an item at his face and tells him to die. Yu then tells her to relax, saying that he used protection, but Cheng tells him to shut up and that she doesn't want to hear another word from him. On the other side, Yin tells the advisor to wait, but he replies that they haven't been walking that long and she is already tired. Yin mentions that she is a girl, so he should give her a break and go slower, but the advisor asks if she didn't say the same thing when she was in a guy's body. Yin then introduces herself and mentions that due to some circumstances, she was cursed by a scheming angel, and as a result of that curse, every night she turns into a guy. Ever since then, her life has been a mess. To avoid being found out, she has to live a double life, and during the day, she is a girl called Yin Zai. And at night, she turns into a guy and goes by the name Ying Zai, and she is forced to endure a miserable existence. Her research for a way to lift the curse eventually led her to the human world, and she thought that she had finally managed to find a clue for lifting the curse. But it turned out to be a trap set by the supervisor, and he put her in chains and forced her to work for him. And if she doesn't listen to him, she will face several punishments, so she swears that one day she is going to make the supervisor pay. After that, Cheng and Yu have an encounter with the supervisor and Yin, and Yu tell them, long time no see. Yin gets excited to see Yu and greets him, whereas the supervisor says, hello. Yin then asks Yu if he didn't say he wanted to hang out with her and says she has been waiting for so long for his invitation. But Yu asks if he really said that. Yin additionally asks if he had a chance to think about her offer that they talked about last time, which is about leaving Cheng and coming to live with her, and adds that she will be sure to fulfill his every desire. Suddenly, Cheng drops hot water on Yin's head, to which Yin asks what she is doing. She then menacingly asks if she is looking for a fight, but Cheng replies, that's her line, and tells her to watch her mouth. Meanwhile, the supervisor comments how wonderful, while looking at their quarrel, but Yu tells them to stop fighting. After that, Yin grabs one of his arms, saying Cheng is an unreasonable, violent, and ugly woman, and tells him to break up with her, while Cheng grabs his other arm, saying that's much better than being a succubus that's going around in heat trying to steal every wallflower she sees. Witnessing that, the supervisor comments that he is as popular as ever while Yu tells him to save him. The supervisor then gets close to Yu, saying that looking at him having fun made him want to join. And of all of them, he has been with you the longest, so he knows all his weaknesses like the back of his hand. The supervisor then gives them examples by touching Yu's sensitive spots, and meanwhile, Cheng and Yin become embarrassed to see it. They also get a nosebleed while thinking, it looks like he can, after all. Moving on, the advisor grabs Yin's collar, saying they have some work to do, so they will be taking their leave now. But Yin asks what he is talking about and tells him to let her hang out for a little bit longer. The advisor then menacingly tells her that she has been talking back to her all day, and adds that it looks like he will have to teach her that basic lesson all over again. At that, Yin apologizes, saying she won't do that again, she will do anything he says, and that she learned her lesson. Afterwards, Yu tells Cheng that they should be going too, but Cheng turns his face away. He then asks if she is mad and apologizes, saying, please don't be angry with him. He tries to hold Cheng's hand, but she moves it away, telling him to move his dirty hand off her and don't touch her. 
At that, Yu tears up from the pain in his hand while Cheng pouts. He then asks where they are going, to which she replies that they are going to the supermarket to buy ingredients for dinner and afterwards, they hold hands. After they reach the market, Cheng wonders if she should try using those weak spots that the supervisor mentioned and believes that she will finally be the one who has the upper hand. Meanwhile, Yu holds a packet of protection, saying they ran out of this stuff at home, so they should buy more while they are here, but Cheng tells him to die. Back to the main story, Yu thinks, here they go again, and that she was totally abandoned. She wonders what she should do to kill time, but looking at their base, she gets the idea that since she can't wander outside, she should just explore the inside, and she also adds that this building must have a lot of strange rooms she hasn't checked out yet. She then bids the bear farewell and tells him to take care on his way back to the forest. After that, she begins to wander around the base and gets amazed to see the structure. She also explores the library, which contains different genres of books, and then she falls into a mimic trap. Afterwards, she looks at various items while riding an escalator, and moving on, she finds herself in a room full of weapons. After grabbing one of the swords, the sword emits a powerful beam that shoots through the roof of the base. Meanwhile, Cheng wonders what is going on, as he is collecting vegetables from the garden. On the contrary, Yu thinks that she should better avoid touching the stuff that's lying around from now on while looking at the hole she made using the sword. After that, she finds a door where it is written that there is nothing interesting in this room, however, it piques her interest. Then, after a brief moment of silence, she grabs the door handle, thinking that she will just take a glimpse. After opening the door, she begins to cough and comments that there is so much dust in here. She then looks around the room and sees that different things are scattered here and there. Yu questions what kind of place this is, and it looks like it hasn't been used in a long time. She also finds that there is so much anime merchandise there. It looks like the stuff is from another era, and she thinks she saw something like this when she was a kid. Holding a manga, she questions just what this room is, and then she gets amazed to find out that there are a lot of games, movies, and anime in this room as well. Moving on, she holds a toy pistol, saying she thinks she had a toy gun like this when she was a kid. She then inserts a token saying, if she remembers correctly, they do it like this, and she points the gun forward and yells, my trusty blaster, shoot, pew pew. Now she remembers having a toy gun just like this one, and it was her favorite toy back then. She cherished it so much that even a single scratch on it was enough to make her sad for a while, and since she was afraid to lose it, she drew a doodle on it. She then notices that a doodle was also drawn on the token she was holding and becomes speechless upon seeing it. After that, she brushes it off as a coincidence and says that it looks like all the kids have a habit of drawing doodles on their stuff. She then wonders what kind of picture she drew on hers, but she can't remember it since it's been a long time. Suddenly, a book crashes on her head from the bookshelf and she grabs her head in pain, wondering what that was. After that, she notices a picture frame lying on the ground and then she clears the picture to see the contents. She sees a picture of a demon girl and a young demon boy and asks who is in this picture. She wonders if the young boy is Cheng and she thinks that he was pretty cute as a kid. She also notices that he had his wings back then, so she comes to the conclusion that he wasn't wingless from birth. She further wonders if the woman near him is Cheng's mom, but she looks a little bit too young for that. She somehow reminds her of Zio, but the more she looks into this, the less she understands. Afterward, she notices an album lying on the ground and becomes intrigued. She believes that this photo album must have fallen together with that photo, and looking through this album might help her find some clues. She then thinks that she might even be able to dig up some dirty secrets about Chen, but she hesitates to open them since she believes that it is bad manners to look through other people's photo albums without asking them first. But she is really curious, and it's not like he is around to ask his permission, so sneaking a peek shouldn't be a big deal as long as he doesn't find out. She then attempts to open the album, thinking that she will just take a glimpse. However, she finds out that all the photos inside the album were torn to shreds, so she wonders why all the photos on that album are like that. Then, as she was looking through the album in shock, suddenly, Cheng entered the room and menacingly asked what she was doing here, as she was told not to wander around. Moving on, Cheng menacingly asks Yu if she was not told not to wander around. Yu becomes speechless seeing him, but Cheng quickly kicks her out of the room. She then grabs her head in pain, and after Cheng comes out of the room, she curiously asks if this was his room. Cheng leaves while ignoring her, so she tells him to wait, but suddenly, Cheng slams his hand on the wall while facing her. 
He tells her that whether it is or not is none of her business and stop with her yelling since she is giving him a headache and repeats to stop wandering around and don't touch anything there. He then asks if he made himself clear, to which Yu nervously replies with a yes. Yu glances at him as he leaves and makes a sad expression. On the other side, Zio comments that this sucks as she was kinda expecting a quarrel or something. She further says that this is no fun and asks the supervisor's opinion on the matter, but she remains silent. After that, as Cheng was washing their dishes, Yu stares at him while lying on the couch. Then, looking at him with a sad expression, she wonders what that album was, but she knows that there is no way he will answer her if she just asks him. She also wonders what is that dark feeling in her chest and she can't put her finger on it. Cheng then calls her and tells to get up, and adds that he doesn't want her to fall asleep on the couch again, to which she replies okay. Later, he points her toward a direction, to which Yu asks where does he wants her to go. Moving on, Cheng takes her to a bedroom while saying, this will be her bedroom for tonight and adds that he will make her bed and go fetch her a new blanket. On the other side, the supervisor comments that it's boring and the day is over and adds that so far nothing has happened and asks Zio if she wants to continue this. Hearing that, Zio with an evil smile tells her not to worry and adds that the fun is just about to start. After that, Yu finds a strange button on the wall of their bedroom and it fuels her curiosity. She then stops herself from pushing the button since it could be another trap and she might get scolded again. However, her curious conscience pressures her to press the button saying, it can't be something dangerous, it could be a pleasant surprise, and at times like these, she should follow her heart's desire. After that, she clicks the button and it triggers a trap, to which Chen gets confused, as he is preparing Yu's bed. All the entrances to the room suddenly begin to shut down, so Cheng asks what happened and why are all the doors and windows locking up. He further questions if some kind of trap got activated, but there is no way since he was really careful not to touch anything. Meanwhile, Yu hides the button whereas Cheng finds out that all the exits are sealed off. Afterwards, the TV inside their room suddenly turns on, and a text was displayed saying, they can't leave this room until they do, that. Seeing that, Cheng becomes speechless, but Yu wonders what it means by that. Cheng then yells if Zio is kidding him, whereas Zio looks at them with a menacing smile. After that, Cheng tries to forcibly open the door, but it doesn't budge. Yu then obliviously asks if they should just do it, at which Cheng gets startled. Hearing that, Cheng shyly says he must be hearing things and asks if she is serious. Yu replies of course, since they won't get out until they do it, at which Cheng wonders what she is saying. He then clarifies that they are talking about that and if she understands. However, Yu tells him to relax and says just leave it to her, she is good at this kind of thing. But Cheng angrily asks what she is talking about. He wonders if this dummy really understand what that means and could it be that they are talking about different things here. After that, Zio appears on the screen saying, today they will talk about what that means and how to do it. And if they don't know yet, she will give them a tutorial following which even a fool can learn how to do it. Later, Yu mentions that she is about to tell them the rules, but Cheng questions if that tutorial is what he is thinking. Yu then seriously concentrates and takes a notebook whereas Cheng makes a concerned expression. However, as the tutorial continues, Yu becomes speechless seeing it. Meanwhile, Cheng quickly dashes to turn off the TV, but he couldn't turn it off and couldn't find the power plug. Later, Zio tells them that this tutorial was provided by Zio's spirit lifting library and thanks them for watching. Cheng on the other side finds the power plug and finally turns the TV off. He then looks at Yu and sees that her eyes are soulless from watching the tutorial. Later, she starts blushing from the sudden realization and tells him that it's not what she meant. She thought all they needed to do was to play some game. And when she said she is good at it, she only meant that she is good at playing games and not at doing those kind of things. To which Cheng replies that he knows and tells her to calm down. After that, a drawer full of protection and kinky toys suddenly opens, and Zio appears on screen telling them not to overdo it, and not to forget to use protection, but Cheng immediately slams the phone on the floor. On the other side, Zio yells at Cheng for breaking her phone, but the supervisor asks why she always go for such boring bulgar traps that nobody likes to watch. Meanwhile, Yu shyly apologizes to Cheng saying, after careful consideration, she thinks she can't do this, but Cheng angrily tells her that when somebody makes such requests, she must reject them firmly. After that, Cheng rests on the bed commenting that it's bothersome, since that inconsiderate sister of his just loves to do all kinds of stupid stuff. Then Yu asks what they are going to do now, to which Cheng replies that they are just going to stay in this room. 
He adds that this is just one of her pranks, so once she gets bored, she will let them go, and there is a toilet, a bathroom, and enough food for them to not worry. She replies that she understands, and then she looks around for a place to rest, since Chang was sleeping on the bed. Chang teases her asking if staying in the same room with him makes her nervous, and adds that they have been living together for so long and she still haven't gotten used to it. She gets embarrassed hearing it and says that her being conscious of him is a joke, but Cheng tells her not to force herself and further says that he will keep this embarrassing little secret of hers. Afterwards, Yu angrily hops on the bed and tells him to look, and says that she is already lying on a bed with him and don't feel anything at all. Chen gets irritated at her behavior and tells her not to disturb his sleep. Meanwhile, Yu wonders what she is doing, what she is yelling at him for, and thinking of it logically, sleeping together again is the only way. She also thinks that he isn't making a big deal out of it anyway, so she should just sleep. Suddenly, she sniffs the air, wondering what this smell is, and that it smells kind of weird. Afterward, she angers Cheng by calling his name multiple times, and then she slams her hand beside his face leaving him confused. She asks what should she do, since her body suddenly started to feel hot, and also she is starting to feel weird, to which Cheng looks at her confusedly and wonders what is going on. Moving on, Cheng in a panic state tells her to stop it, and asks what she is doing, and what got into her. In reply, Yu in a flustered mood asks what she is supposed to do, as her head feels hot, and is it because her brain is growing. Cheng then yells at her to get back to her senses, but she grabs his hand. She tells him that her entire body feels hot, this makes her feel uneasy, so she asks if he can help her by taking off her clothes. Hearing that, Cheng becomes startled and tells her to stop it right now, while grabbing her shoulders. He then flips her on the bed, and after a short pause, he witnesses her horny expression and becomes speechless. He wonder what this feeling is, and asks himself how come he suddenly doesn't want to resist it. He then thinks about allowing nature to take its course and adds that this doesn't sound so bad. However, he snaps out of it due to his indomitable spirit and thinks that was dangerous. He almost lost control, and wonders what is going on here, and what this weird smell is. He believes that it is Zio's doing, and that she must have planned this all out for enjoying the show via hidden cameras. He speculates that if he breathe in too much of this gas, it will be hard to stay sane, so he needs to hurry up and get out of here. Then suddenly, Yu grabs him by his nape and pulls him towards her. She then giggles as she says, caught you, and asks if they should continue. Looking at her state, he thinks that you totally fell into his sister's trap, and as they are about to lock lips, he adds that this will be bad if this continues. Suddenly, he activates sage mode and then snaps of out of it, by making a stern face. On the other side of the screen, Zio becomes shocked to witness it, and questions if he is kidding her. They were so close to the juicy stuff and now he is giving them this, so she asks if he is an impotent. Afterward, Cheng suddenly warps her in the blanket and carries her on his shoulder. He then triggers a pressure plate and sudden, a secret doorway open up. Meanwhile, Zio questions what kind of plot device is that, whereas the supervisor comments that he foresaw this. Cheng thinks that luckily, there are escape routes in each room, and adds that he expected Zio to try and catch them in one of her traps, so he was planning to pretend that they got caught as she wouldn't bother them with more and more traps. But now she forced his hand and he thinks about getting out of here. Then, as he was escaping with you, an alarm gets triggered and suddenly, the doors start to close and aphrodisiac fills in from the ventilations. Meanwhile, Zio questions if he expected that she wouldn't think of this and states that she foresaw that. On the contrary, Cheng opens a door by triggering another pressure plate and comments that he foresaw that she will foresee it. Afterward, Zio activates another trap saying, that's what she would have said if she didn't foresee that he will foresee her foresight. Cheng then climbs down using a rope while stating that he foresaw that she will foresee him foreseeing her foresight. After that, they continue to foresee their foresight whereas the supervisor asks if they are playing matryoshka dolls with words or something. At that, Zio angrily tells her to shut up and adds that this has nothing to do with her, but the supervisor notifies her that it looks like Cheng is about to escape. Meanwhile, Cheng triggers a switch and arrives at an airplane parking garage. He then forcefully drops you on a plane, and she comes back to her senses asking, What is going on, what is this place, and what just happened? Cheng replies that he will explain everything to her later, so she should hurry up and put on that helmet since they are breaking out of here. Yu becomes confused asking what he means by breaking out, and in the next moment, Cheng starts operating the aircraft and startles her. 
After that, Cheng states that it looks like everything is normal on the surface of the island, which at least seems like that from up here, and if it was a bit longer, they wouldn't have been able to escape. Meanwhile, Yu becomes panicked and asks him what just happened. Later, something from below the ocean starts to arise, which grabs Cheng's attention. Then, a giant Balan-like figure of Zio is revealed, at which Cheng becomes dumbfounded. On the other side, Zio states that this is her ultimate weapon and additionally asks if he really believed that he could get away from her. Afterward, Yu questions what that is while looking down from the aircraft and adds that it looks kind of cute. Then suddenly, the Balan-like figure fires a massive beam into the air, at which Cheng and Yu become startled. Later, Zio asks if they saw that and states that her 10B6 is awesome, but Cheng asks if they are trying to kill them. Meanwhile, Yu asks what should they do, as it is getting ready for another shot. Cheng replies that they have to take evasive action and tells her to switch everything to manual mode and transfer control to him. But Yu questions how she do it, to which Cheng tells her to look for the red button. After that, the Balan-like figure fires another beam towards them, but they barely dodge it. The trajectory of the beam was headed towards the island, and meanwhile, the bear was plucking some fruits in order to gift it to Yu. However, the bear notices something strange, and in the next moment, he gets engulfed in the beam fired by the balloon-like figure. Afterward, Cheng says that they can't just wait it out and adds that they have to fight back, but Yu is concerned. He then tells her that he will take care of flying and aiming, and he will leave the firing to her, to which she tells him to wait a second, but Cheng adds that they can't wait, because if they don't fight back, they won't survive. After that, Cheng locks on the target and orders you to open fire, but she asks how she is supposed to shoot. At that, Cheng asks what she has been doing all this time and mentions that it is the yellow one, to which Yu replies that she was trying to ask him, but he was interrupting him all the time. She then finds the wrong trigger and upon launching it, their cockpit suddenly opens, and they are yeeted into the air. They become dumbfounded by it, and as they were falling, Cheng hurriedly tells her to spread her wings, but Yu replies that her belt got stuck. Meanwhile, the abandoned aircraft collides with the balloon-like figure, and as a result, it begins to deflate. On the other side, the bear sprints from the pain because his butt is set on fire, but as he puts out the fire by sitting on the ocean, the giant Balan-like figure drops on top of him. From the other side of the screen, the supervisor and Zio become speechless by witnessing it. After a short pause, Zio comments that everything went just as she planned. But the supervisor asks what was the point of that, since they are back to square one. On the side, Cheng and Yu arrive back on the shore of the island in tatters. After that, Yu holds her head in pain and asks what just happened. And on the other hand, Cheng says that he have had enough of this bullshit, and questions how he ended in such a mess. He then menacingly looks at Yu and points him toward her noise saying, this is all her fault. He further says that ever since they landed on this island, it's been one after the other and she has been messing around at every opportunity that gets her into trouble, so he asks, why can't she eat or sleep like a normal person? She replies that she is the victim here and being spirited away, and getting involved in the strange event is not something she did on purpose. However, Cheng says that he noticed her pressing the button that activated the trap, and had she kept her hands to herself, they wouldn't have ended in this mess. She replies that there is no way she could have known that was a trap, since that house is full of weird stuff, so it is easy to mistake one thing for another. Cheng then adds that had she not pushed buttons in a cockpit at random, they wouldn't have ended like this. But Yu responds to him saying, she had no way to find the right button under the circumstances, and by the time she came back to her senses, she was confused by what was happening. After that, Cheng angrily shouts that he doesn't care anymore and tells her that from now on, she is on her own, to which she angrily pouts. Then suddenly, they hear a rumbling sound and become alerted. At that, Yu asks what is happening and if it's an earthquake, but Cheng seems to be aware of it. Afterward, the ground between them splits in half, so Cheng hurriedly tells her to come to his side, while reaching out his hand. Yu was confused as to what was happening, so she quickly grabs his hand. Cheng then pulls her towards his side and becomes irritated at their situation. Yu closes her eyes as the island continues to rumble, and after a short while, she opens her eyes asking if it's all over. She then notices that they are far up in the sky and becomes confused by it. She questions where they are and what the hell just happened. They were at the beach just a second ago, so she asks how come they are in the mountains now, and has the island just changed its shape? To which Cheng replies that this island changes its shape once a week, and anyone not familiar with the quirks and oddities of this island is bound to get lost. 
Hearing that, she replies that she understands why he told her to come to his side. But Cheng replies that he just wanted to save himself time and strength instead of wasting them on searching for her, and also tells her to stop yelling and fold her wings. She then mentions that they will have to spend the night here, since they don't have a place to go to anyway. Afterward, Yu asks what he is looking for and Cheng says, here it is. Later, she asks what that is, to which he responds to her saying, it's camping equipment that he gathered and brought it here during the day. Just in case, something like this happened. At that, Yu exclaims wow and sarcastically says that he is so prudent. However, Cheng angrily asks whose fault that is, and had she not been known for sticking her nose where it doesn't belong, he wouldn't have had to waste his time preparing for emergencies. She replies that she is sorry, but Cheng continues that he is asking her for the last time to promise him to stay here, and to not touch anything, to which she replies that she promise. Cheng then tells her to help him, since she is strong and she replies okay. After that, he gives her a bag, and then he continues to stack more bags on top of each other. Later, he notifies that that's pretty much it, and now all that is left is to set up the tent and go back to bed early. Suddenly, Yu's stomach starts growling, which makes her feel embarrassed, whereas Cheng feels irritated. After that, Cheng begins to prepare dinner for them, and after finishing their dinner, Yu comments that she didn't expect him to prepare provisions as well. He then gives her a glass of warm milk and says that it should warm up her body and adds that the nights here can be cold, to which she responds with a thank you. He also gives her a blanket telling her to put it on, and that he doesn't want to tend to her when she gets sick again. Meanwhile, Yu feels good while wearing the blanket and thinks that his preparations are so thorough. He then look up at the stars in the sky, and after a brief moment of silence, she comments that it is very beautiful, and that this is the first time she has seen so many stars. On the contrary, Cheng replies that it looks like normal to him, and he guesses that he got used to seeing this scenery. Later, Yu tells him that it feels like they are camping, but Cheng angrily replies that they are not camping, but they are forced to stay the night like this. She also asks if he have been going out camping often in the past, to which Cheng replies positively and adds that he has been forced to tag along with Xiao often when he was a kid, so he doesn't have any fond memories. He reminisces about the time when Xiao invited him to go camping, to go diving, and to become idols, to which he replied, over his dead body. Back then she was doing whatever she set her mind to, and each time after doing it earnestly for a couple of minutes, she usually left all the chores to him. Yu replies that it sounds like they were getting along, but Cheng comments that he was just a tool for her amusement. She then says that it doesn't sound too bad if it meant that he could enjoy this view whenever he wanted, but Cheng asks if they couldn't see stars up in heaven. Yu replies that it's not like that, but she was kind of forbidden from going outside in the evening, though she didn't have a lot of opportunities to go out in the first place. Hearing that, he questions why they were this strict in raising her, as their family was usually letting them roam the wild freely to which she replies that she is very jealous. After that, Cheng notifies her that he is sleepy, so he is off to bed, but he couldn't find his blanket so he wonders if he forgot to pack the second one. Yu tells him that she will give him hers and adds that she will be fine without it. Then she spread her wings and guards herself saying, she will be alright with just the wings, since the feathers keep warmth just fine. Before going to bed, Cheng mentions that she can find a towel and a toothbrush in the bag over there, disposable toilet bag is in the left pocket, and this much firewood should be enough to last until dawn, so she should just keep it quiet and not mess around. Yu becomes astounding hearing that, and now that she thinks about it, this level of preparedness is insane. On the other side, Zio comments that it turned out this way again, but the supervisor asks why she sounds so surprised as her plan was silly. Zio then tells her that she seems unusually calm today, to which she replies that she have wasted two days on this already, and she would have been in a much worse state had she not seen anything at all. After that, Yin comes back from shopping and apologizes to them as they were out of chocolates, so she brought them the snacks she was able to find. She then adds that she will leave the bag with them, and if there is nothing else they need her to do, she will be going, but she becomes startled as they weirdly looks at her. Seeing their faces, Yin tries to escape, and says that she showed up at a bad time, but Xiao and the advisor grabs her by her collar and makes her let out a loud scream. Moving on, in the middle of the night, Cheng wakes up due the smell of a bad odor and wonders if something is burning. Then he sees that Yu's wings are burning on the campfire and gets shocked by it. After that, he hurriedly tries to put out the fire and searches for the water. A while later, he succeeds in putting out the fire and wonders how can she sleep in this situation. He further thinks that her sleep is incredibly deep, and since the matter was over, he decides to go back to sleep. 
However, she rolls over to the side of the campfire and causes her wings to burn again, at which Chen grabs her wings and yells at her for turning the other way. He then becomes agitated and decides to stay with her until she stops tossing and turning in her sleep. However, Yu suddenly envelopes him with her wings, at which he becomes angry. But Cheng starts to feel good, and thinks that it's as if his entire body is enveloped in this softness. He wanted to resist since if this continued, his instincts would take over his body, and he must get up and get away from her. Afterward, in the morning, Yu wakes up from bed and says that she slept good last night. She then wishes Cheng good morning, and comments that she sees that he is up early. However, Cheng remains speechless as he is brushing his teeth, and seeing him, Yu gets confused. She then asks what is wrong, to which he replies nothing. He was thinking how humiliating it is, as after she wrapped him in her wings, he slept through the night. He also wonders why it felt good and that she must never find it out, since it is embarrassing. Suddenly, Yu notices something and notifies Cheng that there is something on his head. Then she questions what that is and if it's her feather, but Cheng freaks out asking, what she is doing all of a sudden and tells her not to come close to him. She apologizes for that and asks if last night she caused him trouble again, while making him speechless. He replies that she didn't, and tells her to go wash up and get ready for breakfast, to which she replies sure. Meanwhile, Zio and the supervisor become dumbfounded as they were brushing their teeth. Zio then says that she is having a strong sense of deja vu, and questions if she missed another episode of the show. Whereas the supervisor asks if she forgot to set up recording this time as well. Afterward, Cheng says that he thinks they should better camp here tonight as well, and adds that it seems that they are short on food, so he will go pick them some vegetables. Yu then asks if there is anything she can help him with, but he replies that he doesn't need her help, at which she wears a sad expression. Later, she asks where he is going, to which he replies that he is going to pick some vegetables not far from here and come back. She then says that she'll come with him, but he replies that there is no need, as he will save some energy and will be back earlier if he won't have to babysit him, and tells her to sit tight and not wander anywhere. Hearing that, Yu becomes depressed and gets flashbacks from the times he told her that she would get in his way. Cheng then mentions that they are almost out of water and it looks like he will have to take a deeter to get some, at which Yu tells him to let her go, but he replies that he told her to stay out of trouble. She again tells him to let her do it and insists that she won't cause him trouble. Later, she asks if he just said that the place he take water from is far from the one he is headed to, and states that she thinks it will be more efficient to split up. Besides, when it comes to mobility, hers is higher than his and since they are at the mountaintop, there will no problem in searching water using her wing and she won't get lost. She then tells him that there will be no trouble and stubbornly stares at him. However, Cheng says that the clothes she is wearing right now aren't suited for a walk in the forest, so she should just stay here. Afterwards, Yu begins to rip her clothes apart to make it easy for her mobility and asks if there should be no problems now, while giving him a cold gaze. She then reaches out her hand, and after a moment of confusion, Cheng hands her the bottles. Later, she menacingly stares at him and tells him that she is not a troublemaker as she tears up. She then flies away in search of water and leaves him confused. Meanwhile, Yu wipes her tears as she is flying, and a while later, she discovers the lake and questions if the lake ended up there, after the terrain moved around. However, a strong gust sweeps her away, and then she begins to fall while questioning why the wind is strong, and why can't she control her wings. After she crash lands on the ground, she wonders why is it hard to fly this time. She then grabs her wings asking how her feather got messy, and it's no wonder flying felt so wrong. She comes to the conclusion that after arriving on this island, she was careless and fell a few times, so this must be the reason. However, there was no helping it now, as it looks like she will have to walk the rest of the way on foot. Afterward, she wonders where is the place she was supposed to go, and if she just got lost again. She further wonders if she just made an unrealistic promise, and that she didn't accept that she would fail so fast. She thinks about Cheng making fun of her and tries snap out of it thinking, that if she doesn't want to see him laughing at her, then there must be something she can do. She tries to assess the situation by saying that if she trace her fall, she should notice that the wind was blowing from there, which means that she should go in that direction since there is some water vapor in the air coming from there, so it means that the place shouldn't be far from here. However, she knew that if she go in that direction on foot, she would get lost for sure, and wonders how to continue going straight without getting off track. A while later, she comes to the conclusion that as long as she continue going in a straight line, she will get there. Then she looks at the bamboo trees and takes a stance for punching them. 
After breaking all the bamboos in a single line, she states that as long as she follow the line formed by the bamboo trunks, she won't get lost, and if she keeps it up, she will be there in no time. On the other side, the bear emerges from the bottom of lake in tatters. He then witnesses a large tree falling on top of him, and then he again drowns inside the water. Meanwhile, Yu comes out of the jungle and comments that she has finally arrived. Then she wonders if she just heard a roar or something, but she thinks that it must be her imagination. A while later, she finishes preserving the water inside the bottles and comments that this much should be enough. She then feels pain in her hand, even though it's just bamboo. Hitting it for too long takes a toll on her hands. And her stockings were in bad shape as well, since there were many sharp rocks on the way. She thinks she might be of some help this time. And later, she states that she can do it if she wants to, and she is not some troublemaker. She then says that it's getting late and that she should be going back now. She also says that it might be hard to fly, but it's worth trying. Then she resolves herself and gets ready to take off. Meanwhile, as Cheng was cutting some vegetables back at their camp, he hears Yu screaming and later, he witnesses her crashing in front of him. Cheng then comments that he didn't expect her to come back on her own, and he was thinking of getting ready to look for her, but she replies that returning was not all she did. Later, she shows him the bottle saying that she brought them some water and asks if she is amazing. However, she notices some water bottles beside Cheng and asks about them. He replies that he took a detour on his way back after gathering the vegetables, since staying short of drinking water is not an option. She then asked why he said okay when she went to get them water, so he replies that he just didn't expect her to bring any from the beginning. He additionally says that in case she couldn't come back on her own, or came back without water, they would have ended in more trouble. He further says that it's just a precaution since he didn't expect her to be able to find her way back. But Yu asks if it doesn't make her look like a fool, and she worked so hard to get them water. Cheng continues to say that she was able to get back here on her own and saved him the trouble of searching for him, so she shouldn't go around doing unnecessary things in the future. Suddenly, Yu splashes the water she brought on Cheng's face and makes him surprised. She then throws the bottles in front of him and asks if he said unnecessary with a cold gaze. 